Hello, hello, hello. How are we all doing? Hope you're all well. My poor ears. I don't know why you're all saying that. I really don't. The volume is not that loud. Just because that dude was like, oh, yo, my ears hurt. It's his own fault, you know? It's his own fault. Um, I'm going trailer tomorrow. Mega high boss to see the new robot. I have heard that, yeah. Why does it still say zombies in the tag? Doesn't on my screen. Oh, doesn't the Twitch options, though? How very weird. We got Thanks, host, Dan. How are we all doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Doki Doki time. I know. Wild. I honestly, I'm feeling quite tired, so I, I'm I'm worried about getting through, like, several hours of side stories, to be honest with you, but I couldn't put the stream off. If I did it tomorrow, I wouldn't be able to do the watch along, and also Payday would get fucked over, so we're here. We're playing it anyway. You know, we're going to hang out and have a good time. A big streamer thanks to the host, which appreciated. But yeah, we're just going to read through the sub-stories, have a look through them, and see what's new. It's the new content that I didn't get to play, because we played through the base game beforehand, so whatever. So I'm not going to spend too long hanging around. We're going to go. And testing. There we go. And everything else is fine. I don't know what's up with my audio today. At least it's fixed now. Wild. Absolutely fucking wild. Absolutely wild. At least I can see the audio forms in OBS so I know when it is and isn't working. That's good. So he's up my audio today. Very weird. Very, very weird. Anyway, we're good. We're okay, people. So, um, I have literally got everything beaten in this game apart from the side stories. All the things I haven't unlocked are all things that appear during the side stories. So I've literally got everything else unlocked beyond that. So I'm very, very happy. Very proud of myself, you know? I'm very proud of myself. And I might make a video showing how to get 100% completion because there is no 100% completion achievement to get and I don't have it yet. It's one of three things I don't have. One is to open a certain file at 2.40 and I have to keep forgetting to do it because you have to do it at a certain time. One is to get 100% data collection. One is to finish the side story. So, you know, we're going to hang out and have a good time. So, ladies and gents... Let's play them. So, there are six side stories. There definitely aren't seven. There definitely isn't a seventh one that unlocks later on. Definitely not. No idea what you're talking about. So, we're going to play through them and have a good time, you know? So, let's do it. Let's not hang around anymore. Let's go right into trust. Begin this side story. Yes. I don't know what the volume level's like. Should be okay, hopefully. Oh. I'm hearing some very quiet music. Ooh, some new backgrounds. I'm hearing some very faint music, but I don't know whether I need to turn it up or something or what's going on. Oh god, my music is really quiet. Hang on. I think it was about up there. There we go. It's my own fault. All right. Okay, everyone. Literature Club is starting. Let's all have a seat and take attendance, okay? Oh, I missed debate club. Who knew it would be so much to, it was so difficult to start a new club? I feel worse with every day that passes without anyone coming in. I'm really starting to lose confidence. Monica is the only member of the... Oh. Oh, well, that's just fucking sad, bro. What the fuck? <laughs> Monica is the only member of the Literature Club. In the days that have passed, all of her efforts to recruit new members have been fruitless. Am I going about this wrong? Monica glances at one of her flyers. The headline is, do you like literature? Maybe nobody's into literature enough to pick it over their club interests. I just can't rely on people liking literature. I need to sell them a vision, on a vision, a vision. But what kind of vision? Paul Bettany would get me involved. Monica rests her head on the desk deep in thought. Before she realizes it, the recent nights of staying up too late start to catch up to her. It's so quiet and the noise of the air conditioner is soothing. <laughs> is that, is that, that just, that's one side story. Boom. That's it. That's it. Um, hello? Oh. Hey, Sayori! Suddenly... Oh, there's some new music. This is quite nice. I think this might be a little bit too loud, though. Just a tiny bit. There we go. I think it's still too loud. Jesus Christ. It was too quiet a minute ago. Now it's too loud. Let's go with that. Suddenly a voice causes Monica to stay snap awake. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I never do this. Is this the napping club? 
No, this is Monica Paul's is suddenly embarrassed to admit that this is in fact the Literature Club. This is the Literature Club. Yeah, I thought I got it wrong for a sec. I'm super sorry. It was like so unprofessional of me to do that. Don't apologize. I do that all the time. Oh, did I miss the club meeting? Where is everybody? Well, about that. This is everybody. Really? Just you? But we're getting more members. I'm working really hard on it. Hold on a sec. If it's just you, that means I get to be vice president. <laughs> oh my god. Vice president? What are your qualifications? Well, I'm better at napping than you. Maybe I should be president. Now you're just making fun of me. Oh, I'm sorry. What was your name? Sayori. Okay, Sayori. I've been trying really, really hard on this club. I know you caught me at a weird time, but it's really disheartening to not be taken seriously, you know? I care so much about this. I just want to find other people who do too. Oh no, I'm so sorry. I do care, I promise. I have a hard time being serious, that's all. I didn't mean for it to hurt you. And I was joking about the vice president thing too. I would make a terrible vice president. I mean, I'm sure that Monica tries to say something reassuring, but it's difficult when she still doesn't know much about Sayori. I'm sorry this isn't like a real club yet. Oh, bless. Would you still be interested in joining after I found a few more members at least? Well, no. I want to join now. Really? Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. Besides, I can tell how hard you've been working. You're doing something amazing and you should be proud of it, you know? So let me help you turn something stressful into something fun. If nothing else, I'm good at that, so... <laughs> Honestly, how could I possibly say no to that? That's really sweet of you, Sayori. Oh, I'm Monica, by the way. Monica, that's such a cool name. Oh, now you're just trying to cheer me up. But you're smiling. Well, I didn't say it didn't work. Monica glances at the flyer on her desk and realizes that her name is already written on it. So what do we do first? Well, it's getting pretty late, isn't it? We can go home and try to come up with some new ideas to recruit the club, club members. I can do that. Cool. I think I need to put some more thought into my vision for the club. You know, like, a mission. My mission is to make everyone happy. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I need to think about it. Hey, do you like hugs? I guess so. Sari suddenly pulls Monica into a friendly hug and then lets go. Oh, what an adorable person. Some people can just really use a hug sometimes. Besides, Sari whispers loudly, Hug energy is what keeps me at my best. <laughs> hug energy? Monica laughs. Although Sari is very different from her, Monica feel feels her spirits lifted. Maybe it's just because she finally found another club member. But, well, I'm looking forward to it tomorrow then. It'll be fun. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm going to think really hard tonight about how to get more people. Yeah, me too. Aw, sweet. I, I would have I laughed if that was just the end of part one. Because I don't know how long these are. Dan Salvato said that all of the, the side stories together totaled about half of the overall game length, but that includes like different branches and shit. And I've seen YouTube videos that are like four to five hours long, so I, I really don't know. Because YouTube videos, of course, they could just leave a te bit of text up for ages and then, then skip it. Depends on the speed you read, really. A day passes and the time comes for the Literature Club, Monica and Sayori to reconvene. As president, Monica ensures that she's the first to arrive to the club room, but she finds herself waiting longer than expected for Sayori. It's been 10 minutes already. Maybe Sayori changed her mind about joining? No, it can't be. She was so excited yesterday. But I'm getting kind of worried. Suddenly, Sayori comes bounding through the door. In her hand, she's holding a sheet of paper. Sorry I'm late, I'm here. It's okay, welcome back. And Siri spins over to Monica and deposits the sheet onto Monica's desk. What's this? Oh! Take my hand. Oh, it's a new poem! Aww. Oh. Take me, take my hand, take me forward, take me to your dreamland. Caution me to watch my steps so I can't look back at my footprints. Climb the stairs ahead of me while I look up to you. The more I look forward, the more I look up. The more I can lend to you. If you can trust me to follow your pace, I'll trust you, you to set it. If you can trust me to lend you a smile, I'll trust you to return it. Take my hand, take me forward, take me to your dreamland. Oh, that's nice. That's really sweet. Oh my God, I like that. This is really good. You wrote this, Sayori. Of course. Wait, wait, no, that's the wrong side of the paper. Huh? I wasn't ready to share that yet. I'm so embarrassed. Monica flips over the paper. Written on the other side is a list of ideas for recruiting new club members. Oh, bless. So this is what you meant to show me. I'm curious now, do you write poetry often? I do, but I'm sure I'm not anywhere near as good at it as you are. <laughs> really? I'm actually terrible at writing poetry. I've never written anything I was happy with. Like, I always read it again after a week I, after I write it, and I'm like, wow, this is so stupid. I don't know. It's like the dramatic version of me doesn't agree with the person I want myself to be, or something like that. Aww. You should have more confidence in yourself. You're the literature club president. <laughs> I guess you're not wrong there. I need to, like, set a good example or whatever. You know, I can envision the club doing something like that. Doing what? 
you know, like sharing poems we write and stuff like that. But hang on, didn't Monica only get the idea to do this after we caught Natsuki with a poem? Is this is this continuity gone mad? What the fuck? Oh yeah, I would love that. It's such a good way to learn about other people, you know? It's like, we have so many emotions we can't express to other people usually. But you can when it's in a poem, right? Yeah. I think that's helping me form a more cohesive vision for the club. So I'm glad you showed me, well, even though it was by accident. I've already turned that off, Aunt Dude. I don't know why that tag's, right, why people are saying that tag's there. Because it isn't there on my screen. I've already removed it. No idea. Me too. I feel embarrassed at first, but now it fe feels kind of good that someone else read it. I'll try and show you more of them in the future. I'd love that. Oh, jeez, I'm getting distracted. Do you want to go over this recruitment brainstorm together? My brain storms so hard, bro. It's like a brain hurricane. My brain is a natural disaster. <laughs> Sorry, that's terrible. Anyway, let's take a look at the list. Make cupcakes. I was hungry, but it's a good idea. Isn't it? Um, let me think about this. I mean, when would we have the chance to give people cupcakes? You know, like when they come into the club. What if we said we had free cupcakes on the flyers? I'm, like, kind of worried that we're bring in the wrong kinds of people, you know? Wrong kinds? People will come just for the cupcakes and then leave. Aw, nobody would do that. That would be mean. But, you know, I want to find people who are really into literature. Even if they don't know it yet. Let's see, the next thing on the list. Home for people reading books. I don't think I get it. Like, going around the school and finding people who are reading books, you know. Like, in the morning or during lunch. And we tell them to check out the literature club. Well, the problem with that is, like... Wouldn't most people reading books just be doing it for an assignment or something? How do we know if they're just reading for fun? Well, we could ask them. But they may be bothering people who are trying to do schoolwork. I didn't think about that part. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. You're coming up with a lot more things than I can. Oh, your next idea is to hand out flyers rather than just put them up on the wall. I'd definitely like to start doing that. I'm useful. <laughs> I never said you weren't. She need to think. What would we tell people when we're handing them out? I don't want to just be like, join the literature club. Let's figure out how we can better engage people. What if you told them about the club activities and stuff? I'm literally just fiddling with the USB stick. I need to stop this. What club activities? Yeah, I guess it's supposed to be my job to come up with that, right? A vision for the club. Okay, Siri, pretend you're a normal person for a second. Wait, I didn't mean like that. <laughs> you know, like a random passerby is getting a flyer. How would you react to the idea of a literature club? Hmm. Probably like, literature is stupid. I'm joining the anime club. What the heck? Sorry, I was just thinking of a friend of mine. Nice. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Very well done. She's talking about the MC in case it wasn't obvious. What if I said we like do group reading and discuss it together? I would probably nap through that. That's you, Sayori. Yeah, but doesn't it really need to sound fun to most people anyway? We need to really catch their interest, you know? Ugh. This sucks. Why is this so hard? Monica, don't be sad. What do you like about literature, Sayori? Me? Well, what kind, of, what, kind of what I said about the poem earlier? I think it gives you the chance to express yourself. Like, express yourself in ways you couldn't normally do when you're just doing your normal day and talking to your friends. I mean, we all have our so, so many thoughts and feelings that we just don't get to share, you know? It's like, intimate. Yeah, how do we get that across to people? We could be like, express your true self. Be intimate with... Okay, that's kind of... Yeah, that's definitely... That's... that's. Oh my gosh. What? What is it? I forgot all my things in my classroom. I must have gotten too excited and rushed here. Silly me. Rushed? But we weren't... Never mind. Did you want to get your stuff then? I'll forget it if I don't do it now. Well, I'll wait for you then. Okay, it'll only take a second. Sayori dashes out of the room, leaving Monica momentarily alone. Monica sighs and starts jotting her thoughts on a sheet of paper. Express yourself. Be who you want to be. Make new friends. Discover a new you. Discover your heart. No. Write your heart out. No. Write into your heart. Write the way into your heart. Join the literature club right the way into your heart. Ah, nice. That's lame. Uh, excuse me, you literally sing that later in the game, Monica. Uh, I don't think it's that lame. I don't think it's that lame. Monica! Ah, you startled me. Sorry, but it's something important. On the way to my classroom, there was a girl reading a book. Oh. Reading a book? Let's hurry and recruit her. Wait, are you sure she's not just doing homework? I could tell she was really into it. Um, well, I guess we could take a look. Monica grabs one of her flies and stands up from her desk. Then the two depart the classroom with Sayori leading the way. This way. You don't have to run. Sayori leads Monica over to a particular classroom and then lowers her voice to a whisper. See, in here. Monica peers through the window. Sure enough, 
There's a girl al sitting alone, intently reading a book. I feel like a creep doing this. You should go inside and talk to her. Me? You're the president, and I will probably scare her away. Okay, fine, I'll do it. Monica takes a deep breath and timidly enters the classroom. Oh, we know this is going to be Yuri, right? We know it is. Like, can we just can we just skip to the part where we know it's Yuri? That was fast. Oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. Why? What happened? Cameron, with all due respect, please shut the fuck up. Um, well, I entered the classroom and she didn't even look up from her book. That's definitely Yuri. So I kind of just left a flower on the desk and then walked out. <laughs> That's kind of cute. But I'm sure she'll see it and want to join the club. I hope so. Should we head back now? Yeah, that makes more sense. It makes more sense. The two head back to the club room, Siori feeling rather accomplished, and Monica still feeling a bit embarrassed by the encounter. Upon returning, Monica and Siori resume their strategy meeting. They discuss various different kinds of recruitment tactics from professional to silly. After going through Siori's list, and with Monica coming up with the ideas of her own, the two end in a better spot from where they began. Well, I would say today was pretty productive, wasn't it? Yeah. I think we're starting to make progress. I can't wait to get some new members. Hey, what's this? Siri appears at the sheet of paper Monica was jotting on earlier. Oh, don't mind that. I was just thinking to myself. Join the literature club right the way into your heart? That's so cute. <laughs> I thought it was a little overdramatic. But, Siri pauses and thinks for a moment. You know, I don't think you give yourself enough credit. What do you mean? Like, I don't know, I feel like I can tell from talking to you all today. Seems like you're always afraid of doing something wrong. Yeah, but... Would you call yourself a perfectionist? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely am. I mean, I always have an idea in my head of how I want things to go. And it's like, I can't accept anything less than that. But I think in the end, it helps me try my hardest to everything, so I don't think it's that bad. Like with this club, we have such an opportunity to make it into exactly how we envision it. But it feels like we only have one shot at it. So I'm just really afraid of deviating from that. The vision. What's the vision? It's a very cool Marvel character. It's Monica pauses to think and then shakes her head to herself. She sighs. I don't know. I just want everyone to... Monica trails off. Smiling, Suri taps her finger against the sheet of paper. Ride the way into your heart. I think what you're trying to do is to make the club that you need the most out of anyone. We are the one who knows yourself best, of course, but I'm here to help you. Monica returns to Yuri's smile. It's sort of amazing how kind you are. We're really going to make this the best club ever. Suri nods and the two remain silent for a moment, lost in thought. The only sound is the steady whisper of the air conditioner. And the only movement is the afternoon sunlight trickling its way in and out of the moving clouds. Siri breaks the moment with a big yawn. Time to go home? You tell me, you're the president. <laughs> in that case, today's meeting is officially over. I look forward to tomorrow. Me too. I have knocked my stand. Wait, is this is this even properly aligned? It is. I've just knocked it by accident. I was trying to nudge my fucking pow tape pa cable power tower thing. Uh, me too. Siri beams and grabs her thigh, her things. I thought I said her thighs then. She grabs her thighs, bruh. You can go ahead. I need a few minutes still. Oh, I can wait. That's all right. I just wanted some time alone. In that case, Siri waves enthusiastically at Monica. Good luck. Monica smiles and waves in return as Siri spins her way out of the club room. All alone, she sits to herself and takes a minute to zone out. She wasn't prepared for the self-reflection encouraged by Sayori, but, that she de but she decides it was something that she probably... The club that I need the most. I don't get it. I just want to start a club with more passion. Something that I could use to help lead people into happiness. Literature is the key to that. Because it's the window to the real person inside of us. Underneath the person who's forced to always smile and blend in. The person who's forced to be... Perfect. Hmm? Monica suddenly notices a folder on the floor by her desk. Did Siori leave this behind? Hope it doesn't have her homework in it. Worried, Monica opens the folder to check. Poems. It's a folder of poems. Oh, another one! Become the flower. A feeling of joy as a flower plucked from the ground. The colour, the scent, it's so pretty in my hair. Every day I pluck some flowers as though they grew just for me. A lifetime of peace and nourishment yanked away in an instant. All for me. All for joy. I need more. I need more joy. I need more happy. Pluck, pluck, pluck every day. Pluck, pluck, pluck so pretty in my hair. Pluck, pluck, pluck. You're going to die and you too. Beneath my feet a flower stands alone. It beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots, caressing the final joyous moment between my fingers. But to what ends? I look in every direction, and the field I stand in, the prosperous field, is a barren wasteland. The fruits of my labour, the carnage of my joy, and that is why I've decided I must become the flower. Interesting. Hmm. I like how I read, but to what ends, and immediately thought of Thanos. I ask you to what end? Dread it. Run from it. What the? Wait, 
Sayori? Oh. Oh, shit. That's part one. Madness. Trust part two. Here we go. Another day passes in a flash and it's already time for the next club meeting. Although Monica should have come up with a plan for today's club task, she hasn't been able to sh shake her guilt and anxiety after reading Sayori's poem. I'm so stupid. How did I let myself be the centre of attention? Sayori's going through these kinds of feelings and I'm letting her club for me instead of the way around. What kind of club president does that? This whole time I didn't think to ask about her own feelings. So much for the stupid vision. For anyone missing the context, Sayori ripping up flowers, she wants to become the flower. Yeah, exactly. Sierra enters the club room with her the usual smile, but upon seeing the downcast Monica, her smile quickly fades to an expression of concern. Monica? Is everything okay? I'm really sorry. I'm such a terrible friend. Huh? What are you talking about? You're an amazing friend. Monica shakes her head. I made this all about myself. Even you said so yesterday. You told me I'm trying to make the club that I need the most, right? But my problems are so trivial compared to yours. Sierra responds quietly. What are you talking about? But as she says that, her face darkens. Through the silence, Sayori mutters her realisation. I left my folder here. Monica stares blankly ahead, unable to come up with a response. I wasn't ready to share those. You now you're worrying about me, and I don't want that. But why? We're friends, right? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Friends look out for each other. I want to be there for you as much as you're here for me. Another long moment passes in silence. The air is incredibly heavy. Yikes. This is different. It wasn't just about you yesterday, it was about the club. Besides... Things were so happy yesterday. You don't need to do this all of a sudden. I don't want it. I like happy. So, if you do this, then you're just being selfish. Rah! Monica massages her forehead, strolling through the frustration of such a paradox. It's, un it's understandable that Sierra isn't ready to share certain things, but as unfair as it is for Monica to pry, it's also painful for Monica to force herself to ignore the needs of her friend. I'm sorry I looked. I disrespect I disrespected your privacy. No, I don't blame you for looking. You would have at least needed to check if it was mine. Yeah, Monica takes a deep breath. Okay, I under understand that you don't want me to worry, and I think I'll be able to put this aside that we so that we can move on, but can you promise me one thing? Monica pauses to collect her thoughts. There's lots of pausing here. This is Literature Club. It's a place where people can express themselves in the ways that life normally doesn't allow them to. That's the vision. In fact, it's our vision. Right the way into your heart or whatever. So I just want you to promise me that you'll remember that too. It doesn't have to be right now, but I want to be there for you, here for you when you need it. I want us to be ourselves like that. Siri smiles gently. I'll promise you, I, I promise if you promise. Unable to help it, Monica returns Siri's smile. I promise. Me too. Aw, oh, isn't this just sweet? As the conversation closes, the mood in the room is lifted. With that behind them, it's time to proceed with club activities. So, want to teach me about poetry? Huh? But what about recruitment? It's fine, we have plenty of time for that. But right now, I feel like I want to do this. I mean, I do have to fulfill my end of the promise, you know? Well, there's no way I could say no to that. Just don't expect much. I do a lot of writing, but it's not like I'm a scholar or anything. That's fine. I think I just need some, like, motivation. I never know where to start when it comes to writing poems. Starting isn't so hard. You just kind of need to write down your feelings and see where it takes you. Yeah, but that wouldn't come out any good. It's not supposed to. You're going to have to fight your perfectionist mind on this one. <laughs> you can just start by writing your feelings and see what kind of things it makes you think of. And then you can turn your feelings into a little story. You can get your feelings down first and make it sound pretty later. It's like, it's not like building a railroad where you go from one end to the other. It's more like a collage where you find all the things you want to put in and then you arrange them in a pretty way. Oh, at least that's how I do it. It's not like it's the only way. But it's a really good way to not get stuck at the beginning. I understand. Yeah, you always get so caught up in how it sounds that I forget about what's actually important. Monica pulls out a pen and paper to start writing on. Stop being a perfectionist, you idiot. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Monica scribbles out, you idiot, after she writes it down. No, keep it. What? Why? You calling me an idiot? Of course not. The point is you're not supposed to police your feelings, right? Be as dramatic as you want. But I was just... Well, yeah. Underneath the scribble, Monica rewrites, you idiot. She stares at the paper, and her words stare back at her. It's kind of funny I wrote down what I'm mad at myself for, and then did the exact thing that anyway. It's really going to make take some getting used to. I believe in you. Thanks, I do too. Me, I mean. But also you, of course. <laughs> Monica continues the exercise, jotting down her thoughts. It's surprisingly quite a struggle to write up without overthinking it. But after a while, with serious guidance and encouragement, Monica's sheet of paper begins to look fairly lively, pre peppered with all her random thoughts. Phew! Monica looks up and down at her sheet. Gosh, I feel so tense looking at this. I hate it. But it's also kind of liberating. Mm-hmm. I can tell how hard you're trying. It makes me happy. 
I think you'd be good at writing poems. Don't give me too much credit. I'd have to try really, really hard on it. But I think it's something that I'll enjoy doing. With you. Sayori beams. I'll stop there, but we still have some time. Let's try and work on our new flyer for the club. I won't be so picky about the language. Yay, let's do it. Monica and Sayori proceed with their work. With each passing day, the two of them become more confident in the club. Not simply from their recruitment planning, but from their vision as well. As their bond strengthens, so does the essence of the literature club. Finally, they begin to truly feel it's only a matter of time before they'll find more members. End of part two? Presumably. Oh no. Another day passes. As usual, Monica is the first one into the club room. With her is a printout of the revised literature club flyer, complete with all new ideas Monica and Sayori came up with. If only this was the flyer we gave to that one reading girl, that one reading girl the other day. It's so much more attractive than the old one, but... The new catchphrases feature clearly on the centre of the flyer. Write the way into your heart. Surely common sense would say that one writes from the heart and not into the heart. But the message being delivered is that one can use the writing to discover themselves. Hopefully Monica and Siri had thought that it would be enough to garner some curiosity from students. Why do I feel so tense looking at this? Monica thinks back to the previous meeting when she performed the writing exercise. Was I always this bad at expressing myself? How am I supposed to be present if I can't even demonstrate what the club is supposed to be about? The literature club is truly beginning to take form. But with that, the weight on Monica's shoulders only becomes heavier. Debate club was always about rigid structure, formulating airtight points and counterpoints and delivering them with conviction. It was about the person on the outside. That's why Monica was so good at it. It existed entirely within her realm of comfort. It's suffocating. I need to break through this mental wall. I need to learn to express myself for real. Monica pulls out a sheet of paper and grabs her pen. She presses the tip of the pen firmly against the paper. But her hand doesn't move. Instead, a tiny blot of ink collects around the tip of her pen. Monica lifts her pen and stares at the little blotch. Ah, that was her writing tip of the day. If you keep your pen in the same paper for, spot for too long, you get a big blob of ink. And she's done it. See, she learned from experience, chat. This is going to be so much fucking fan service. I can just see it coming. As she runs her finger across it, the blank ink smears across the paper, ruining Monica's canvas. Ugh. After spite for herself, Monica presses her pen down once again, letting the ink collect. She creates a second smear on the paper. Come on, Monica. Just move your hand. Monica writes. This is what I get for seeking perfection. A stain. What a great poem. What a great poem. Monica slides the paper away from her and puts her, hand down on the de her head down on the desk. The air conditioner seems louder today. I'm here. Hi. Monica says, hears Siri approach the desk and stop for a second, probably reading a piece of paper. Then she sits down in the adjacent desk. Bad day? Mm-hmm. Aw. Me too. Aw. You too? The new flyer looks so good. You've been working so hard. On the club, but also something else, I think. I can't do it. I'm sorry. It's so hard to just be vulnerable. Mm. Siri takes the sheet of paper from Monica's desk. She writes something down and stares at it for a while. Can I trust you? Of course. You can trust me with anything. Siri gazes at Monica with sadness in her eyes. Understanding the signal, Monica takes the paper from Siri's desk and, desk and reads it. Oh God. I can't really give that any kind of comment, can I? Like, um, shit. That, that escalated quickly, but I kind of knew something like that was going to happen. Wow, so this really is like proper Blue Sky style shit. Oh, fuck, man. I'm not even going to read that out. Sayori, this is really, really hard for me. Her voice shakes. So if I can do it, then you can too. Because you're like a million times better than me. That's completely not true. Siri takes a deep breath trying to steady herself. That's something about me that I've never told anyone before. Even now my head is like screaming at me to stop. Wait, you don't you don't have to force yourself. I mean, because of the promise yesterday, I want to. It just feels right. I mean, maybe it's part of the reason I came to this club in the first place. 
This is the literature club. I trust you more than I'm scared. At those words, Monica stands up. Sierra must have taken days to work up the courage for this. Were Monica's own futile but genuine efforts actually the push that Sierra needed? Sierra's deliberate breaths can be heard over the air conditioner. As she prepares herself to continue, Monica waits in gentle silence. I have this problem where I get really upset when people worry too much about me. I can't control it. It's like, why waste your energy worrying about me when you can just be happy instead? So I never tell anyone about these kinds of thoughts that I have. It's so much easier to just smile and help everyone else be happy. But that's... terrible. That's what Monica wants to say, but she'll stop herself from fear of, what, of saying the wrong thing. It's just if everyone knew about it, they wouldn't treat me the same anymore. Like, whenever I'm not smiling, everyone would worry about me and ask me what's wrong. I know that because I know that because it used to be like that. Siri pauses, seeming to recall something in the past. I just want everyone to be happy. That's the most important thing to me. And letting people look inside my head doesn't bring happiness to anyone. Siri pauses again, her solemn expression making her look almost like an entirely different person. How did you find the courage to tell me this? You're not worried that I'll be one of those people too? I am worried. Part of me really hates myself for doing this. But another part of me, I think, just felt like it would be different this time. Whenever we talk about what the club is supposed to mean, it kept feeling like it was right for me to do. Especially after you've been trying so hard to express yourself too. It just made me feel like I could say it in confidence and our friendship doesn't have to change. <laughs> it's so silly. The club is only two people, but it already means this much to me. Monica feels a tightening sensation in her heart. A feeling of connection as Sayori's emotions radiate between them. Me too. I was so lost until you showed up. You're so brave, Sayori. You're so strong and brave, and I don't even compare. Monica steps forward. But if nothing else, I can at least offer you some hug energy. If you'd like. Aw, oh, dude. He's gonna fuck me up, man. Wordlessly and without a smile, Sayori rests her forehead on Monica's shoulder. Through her contact, Monica can almost feel a torrent of thoughts swimming in Sayori's head. And in this moment, enchanted by the air of the club, Monica realizes that all of the days that have passed, of all the days that passed this storm, where she really, really hopes that nobody new walks through the door. She speaks softly. You're like the sweetest girl I've ever met. You can say anything and I'll never judge you. I promise. Sierra's breath begins to quiver. She takes several deep breaths, trying as hard as she can to start speaking to say the things she never once dared to say out loud. Finally, she speaks in a choked voice. I'm so worthless. I'm worthless and everyone will be better off without me. Dude... She suppresses a sob as a tear falls down her cheek. I'm just an inconvenience to everyone. I'm not good at anything and it just feels like everyone has to put up with me and I hate it. I hate it. The more Siri speaks, the more she fails to control her voice, falling victim to the overwhelming sadness clutching at her throat and chest. I don't want to have these thoughts. I want them to go away. And now I'm making you put up with me and, just, and I just want to die. <sighs> Jesus Christ, dude. As soon as Sari loses her composure, Monica becomes determined to keep her own. She only wants to be what Sari needs right now, so she won't let any sadness show. Her voice comes through soft and gentle. This isn't putting up with you. It's just being your friend. Monica offers a few words of comfort. But she knows Sari said it herself that the thoughts Sari experiences are ones that don't belong. And Monica can't magically make them go away. The most she can do is help Sari battle them like any good friend would do. You have so much value, to me and your other friends too. This club wouldn't have been the same without you, and I really, really mean that. You coming here is the best thing that could have happened. Even if we never got any other members, I would still be happy. That's what brought you here. You brought us a vision, and you brought us happiness. And that's your favourite thing to do, right? Siri doesn't respond, but Monica feels her gently nod. No more words are needed between them. The two share their embrace for a while longer, Monica letting Siri take as much time as she needs. Once her breathing steadies and her sniffles finally cease, so fully cease, Siri lifts her head and wipes her eyes. I guess I needed that. Some days are harder than others. Well, I'm here whenever you need me, but any other time I'll make sure that things are the way they usually are, if that's what makes you happy. Mm-hmm. Thanks. You're the best. No, you are. The two exchange smiles. You know, I'm sorry to bring this up all of a sudden, but if you consider talking to a professional... Siri nods. It's scary, since it's already so hard to tell people. Yeah. Well, of course it will always be your choice, but if you're ever looking to find the courage for it, I could do my best to help you. Thanks. I think it helps knowing that you would. Siri suddenly yawns and stretches. Wow, that made me tired. And hungry. 
Well, I won't make you do any work today if you're not up for it. No, I want to. I mean, I can say there's definitely one thing that makes me happy. Monica smiles. But I imagine you want... But you... But, eh. But I might want to get a snack first. All of a sudden, the sound of the door caused the two of them to turn their heads. The door opens halfway and then stops. A face peeks inside. A face that seems familiar. Cliffhanger? Oh, for fuck's sake. For fuck's sake! Bruh. Yep, yeah, it's, it's going to be Yuri. It's definitely going to be Yuri. Right, one side story down. That shit is dark. My god. Did not expect that at all. I mean, I knew it was probably going to have, like, some dark undertones, but jeez, that started deep and got deeper. Fucking hell. Whew! It's literally serious plot in Blue Skies. I mean, it basically is. Just without having to check the box, you know? All right, let's begin understanding Sayori and Yuri. The club meeting is suddenly inter interrupted by the sound of the door causing Monica and Sayori to turn their heads. The door opens halfway and then stops. A face peeks inside. A face that seems familiar. Yuri! Sayori's eyes widen, recognizing the girl. She very conspicuously mouths to Monica. It's her, it's the girl. It's true, the girl standing in the doorway is none other than the girl Sayori had to come across reading alone in the classroom. Thanks to Monica leaving a flyer on her desk, it seems she's found her way into the club. Are you here for the literature club by any chance? Um, am I in the wrong place? No, you're not. This is a literature club. Please come inside. The girl fully steps in the door, but continues standing against the wall, avoiding eye contact. Siori continues to fail, con containing her excitement. It's happening. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for coming. Sorry, it's a little empty. Um, I'm Monica, and this is Slora Siori, and we run the literature club, even though it's just us so far. But what's your name, by the way? I'd like to join your club. Already? Wait, really? Are you sure? I mean, I should be good enough. Everyone is welcome here. You don't have to be good enough. Oh. Do you want to have a seat? We'd love to get to know you. The girl nods, sliding over to a nearby desk and gently sitting down. So what's your name? Yuri. I'm Siori and this is Monica. Siori, I already... Nice to meet you. Um, do you like fantasy? Like books? Yuri looks at Monica. Fantasy is cool. Yes. Have you heard of Annabelle Dupont? I can't say I have. Oh, well, she's my favourite author. I'm on her fifth book and it's just... Yuri grins and presses her knuckles against her cheeks in joy. Aww. You could borrow my books, I wouldn't mind. You're really in for an incredible experience. Um, Monica Stam is caught completely off guard by Yuri taking control of the conversation. She glances sideways at Sayori, silently asking for help. I'd love to. Sounds like you're really into them, so they must be great. I'm so happy I found this club. Oh, I'm so stupid, I left all my other books in my locker. I should have brought them. Yuri quickly stands up. I'll be right back. I'll go get them for you. I probably only need to bring one for now. Siri nervously says that, noting to herself the considerable heftiness of the book that Yuri set down on her desk. True. Okay, I'll go get the first one then. Yuri exits the club room in a flash, leaving Monica and Siri silently exchanging glances. Oh my god, I wasn't prepared for this. How do I handle someone so intense? I have, like, no experience with fantasy, except maybe stuff that I've read when I was a kid, but that's probably like a joke compared to what she's into. I'm sure it'll be fine. In fact, I think it's neat that we have different people who are into different kinds of literature. It'd be fun to learn from each other. Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree, but... What if this is her only interest? Doesn't it seem kind of like that? Monica, don't you think you should be more optimistic? We have a new club member. There shouldn't be room for anything but being happy. I'm excited to get to know her more, aren't you? Yeah, I guess you're right. Sorry for being so hasty. I just got really anxious all of a sudden. It's because you're afraid of not being able to take the lead. What the heck? It's kind of scary you can point things out like that, Sayori. I just like learning what makes people happy or sad. Yeah. Hey, you know what? You'd probably be great at helping Yuri feel comfortable here. Maybe you could take a break from helping me with the administrative stuff and just focus on spending time with her. Yay, that's exactly what I want to do. Besides, Siri lowers her voice. I'm probably going to need all the time I can get. She taps her finger against the dauntingly chunky book Yuri left sitting on the desk. Right afterwards, the door opens to reveal Yuri's return. I'm back. Her breath is slightly heavy, which combined with her short time gone, indicates she may have run at least part of the way. She makes her way back over to Siori and sets the book down on her desk. Just as Sayori feared, the book Yuri brought for her is just about equal in size to the one that already on Yuri's desk. Well, there are probably a few things you should know before getting started on it. There are some things that are more explained in other books that take place in the same universe, so going over those would be good to keep you from getting confused at the start. Uh, um, Siri nervously interjects. Well, I was thinking that maybe today we could just get to know each other a little bit more. You know, I think like if we're going to be reading together, then I would like that. From across the room, Monica smiles and nods at Siri while Yuri isn't looking. Oh, okay. Yuri sits down and looks at her book and then glances around the room, showing no indication that she has anything more to add. So what made you decide you wanted to join the club? Well, I like reading, so it was immediately interesting. I, I was immediately interested. 
I had no idea that someone was starting Electric Club, but that's my fault since I haven't been paying attention to any of the club recruitment advertisements. I only found out because she... Yuri glances over at Monica. Monica? Monica came into my classroom and put the flyer on my desk. Suddenly, Yuri's face darkens and she shakes her head at herself. I was so stupid. I got too nervous and I couldn't even look up, so she just walked out. It took me several days to just come here because I was afraid that Monica told everyone how inconsiderate I was, but I decided I was probably being irrational. Wait. No, that was totally my fault. I felt so bad about interrupting you that I just, like, walked out. I was actually really hoping that you would come by. Yuri exhales in relief. I always seem to interpret things as the worst possible scenario. Well, I was really nervous to come here for other, some other reasons too, such as there being too many people. Not that I mind that much, but I have a really hard time having to meet a large number of new people at once. So it's actually amazing that it's just the two of you. I definitely came at the right time. Aw, oh, that makes me so happy. I'm proud of you for wait, wait, working up the courage to come. Yuri smiles warmly to herself. I've never really had the privilege of sharing my interests with others before. It's so hard to find others who are into the same things I am, except online. So I thought the Literature Club would provide a chance for me to do that. What kinds of other things are you into? Like, genres? I don't know, anything, even if it's not literature. Oh, um, just things you would think are dumb. Siri pauses a look of concern on her face. How about, I'll tell you something I'm into, and then you tell me something about, about something you're into. I suppose that would be okay. Alright, well I'm pretty into, like, crafty things. Like making cute little collages, or decorating things, like cards or jewellery boxes. My room's always cluttered with random stuff because I keep buying things to make gifts for my friends. But then I put it off to the last minute. So yeah, that's something kind of silly that I'm into. You sound quite creative. Not that much, just that you'd be surprised how much you can do with scissors and glue and stuff. So I have to share something that I'm into now, right? Sorry, nods. Oh, hi, Mike. How are you doing? Um, well, I guess I'm into nature. I love nature. Monica, I'm going to start a nature club. No, you're not. You're stuck here with me now. I'm not. Oh, yeah? Well, I hereby appoint you as vice president of the literature club. There. Now you're stuck with me. Hey, don't give me responsibilities. Oh, I'm sorry, Yuri. I interrupted you. Go ahead. It's fine. Yuri pauses, feeling awkward after having gotten cut off. I like going out into the woods or to the park. Just places where you can walk or sit and not have any people around. This sounds so much like Blue Skies, bro. What the fuck is going on here? This is literally just Yuri and Blue Skies. It's peaceful. Just nice to remove myself of everything that matters and let my racing mind operate autonomously for a while. When, you do, when do you like to do that? It just depends on my mood. After school, on the weekends, whenever I feel like I need it. Wow, I feel like I would never have the time to do something like that. I find that we have a lot more than time than we think we do, and if you don't let it slip through your fingers. The three continue their conversation, led primarily by Sayori, but with Monica Clark chiming in every now and then as well. Monica had intended to leave it to Sayori to fo and focus on her own work, but found it difficult not to join in. Before they knew it, the end of the day was upon them once more. Looks like we should be wrapping up for today. So are you going to be starting on that book the next club meeting? That's the plan. I'm so excited. Siri beams. Yuri collects her things. Once packed, Yuri wordlessly waves to Siori and Monica with a gentle smile. Bye! As Yuri exits, Siori enthusiastically returns to her farewell. Once again, Siori and Monica are left in the club room. Siori, you are a lifesaver. I didn't do anything, I just talked. Still. Besides, it really lifted my mood. It feels really nice when I can put my energy towards other people like that. She was really excited to be included, you know? It made me happy. Well, there's no doubt in my mind that she'll have a great time here with you engaging her. How are you feeling about starting the book with her next meeting? I'm kind of scared, but I think you should be happy as long as I'm trying my best. I think you'll do great. After the surprise of a new club member, it seems like everyone has their spirits lifted with something new to look forward to. End of part one. No, jeez. I like how I keep saying that and guessing, trying to figure out where the parts end, and I'm just complete, I'm just miles off every time. Bruh. Another school day ends. Swallowing her anxiety, Yuri makes her way to the club room, expecting it to be the last one, expecting to be the last one to arrive. But as she opens the door, she's surprised to find only Sayori in the club room. It's club time again. Monica went to the computer lab, so it's just us today. Is that okay? Ah, that's why it's Sayori and Yuri. Yuri silently nods, unable to make eye contact. Um, I'm sorry about yesterday. Hmm? Sayori tilts her head and shows exactly what Yuri is talking about. Well. I mean, the way I got overly excited to share my books and how you had to stop me so we could talk first. It was so inconsiderate of me. I got too excited and forgot to think about everyone else in the club, so... <laughs> Yuri, you didn't do anything wrong. I thought it was cute how excited you were. Well, still. I think I changed my mind about the, about the book. We don't have to read it. Oh my god, my heart. Jesus Christ. Oh my god. 
I legitimately do it to myself as well. Fucking hell. That actually got me so bad. That got me so bad. <sighs> Thank you for the raid, Dan, my dude. How are you doing? Thank you very much, man. Really appreciate it. Fucking hell. Oh, raw. Welcome, Raiders. Uh, we're playing the, the new side stories in Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. I haven't played them before, so it's a, it's a well, can I, say, can I say blind reaction without Twitch banning me? Maybe not, I don't know, but it's my new reactions to it. We're into side story number two. It's just setting a bit more background to what happens before the game. And it's cool. I'm really liking it. Well, huh? Why? Because I know that you were just humoring me anyway. In retrospect, it's rather obvious that no one was truly interested. But if you like it so much, then it must be worth sharing. I've already decided I'll join the club, so you don't have to try hard to entice me. That's not what I was doing. A moment of a comfortable silence stretches between the two of them. Got ready with someone by someone with 51 viewers, Poggers. That's cool, dude. GG. Well, the thing is, we don't even have any club activities yet. I mean, Monica and I have just been working on recruitment stuff, mostly. So it just sounded like something fun that we could do together, reading your books. You know, like, as a club activity. That would be okay, right? Why am I being so res re uh, resistant to this, anyway? It's exactly what I wanted in the first place, and you're being so nice about it. I really don't know what's wrong with me. I'm sorry for being like this. You don't have to apologize. Just tell me if there's anything I can do to help you feel more comfortable here. Um, so he puts her desk against Yuri's and sits next to her. The book in question is already on Yuri's desk. Peering over, Siri reads the cover of the book. Dusk Bell. Part 1 of the Everlast Saga. Ah, it's Dusk Bell by Annabelle. <laughs> sorry, I'm ready now. Alright, I should probably get some paper. Yuri grabs a spiral notebook of hers and tears out a few sheets of paper. Wait, how come you need paper? Oh, it's useful to draw things out sometimes, like maps, timelines, family trees, or just for taking notes. Notes? I, I mean, yes, that's an effective strategy. Exactly. I'm sure it'll be especially helpful for when someone for someone new to the genre. Bruh, she's going to make her do it like it's a fucking homework report. What the fuck, Yuri? Okay, you're not just going to read this book. You're going to make an essay on it. My controller apparently died. It's just charging. All right. Siri's joke flew completely over Yori's head. But thinking about it, she decides that it's probably be for the best that it did. Well, I mean, I'm not used to having company through this, but I'll try and help make it as accessible as possible. I trust you. You're, like, super smart. Oh, please. Yori tries to dismiss the compliment, but she can't hide her smile and light blush. You can't generalize intelligence. I'm only smart in the things I have a lot of experience with. Contrarily, I'm awful at anything involving real people. That should be evident enough from the two days I've spent here so far. So in my eyes, it's e like everyone else who comes off as smart. Especially you. No! Siri rubs her shoulder against Yuri. You're such a sweetheart when you're not being shy. This is fucking adorable, man. Like, holy shit. Can't, can't, can't take this, man. It's really nice to get the backgrounds of the characters. I was worried this would feel a bit obsolete, but it is really nice. I'm digging it, you know? I am digging it. And, uh, and dude, if you could stop being uh, a, a jokey know-it-all, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you. And you're sitting there going, oh, it's not a horror game. You've seen the horror game. You know what the horror bit of this is. What do you mean? What do you mean? Anyway, would you like to get started? Heh, <laughs> okay. After the minor diversion between them, the two get back on track with their planned club activity. Yuri begins to guide Ceres through the, ba the basics of the fantasy world her story takes place in. The more of it she details, the races, factions, history, elements of magic, the more questions Ceres seems to have. But despite Ceres' expectations, Yuri eloquently guides her through it in a way that's, 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 such that it's fun to follow. It becomes evident that with the world-building aspect of the story, not just the story itself, it's one that Yuri finds her passion is leading towards. How do people come up with this stuff? It's like the exact opposite of the kind of writing that I like to do, that I do. What kind of writing? I like poetry and stuff like that. The things I write are just like putting down the feelings that come into my head, you know? But this is like, there must be so much planning and hard work. Ah, you're into poetry? I think there's an appendix that includes some of the kingdom's written works, like poetry and folk songs. No way! <laughs> Yuri giggles, filling Ceres' heart with happiness when she realizes it's the first time she's heard Yuri laugh. It means Yuri must be having fun. Anyway, I think we can get started reading now if you're ready. Okay, but I can't read very fast. Oh, that's fine. I'm very patient. Patience is something I pride myself in. Hmm, I see. Siri jots Yuri as patient into her notes. Hey, that's for the book. I'm just kidding. But I'm kind of glad you're patient because I need that sometimes. A lot of times. Siri flips through the first few pages of her book, getting past the table of contents. Okay, chapter one. The room becomes silent as the two of them begin to read. But the silence only lasts for a moment before Siri speaks up again. What does vindicated mean? Uh, well, in this context, it essentially means that he was proven innocent. It's okay to ask questions, right? Of course. Siri turns the page. Are these footnotes? Mm-hmm. 
A lot of the dialogue has control cultural references that require explanation to be understood. Hmm. The two continue reading. Yuri's relaxed expression remains unchanged. Meanwhile, Sayori's expression grows tense as she tries to make her way through the dense text. Up until now, their expression has been, re have been reversed, with Sayori easily navigating social situations and Yuri struggling in them. But the tables have turned. Wait, are they talking about the past right now, or the present? Where? Right here. They're talking about the past. These paragraphs are describing a flashback that Barnas is having. But they, but they didn't tell me that. It's implied from the context. Sayori rubs her temples. The two of them continue with Sayori asking fewer questions. She begins to understand the value in the notes as she finds herself referring to them somewhat often and even adding to them. But a reduction in questions comes not from her getting used to the reading, but rather from her fearing that she'll come across as stupid. At last, Siri reaches the end of the chapter. I think we can stop here for now. Okay. Siri takes a deep breath and closes what little of the book she's gotten through so far. So what are your thoughts up to this point? Um, Siri tries to find words. Am I doing well so far? Hmm? I'm not sure I understand. Well, I don't know. When it takes me so long to read and understand things, it makes me feel really dumb. But I really like how I into it you get. It makes me want to keep going and try to keep doing my best so I can see it the way that you do. I love how accepting Siri is, man. The relaxation in Yuri's expression fades. I see. Yuri quietly gathers her things. We can get to do tomorrow, right? Yuri pauses and shakes her head. We can do something else tomorrow. But, I'm sorry. Wait, sorry for what? I don't understand. I'm sorry. I don't want to do this anymore, that's all. I'm sorry that I made you. Yuri leaves. You weren't making me. Siri's left alone with her words. The fuck? How did this happen? We were having fun just a second ago. It's my fault. I said something stupid and hurt her. Should have just told her that I enjoyed it. Monica trusted me with this. Oh, Sayori, stop. No. It's the only thing I'm good at and I still messed it up. Oh my god, Sayori, stop. Please. Please, Sayori, stop. What if she doesn't want to come back? Drowned in guilt, Sayori stares blankly at a desk spread with notes. The book sits next to them. Right. If she wasn't coming back, then she wouldn't have left the book here, right? Unless she just forgot to take it with her. This is horrible. Was it really because she thought I wasn't enjoying our time together? Or well, maybe she wasn't enjoying our time together because I'm not good enough. I probably let her down so much by having trouble following along. Yeah, I'm sure if I was smarter, she wouldn't be having so much more fun. I need to do better for her. Oh my god, man. Fucking hell! This is just too dark for me, bro. I don't like how dark this is. Also, we have lots of new pictures, apparently. Oh yeah, look! Finish the side story, understanding one, and trust one. Ah, okay. So we'll, oh, there we go. And trust one. Ah, cool, cool. And oh, there's poems. Poem for Sierra, the side story, trust. Blimey. Damn. We got poems filled in here. We got all sorts of shit. Ooh. Acquire all of Sayori's other poems. Oh, cool. That's a new poem from Sayori. What is this? The once was a ladybug. It was so small, it took a really long time to crawl from here to there. It was very tiring to fly for too long. Nobody squishes ladybugs because they're cute. Does that make them better than other bugs? Do ladybugs know they're cute? I think they're too preoccupied with bug things. And so the ladybug crawled around and did bug things. This story wasn't really going anywhere, but I know you don't mind. Hope you think it's nice for being there anyway. Like ladybugs. Like this ladybug. The one who clings like a, a doof onto your sleeve because it knows you won't squash it. And if it doesn't bug you, will you stay a while? Oh, that's sweet. That's sweet, man. And then we should have... Yep, there's a CG of Siri and, and uh, Monica. Aww. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's two down here. Interesting. Uh, anything else missing? Oh, new CG. Ooh, lit classroom softly lit by the morning sun. Nice. This is cool. I like filling in the gap. Oh, we got new music. Oh, shit. Oh, holy fuck. Got a bunch of fucking tracks now. Jeez. Lovely. All right. Understanding part two. Let's go. Let's adventure into the next sub story or side story for the first time Siri is the first to enter the club room anxiety courses through her relentlessly will yuri show up today sitting at a desk she stamps her feet in an attempt to calm down why am i letting this affect me so much i'm doing everything i can to make yuri happy but my best wasn't good enough but it was still my best but i'm letting everyone down i'm always just a disappointment Siri continues to wrestle with her self-deprecating thoughts every tiny noise causes her to lift her head in anticipation of yuri's arrival Minutes pass and nobody enters the club room. Not Yuri or Monica. Gosh, I'm so late. Why did I offer to help those other students with their work? I'm such a pushover sometimes. It's going to leave me such a bad impression on the new club members like Yuri if I'm not the first one here. 
Oh, God. Monica rounds the corner, approaching, approaching the club room. As she does so, Yuri? Ah. Yuri jumps at the sound of Monica's voice. She's sitting outside the club room against the wall next to the door. Embarrassed, she quickly closes the book she was reading and stands up. Oh, gosh, I'm so sorry I'm late. You didn't have to wait outside for me. The door to the club room is open. It's not... Yuri stammers, unable to explain herself. She peers inside the club room through the windows, then looks away. Actually, I was wondering if I could help you today instead. Huh? Me? With club publicity stuff? Yes. Monica is utterly confused. Why is Yuri asking this all of a sudden when she was so eager to spend time with Siori before? Did they not get along after all? Monica looks to the club room herself to see Siori sitting alone inside. Okay. It's kind of a simple job, but I'd be happy for you to tag along. Me too. Monica is worried, but she finds it difficult to insert herself into whatever conflict that may have arisen. It is a little ironic, she realizes, that she could be so conflict avoidant after having, having been in the debate club. Okay, let's take a walk together. She have to make copies of this new flyer, then go around the billboards and replace the old ones with the new ones. Yuri nods, and the two set off. The two walk in silence. Without Siori, Monica finds it quite difficult to strike up conversation. So, how's everything been going? Fine. That's good. Neither of them follow up with anything more. Monica tenses up at the stinted conversation. How the heck does Sayori do it? Sorry I didn't see you yesterday. I went straight to the computer lab to work on the flyers. Sayori told me. What did you two end up doing yesterday? Just some reading. Oh, I'm glad. Yeah. It's kind of funny. I felt so intimidated at first when I heard about the kind of reading you were into. But you know, it's kind of stupid of me because I'm just intimidated by things I'm not good at. And it's silly to assume that everyone who comes to the club looks at the same interests as me. But it's so cool you're able to get Sayori into it. It's like the club is working, and I'm really happy about that. She's not into it. Huh? She's not into it, and I'm su and I'm stupid for forcing it in onto her. Yuri falls silent again as if she started her thoughts but can't figure out how to continue it. Did something happen? Yuri sighs. No, it's just me. I just... Yuri pauses. Hmm? I'm thinking. A moment passes in silence, then Yuri shakes her head. I shouldn't be complaining to you all of a sudden. Don't be silly. I wouldn't think you were complaining. You just, I just want to make sure you feel welcome. If it's important to the, it's if, it, if it's important to that, then you can tell me anything. Well, I do feel welcome. Too welcome, I guess. It's not an issue with the club. It's just an issue with me. So I feel wrong to inconvenience you with it. Ah, Monica pauses and thinks. Well, what if we put it this way? It's my job as president to understand the needs of the club members, right? We're going to have all kinds of people joining this club. Well, hopefully anyway. And learning about the diverse needs and interests of everyone will help me come up with club activities that everyone can be happy with. That everyone can be happy with. Not just only some people? Of course. I need to be looking out for everyone. Otherwise, what kind of club would it be? I see. Yuri looks a little more relaxed. It signals to Monica that switching from a sympathetic approach to a pragmatic one was a good choice. Each individual truly does have their own needs. Making fun of video game characters is natural. Maybe not when about, you know, 20 minutes ago, one of them wrote in a piece of paper they wanted to die, Dio Brando. I don't know, bro. I, 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 I don't know, bro. I'm, I'm not sure about that. Each individual truly does have their own needs. Okay. Yuri takes a deep breath. I'm a really weird and awkward person. I've accepted that about myself. I just don't know how to, I guess, connect with other people. How is it so easy for everyone else? How do you just make conversation about any arbitrary topic? I could talk for hours about the things I'm into, but unfortunately so much that I don't know when to stop. But for anything else, I just have no idea what to say. So I understand that about myself. I'm just not good with people and I can't help it. So it feels like whenever I'm confronted with a new social situation, I'm either ignored or made fun of or taken pity on. And Siori falls into that third category. She... What, hold on, you're saying that Siori is taking pity on you? Yuri nods. I just want to be treated like, like a normal person. If you don't like me, if you don't connect with my interests, then just tell me. I can accept that and move on. Sayori is too nice to me. I'm so stupid for not realizing that she would just go along with whatever I pushed onto her. Nobody deserves to put themselves through that kind of discomfort just because they pity some weirdo who doesn't know how to make friends. It's the worst feeling and I hate it. Shit, dude. Yuri's sharp words cut through the tense air. Somewhere in the middle of the conversation, the two stop short in the hallway, prioritizing the conversation in their original task. Monica looks at Yuri, uh, and, but Yuri only looks down with her fists clenched. I think you should tell her that. I can never say to someone's face. It's pathetic. Siori is different. Making people happy is the most important thing to her. I'm sure that's all she's trying to do. So if you're ex able to explain to her what makes you happy, then she'll do anything to make it happen. That's the problem. What kind of friendship has one person always trying to cater to the other person's weird needs? I'm sorry, I'm making myself sound so... No, 
I think I'm starting to understand. Monica hesitates to finish her thought out loud. It's something that Siri would be able to say better. Siri is someone who... who uh, Why is my reading so fucked today, chat? Siri is someone who will give anyone however much kindness they need in order to smile. But Yuri, who has so difficulty accepting kindness, must be driving Sayori to be even more assertive in her kindness, further exacerbating the matter. Neither person is to blame, but it's an issue that can't be resolved without them understanding each other better. Suri wants me to be your friend. I promise that. Oh, sorry, he wants to be your friend. It's okay for different people to have different needs. I mean, Sayori, she has her own needs too. But good friends work together and can be what they need for each other. You just have to be, have good communication and talk about it. I don't have good communication. Yuri stops and shakes her head. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. My head is just... It's so resistant to everything. I'm, I'm pushing such a kind person away from me because of it. Yuri pauses to think. I'm so tired of this cycle I'm creating for myself. I think I'm so afraid of people pushing me away that I just push them away first. How thoughtless and immature of me. Yuri takes a deep breath and exhales. I didn't mean for this to turn into a whole venting session, but I understand now that I just need to communicate with her. <laughs> You're totally fine. It's for the club, remember? You're just helping make the club a better place for everyone. Yeah. Yuri falls silent again. She looks like she wants to say something. This kind of critical thinking is something that I'm really bad at. You know, about people. So thank you. Anytime. Monica smiles at Yuri. For just a moment, Yuri finds it in herself to meet Monica's gaze, returning a shy smile out of, of her own. Aw, oh, sweet. Yuri and Monica finish replacing the old flyers with the new ones. More accurately, Monica mostly did the work while Yuri followed along. But as the club room once again draws near, so does Yuri's confrontation. I can't do this. Yes, you can. It'll be great. Yuri sighs and shakes her head. I'm never going to feel confident enough. I just have to do it. If I don't do it now, I never will. Yuri starts towards the door, but then turns to face Monica. You're not just going to wait outside, are you? I could take a walk. Want me to get you a coffee or something? Actually, I prefer tea. I like to make my own, though, so please don't worry about it. Although I suppose that's one downside of reading here in the club rather than at home. I don't get to drink tea while reading. Sorry, I guess that has nothing to do with this. Hmm... You know, now you mention it, maybe you can get permission to keep stuff for tea in the, in the club room. You can use, like, an electric kettle to heat up water, right? Would that really be possible? Thanks for the host, dude. Much appreciated. I'll look into it. I think it would be really great. Yuri smiles and nods at the thought. Well, I'll be back in a bit. Good luck. Monica waves at Yuri, then turns around and departs down the hallway at Yuri's smile as Yuri's smile fades once more. A moment of daydreaming about tea is enough to save her from the anxiety of the task that lies before her. But it must be done. Taking on one more deep breath, Yuri timidly opens the club room door. Yuri? Wait, hold on, I'm not done yet. Siri so shovels a bunch of papers around. Um, Yuri stammers, her words suddenly caught in her throat. At that moment, she realizes how Siri has been spending her afternoon. I wasn't expecting you to come today. I was really hoping to make it all the way through to the next chapter first, but I got most of the way through it. And look, Siri holds up a sheet of paper. It's a page of notes beautifully produced with indentations, cast screens, and even color coding. As Yuri sees it, her expression shifts from anxiety to despair. I was afraid you were getting disappointed in me, so I've been trying really hard. Stop. Yuri presses her fist against her forehead. Please stop. I can't take this. Yuri? Siri's voice quivers in shock after having received the exact opposite response she was expecting. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Siri looks away in guilt. Did I do something wrong? I don't understand, so if I did something wrong, please tell me. Yuri shakes her head. No, it's me. I keep putting myself in these situations where people are afraid to treat me normally. If you don't like this kind of reading, it's okay. Please just tell me. I don't need to be treated differently just because I'm weird. But I don't treat you differently. I just want my friends to be happy. So I thought that if we did something together that you really like, I don't want your pity. Why did I do that? Oh, shit. Monka S, dude! Monka S! Yuri sinks to her knees. Her voice squeaks. I'm sorry. Tears of guilt and self loathing begin to stream down her face. This isn't how it was supposed to go. Why is it so hard to just articulate your thoughts? Why do you end up pushing everyone away from you? Yuri's mind pounds with internal accusations as she shuts their eyes, unable to face Siri or the rest of the world. She should leave, just escape from here before Monica sees her like this, and before Sayori tells Monica what she did. But before Yuri can put any strength into her legs, she feels a warm pair of arms gently wrap her around her from behind. Oh my god! It's okay, Siri whispers in a soothing voice. It's okay, it's okay. Overcome by despair, Yuri finds herself unable to protest or pull away from Sayori's kind gesture. 
Yuri sniffles, breathing heavily through her clenched throat, trying with all her willpower to control herself. I understand. I understand that the things you're feeling in your head are different from the things you're trying to say. I know that must be what you're feeling right now. I promise I understand that. So I'll give you as much time as you need. Whenever you're ready, just tell me your feelings and we'll talk about them together, okay? Yuri sniffles again and nods her head. She gives herself a minute to compose her thoughts, then speaks while steadying her voice. I think... I think that I've gotten so used to people being weirded out by me that it feels like anyone who's nice to me is just doing it out of pity. I'm so horrible with people. So it makes me not want to believe that someone can actually like me for who I am. Yuri pauses, but Siri doesn't interrupt. Rather, she waits for Yuri to continue. I get so excited when I join the literature club. I got so excited. I thought that it was finally my chance to make friends through my interests. Because my interests are the only things I know how to talk about. It's all I have going for me. But then whenever I catch myself getting overly obsessive in front of other people, it feels like I'm making a fool of myself. I hate myself for it. Ultimately, I just want to be treated like a normal person, but how am I supposed to expect that when I can't behave like one? I just want to learn how to get along with people and stop ruining things for myself. That's all. Yuri finishes her thoughts, feeling more steady after having gotten them out. Siori, who can feel Yuri's breath rise and fall from beneath her arms, realizing that as well. Thank you for helping me understand you a little bit better. You know, you were so great at helping me with while we were reading, so I'll help you with the things that you need too. But I feel like it would just be frustrating for you with how much patience I require sometimes. <laughs> that sounds kind of familiar. I couldn't stop worrying about that while we were reading. I was so afraid you would get frustrated with me. But I would never do that. I did my best to reassure you by mentioning how I have a lot of patience. Yeah, I know, but my rational fears just won't be quiet sometimes. I'm sure it's the same for you, right? Yeah. Irrational fears. Well, you know, there's no way that you could frustrate me because I already like you as the person that you are. I know you said you have a hard time believing that, but I promise you it's true. You don't have to be a social person for people to like you. I think you're really considerate in your own way, you know? Worrying so much about people's feelings. We're all kind of weird, but it's a literature club. It's the best, but it's the best, but it's, but it's the best part that we're all different and have different interests. Like about the book. I'm reading it because I want to, I promise. That's what I really want. It's a bit of a struggle, but try not to mistake that for me not enjoying it. I mean, we could never discover new things if we didn't try them first, right? I want to learn the reasons that you love it so much. And in the end, if it's not for me, then I can say that, but I'll be glad that I tried it and learned more about you. Plus, you're like super duper smart, and I want that to rub off on me. Yuri fights back a smile at that comment. Already, the heavy atmosphere surrounding her seems to have evaporated through the crest of Sayori's arms. Oh, this is so fucking sweet, dude. Your hair is so pretty. I always wanted long hair, but I was awful at taking care of it, so I cut it all off. Mmm. Yuri's tension relaxes. For once, she feels okay just listening rather than worrying so much about saying the right thing. Siori, sensing Yuri's comfort, lets her rest. It must be so difficult for her to feel relaxed around other people. But if Literature Club can make it happen, then it's something that she deserves to experience. Is that it? Is that, please tell me it ends. Oh, no. Oh, that would have been a good place for it to end there. Well, then. Based on my understanding of your feelings, I suppose I wouldn't mind if we were to continue reading. <laughs> That's what I wanted to hear. But we can stop at any time. If you truly don't like it, please be honest about it and I won't be offended. Of course. I'm not going to judge anything with this early on, though, so we'll just see what happens. Oh, and... um, It's not good to touch people without their consent first. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. Oh, you didn't. I mean... I suppose it was kind of nice. I was just saying. Fair. Yeah, fair. I'm back. Monica's back. I haven't seen you, like, at all recently. Sorry, trots over to Monica. Ah. She whispers loudly. Can I hug you? Sure, Sayori. Sorry wraps her arms around Monica. Oh, yeah, Yuri. It might be a good thing to know. Sorry can be kind of a hug monster. Ah. Hey, don't call me a monster. Artemis is a monster. If he inherits this kingdom, he could spell disaster. <laughs> Yuri laughs, Monica perplex lo perplexedly looks between the two of them, then smiles. Well, I'm glad you've been enjoying your reading so far. It's like our first real activity is literature club. Ah, about that. We've been so patient with exploring my interests. I think that it would be inconsiderate of me to not return the favour to you and learn about the things that you like. Yes. Do you like poetry? Yuri smiles. Aww. Oh, that was cool. I like that a lot. That was really nice. That's two of six. Holy shit. Oh, look at that. Finish the side story, Understanding 2. That's a cute one. I like that one a lot. Uh, what else have we got? And a new poem. We haven't got a new poem. 
You, there's the CG. Cool. Lovely. Right. Two down, four to go. Side story number three. Finally, my fave gets to have a, a little bit of a moment in the limelight. Respect, part one, featuring Natsuki and Monica. Let's go. It's been several weeks since the club has officially started. Through their initial setbacks to three club members so far, Monica, Sayori and Yuri have increased their collective bond within the club. Sayori has partaken in some of Yuri's high fantasy literature and all three of them led by Sayori have taken an interest in poetry. Oh hey Chris, that's an interesting name. Who's Renarcha Gaming? I wonder who that person is. Um, on a day like any other, the three find themselves suddenly interrupted by the classroom door opening. And in walks a girl none of them have seen before. Hey, Natsuki! Took you long enough, girl. Come on. Very good. Glad to see her in it. Hi. Natsuki tugs excitedly at Monica's sleeve. Yuri shifts in her seat and buries her eyes in her book. Are you here for the literature club? Yeah. Yay, that's great. Thanks for stopping by. It's kind of a small club still, so it's really exciting to see new faces. Yeah. Come and sit down somewhere. You can sit next to my desk. Siori prances over to her desk and presses her palms onto it. Oh, and Yuri can make you some tea. Uh-uh. Yuri looks up at Sayori and protests for having drawn attention to her. Natsuki sadly glances between everyone and then sits down next to Sayori and Monica, follow and Monica follows by sitting nearby. This is such a wholesome even with the sad bits. Yeah, I'm really enjoying this. I'm really enjoying this. I would enjoy it even more if Andu knocked off the comments like that. I would really enjoy it. Alright. The sudden gathering prompts Yuri to stand up, deciding that standing in the corner and making tea doesn't sound so bad after all. Then how about we all introduce ourselves? Okay. Well, I'm Monica. I'm the one who starts the club. I was originally in the debate club, but I really wanted to do something I felt more passionate about, if that makes sense. So I started the literature club as a way for people to express themselves through writing or reading or whatever other kind of literature. You know, I figured it was your club. You have that vibe. <laughs> She's not wrong. I have that vibe? Oh, you know, like... Never mind. I'm not going to judge people I met like that. That's weird. I had a couple of elastic bands around my finger, and one of them was literally just vanished into thin air. I had four, and there's now three. That hurts my brain. Where did that other one go? I don't know. That's that's creepy. I don't like that. And the last band just fucking vanished. That's odd. Anyway. Um, very adult-like of you. I always judge people so hard. Oh, no, you don't, Sayori. Yeah, she does. Yori's deadpan voice carries across the room and Natsuki giggles. I'm Sayori. I just like learning about everyone and making friends. Oh, and I also like poetry. Oh, yeah? Very adult-like of you. <laughs> I'm an adult. The sound of Yuri's electric kettle steaming up fills the room. Oh, that's Yuri. Sayori lowers her voice. She's kind of shy, but she's really nice and super smart. She likes big fantasy books and tea, and I love her. Well, I guess that leaves me then. I'm Natsuki. I like listening to music and hanging out downtown and stuff. My god, she's literally the same person as me. What the fuck? My favourite ice cream flavour is strawberry. Um, I, you know, I've never had much of strawberry ice cream, to be fair. Let's go get ice cream. My favourite flavour is probably cookie dough. Or maybe chocolate. It's cookie dough. Oh my god, as if Natsuki guessed that instantly. <laughs> oh my god. And Monica's is probably probably vanilla. What the heck? I take way too many online quizzes. The ice cream ones are always accurate. Natsuki is a Buzz BuzzFeed user. What the fuck? What's Yuri's favourite? Natsuki shrugs. Probably green tea. <laughs> I'm just joking. I have no idea for Yuri. Still, it's pretty chill here. Do you just like hang out or do you actually do club stuff? Well, we do club stuff too. It just hasn't been very structured yet since we only have like the three members. So we just kind of loosely spend our time doing the stuff we like. But I keep thinking it's about time we start with like some more structured club activities. It's been a while by now since I joined the club, so yeah. But with that being said, what kind of literature are you into, Natsuki? Anything you'd like the club to get into? Well, I guess I'm... Say it. Literature. Well, I like manga. There we go. Manga? Hey, why'd you say it like that? I want to read manga in the club. Wait, hold on a second. That sounds so great. Like, after all, I've been doing... Uh, after all, I've been doing all this, um... Yuri returns to the desk with a tray of teacups, which he sets down in an empty desk. After all of the deep and immersive reading I've been doing, I wouldn't mind doing something a little more simple. Manga isn't simple. If you think that, you just don't understand the nuance. I didn't mean it simple like that. Well, anyway. Putting manga aside, is there any other kind of literature you're interested in? Well, n not really. In that case, if you consider the anime club... Oh, Monica, why did you say that? Oh, Monica. God, how to trigger Natsuki in one word. Jesus. Are you serious? I'm not going to join the anime club. It's full of weird guys. 
Come on, is that big of a deal? Manga is literature, right? Yes, it is. I mean, I guess if you consider the literal definition of li literature, then technically, I get it. Look, I'll do whatever club activity she wants. Can I please just join? I won't bother anyone. If I can just, like, keep my manga here and hang out after school, I'll do literally whatever you want me to do. That's fine, right? God. That, like, legit, you've made her feel so shitty that she's like, I don't really care what I do, just let me stay in the club. Bruh. I actually feel bad for Natsuki now. Monica is just fucking basically gone, you don't really welcome here if you only like manga. And Natsuki's basically just forced herself to stay by saying, I'll, I won't, I'll do whatever you want. Yikes. Guess there's nothing wrong with that. Oh my god, thank you. You're the best. I have most of it crammed into my locker, so I'm going to start getting it in, okay? Natsuki stands up. Need some help? Nah, I got it. I don't want you to see my locker. If you say so, but there's no way it's worse than mine. I hope we never find out then. Natsuki exits the club room, leaving everyone in silence, safe for the sound of Yuri sipping her tea. Such a pushover. Hey, it's not that bad. Natsuki seems like a lot of fun. Maybe, but I mean, she has like no actual interest in literature, you know? Manga is literature. Lang manga is literature. It is, okay? Fuck you. I mean, legit, like, even comics are literature. If you're reading something, it probably classes as literature. Unless it's, it's like a shopping list, then, you know, that that's not true. But that's not only fine, but she said that she would participate in club activities, like, and it's, like, it's some kind of obligation. She did, because that's how you made her fucking feel, Monica. Her tea's gonna get cold. Yeah. Wait, that's not related. Well, I think everyone deserves a chance. Especially if we can bring her happiness. Besides, maybe she'll take a liking to literature. Uh, the only experience with manga I had is that there was a girl in uh, in a classroom I was I was uh, teaching in my last school placement, and she was reading. Oh God, what was it called? It's one of the really popular ones. I can't remember what it's called. My brain is. Um, is it My Hero Academia? Is that how you say it? Academia? And like, legitimately, like, I, I think I, I think I, I saw her reading the book at one point, and I was like, "Well, I've heard of that." I was like, "Is it any good?" And she was like, oh, "I really, really like it." And she went, literally like, went on for about five minutes about how much she loved the book. And it was so sweet. Like, she was clearly so enamored by it, which is lovely. Like, it was really, really nice. But that's, like, the only, like, visual experience of manga. Like, she showed me a few pages of it, and I was like, oh, okay, I get it. But I think you read it from right to left, which is kind of odd. Which confused me a little bit, but, you know. Are you sure you don't want to just want to read a manga, Sayori? Hey, who do you think I am? Sorry, I didn't mean that. I just feel really uneasy about this. Do you have any opinion, Yuri? Not particularly. She said she wasn't going to bother anyone. That includes me, so... Does that mean I bother you? No, you're a pleasure to be around. I was just fishing for a compliment. I know. But still, I really think we should give her a chance. Yeah, alright. But I really am going to start enforcing club activities. I'm willing to cooperate. Suddenly, the three of them hear a thump against the door. What was that? Siri stands up and walks over to the door, then opens it. Ugh, thank you. Wait, what? Why is there a poll saying is manga literature? What the fuck? Why is that a thing? And who said no? Who said no? I just want to talk to you. I, ju I just want to talk to him. I just want to talk to him. I just want to talk. I, I like how that one person is on their own. Keep it that way, chat. Very nice. Who the fuck said it wasn't? What are you going to do? Ban me? Don't tempt me, bitch. <laughs> I like how everyone is in agreement that it is apart from Water Doggo comedy. Because of those required books, I have a problem with reading them now. Wait, what? Right to left, like the Quran. Yeah, like the... Isn't, isn't it the Torah as well? You read le right to left? Hebrew, you read right to left, I believe. Carrying three boxes of what is presumably manga, Natsuki grunts and wobbles inside before slowly bending over and dropping the stack onto the floor as gently as, as she can. That's quite a collection. Siri giggles in excitement while catching her breath, Natsuki replies. There's still one more box. I can put them away myself. I know how to organize them. I was tempted to vote no after you said that, bro. Monica anxiously glances between Sayori and Yuri. Is this really okay for the club? Maybe it's what she needs to really kick the club into gear before everyone gets too complacent. It seems like things are finally going to start getting more serious. That's cool. At the next club meeting, Monica is the first to arrive. But ever since Natsuki joined, she feels a lot less relaxed. Why am I so nervous? Monica paces, trying to figure out her feelings. Natsuki said she wasn't going to bother anyone, so why does it feel like the atmosphere has changed so much? While well, Monica thinks the, the club door opens, and revealing Natsuki carrying a box. Mary's have already banned me for standing up for the, for the fact that you insulted me. I mean, if you're chatting shit to the streamer, then what do you expect? You know? Like, what do you expect? 
Mario, I know what Mario's like. He's not going to ban someone unless they actually do something to piss him off. You know? And he's not... He's, he, like, if someone pisses him off, you're done. You know? Well, Monica... Yeah, so Natsuki's coming here carrying a box. Monica forces a smile as Natsuki makes her way to the closet. Natsuki forces one in return. Need help? No, I got it. Monica awkwardly tries to start some kind of conversation, but fails. Curious, she peeks into the closet where Natsuki is stashing all of her manga. Once stalled with the school supplies, she, her shelves are now vibrant with bright colours and cute-looking artwork. You know, the top shelf is pretty empty. Maybe we could keep it up there? I can't reach up there. That would be so inconvenient. Yeah, but... Monica sighs. The teachers are going to ask us what all this manga is doing in here, and I have to tell them it's for Literature Club. So? Monica backs off and slumps into her desk. With this kind of tension, it feels like the relaxed atmosphere accumulated over the last few weeks is being sucked right out of the room. Monica, just be nice. Just fucking accommodate Natsuki. Jesus! She's just not being very accommodating right now, man. Siri spins into the club room. Oh, I see someone's in a good mood. Yeah, because I have this. Siri branches a cookie wrapped in plastic. I found some money and got a cookie. Ooh, that is so pretty. As Siri trots over to the closet, the colorful shelves catch her eye. Which one do I start with? Well, you can start by giving me a bite of that cookie. No way. I saved up all my luck to find that money. If you want entry into my kingdom, you need to pay the tax, peasant. Boo. Defeated, Siri wraps her cookie and breaks off a piece for Natsuki. Then Yuri silently walks into the club room. Monica glances at her with pleading eyes. Yuri returns a quick nod of understanding. Well, everyone's here now. Despite the club only having one more person than before, it somehow feels twice as lively. Okay, so I think today we should go over some potential club activities and see which ones we want to do first. We have four members now, so it'd be great if we found some stuff to do as a group. Does that sound good to everyone? I agree. Okay, so I have some ideas of my own, but I want to hear your ideas too. Well, I've been having a lot of fun learning about everyone else's interests. Maybe we can give each person a day to share their favourite kind of literature with everyone else? Well, maybe. Something tells me that... Oh my god. One of the glances at Yuri and Natsuki both appear very unwilling to even consider each other's interests. Oh my god. Can we not have the beef for once, please? Just once. The problem is, with this all being set before the main game... We know there's beef between Yuri and Natsuki in the main game. So they're clearly not going to patch up like their relationship before they get the main game begins, you know? So I'm interested to see what their side story is going to be like. Because there's, there's a side story for every pairing of girls. Maybe we can try to come up with something that everyone can enjoy equally. You know, like we all vote on a book to read or something like that. I think we should all collectively try to expand our interests rather than all just stick to the things we're familiar with. Why does it feel like I'm being targeted here? Natsuki, didn't you say you would go along with whatever the club wants to do? Well, yeah, that doesn't make it okay for you to ignore everyone else's preferences. I like Sari's suggestion. Yeah, me too. Oh, my God. Fucking beef central here, Monica. Just let Natsuki enjoy her own shit. I'm actually... Monica is pissing me off right now, legitimately. Yeah, but... um, Monica's voice trails off. Although she let Natsuki join the club, Monica finds it incredibly difficult to relent to her demands. If Natsuki doesn't respect the club, why should Monica have to yield to Natsuki's opinion and everything? How is she not respecting the club? She's literally saying she liked the idea of another club member. How is that not respecting the club? Natsuki, you sure that you don't have any other literature interests you could share with the club? I swear I don't mind you keep your manga in here, but I just... Natsuki cuts Monica off by suddenly standing up. Well, it's obvious that I'm not wanted here, so I'm just going to leave. But I really would have appreciated you being more upfront about it. Okay, I think what you're kind of jumping to conclusions here, but you're free to do whatever you want. Oh my god. Madness. Absolute madness. Absolute fucking madness. Natsuki shoots Monica a quick glare before walking straight out of the room. Oh no. Suri runs after her, leaving just after Mo just Monica and Yuri. For those set for the second time today, Monica slumps down into a desk. Why am I such a jerk? You are! No, you fucking are a jerk! No, she's a jerk. She's just making me feel this way. No, no, it's you. It's you. Monica looks at Yuri, seeking affirmation. Yuri looks away. She probably just went around looking for the smallest club she could find so she doesn't have to participate. <sighs> Raw. Raw. How does she expect me, expect me to give her respect when she has no respect for the club? Am I wrong, Yuri? I'm not good at these things. Monica sighs. Me neither. I just have no idea what to do. I don't want to hurt anyone, but I feel like it's not wrong for, it, it's not wrong to enforce the club vision. You know, like people should join because they want to express their passion for literature. Oh my god, Monica, she's literally talking about manga. Just just count it as literature. 
She's treating Natsuki like a piece of shit, and I really don't like it right now. Maybe she's not a good fit for the club after all. Monica sits in silence, afraid to accept her tentative conclusion. Yuri looks tense, but she doesn't seem to want to add anything. Sorry, you can go back to reading. I know this doesn't concern you. It does. It does. How? Well, I can't comfortably read an atmosphere where the peace has been disturbed. Oh. I'm just ruining the whole club then. That's not an accurate conclusion to make. I know, I'm sorry. I'm just tired of kind of voicing my frustration and I guess guilt. It's like my frustration wants to blame her, but my guilt wants to blame me. Why is it the hardest to be rational during the times you need the most? Thanks for three bits, Fried. Don't, I don't think you're being irrational. I think Natsuki is. She has no authority to walk in here and make demands of the club. You're cl She's not making demands. Oh my god. It's like I was reading a different fucking thing. Sayori suggested that they re they all read different things out and Natsuki agreed. How is agreeing with somebody else's suggestion making demands? Something as ridiculous as manga has no place here. The fact that you're even st storing it for her to make, is, to make her completely in depth to you. Oh my god. Right, you know what? Fuck Yuri. Yuri is joining the we, the we Hate Club as well now. I'm sorry. Uh, Elian, you might be a Yuri backer, but you've got to agree that, that that's, that's, that's pushing it. That's fucking rude. That is rude. That whole sentence is just fucking horrid. What the fuck? You're right, but I don't know. Isn't that kind of harsh to say things like, like it's ridiculous and it has no place here? Do you not feel the same way? You've been doing everything you can to avoid associating the club with it. So I assumed you felt the same way about it. That's not true. Well, recalling a conversation with Natsuki, a realization starts to set in. You may be right. I mean, if it was anything besides manga, would I really be acting like this? Maybe I've just been convincing myself it has nothing to do with the manga. I'm really upset that I would let myself do that. So go and fucking find her! With a sigh, Monica walks over to the closet. She finds herself staring at the colorful shelves. It's just, this really wasn't what I had in mind for club about literature. I feel like Natsuki constantly wants to say that manga is literature. I literally feel like Natsuki. There shouldn't be anything wrong with that. Monica starts defending her position once again. It's a complicated issue that Monica had failed to consider before now. Where is the line even drawn at what's considered literature? Lost in thought, she reaches into one of the larger box sets and pulls out a volume, inspecting it for no particular reason. The cover features four girls striking cute and exaggerated poses, still dre all dressed in short skirts. DDLC. Yeah, I mean, amused by the absurdity of the cover, Monica opens the book. Oh, here we go. Oh, what? End of part one, I guess. Oh, cool. Finish the side story, respect one. Fair enough. Anything else unlocked here? I don't think so. No. No, nothing else. All right, respect part two. Fucking hell, no wonder this side story is called respect. Monica needs to learn to fight, show some. All right, see you later, Fred. Why is Monica such a jerk? She should be grateful I even joined this stupid club. It's not like she can find any members. Monica's usually really nice. She cares so much about everyone in the club being happy. Yeah, right. Well, she usually does. See, look, Sayori, this is this is what we call a based character. Sayori gets that Natsuki's being treated like shit. What if I'm, so what if I'm into manga? Why can't just one person accept that instead of being so condescending about it? I accept it. I think it's cute. Oh, come on, that's condescending too. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it like that. I just want to support you. Natsuki sighs. I know, thanks. It just really sucks. Do you want me to talk to Monica? I don't know. It's not like it's going to change her opinion of me. Like, even if you were to convince her to back off, that wouldn't suddenly make me feel like I'm actually welcome in the club. I should just find another club. You don't have to do that. We can figure this out, please. I mean, I'm the vice president, or at least I think I am, and I don't want you to leave. Everyone deserves to feel welcome and to be happy, so I want that to make that happen for you. Um, I was wondering, what was the reason you decided to join the literature club? Well, Natsuki hesitates. It's kind of dumb. Oh, don't say that. There's no such thing as a dumb reason when everyone is welcome. I wasn't welcome. You were to me. So, just don't tell anyone, okay? Especially Monica. I promise. Natsuki sighs. I'm just tired of everyone judging me all the time. I can't enjoy any of the stuff I'm into without people making snotty comments about it. Not that I care about what anyone else thinks. But, you know, the signs for Literature Club said that you could be yourself or whatever. So I decided it was at least worth a shot. But that was a lie, apparently. Legitimately. Like, that's what the fucking flyer says. And I totally understand how she feels. I really do. I get that probably more than I should. Natsuki dejectedly kicks the toe of her shoe against the wall. 
Oh, and I like writing too. Really? How come you didn't sell it to Monica? Because she was being so judgmental that I didn't just want to tell her something she wants to hear. She didn't. She didn't deserve that kind of satisfaction. I, I honestly like if 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 Monica was behaving that way, I can't blame Natsuki for not saying that. Because like it was very clear that Monica was looking down on her. And if she knew I was right into writing, then she would just be like everyone else and try to push me away from the manga and more in favor of the mature thing. Exactly. The two of them remained silent for a while. Suri understands that it's out of the question for Natsuki to return to the club room for today at least. But Natsuki has a reason for wanting to join the club just like everyone else. It's part of the club vision for her to be welcome. You deserve to express yourself as much as everyone else does. That's supposed to be what the club is for. So, I'm going to do everything I can to fix this. I promise. Of course, Monica looks down at her and Natsuki's like four foot tall. Bruh. It's lunchtime the next day. The cafeteria and hallways are bustling with students rushing to meet with their friends and make the most out of their limited break time. Where could she be? Among them is Monica, who always eats lunch in her classroom, but she has some additional business today. Fearing Natsuki would avoid coming to the club, Monica decided to try and find her during lunch so that she could make amends. Good fucking luck the way he treated her. It was horrible. You have to do more than make amends. You have to fucking, like, give her lots and lots of cookies or something. That's how I feel better. After searching for an extensive time, Monica finally spots her. Despite her short stature, Natsuki's bright hair helps her stand out from the crowd. Oh, gosh. Suddenly feeling awkward, Monica is afraid to get closer. Natsuki is with some friends who Monica doesn't recognize, and they're all energetically chatting together. It would be really tactless to just interrupt them. Oh, God. Hello. Oh, yeah. Didn't you end up joining the literature club or what? Huh? Of course I joined. Why wouldn't I? Ha! I told you she would join. Come on, you knew she only joined because you wouldn't stop giving her crap about the anime club. I told you, and everyone wants to join that stupid club. Oh, sure. We have to give her some credit for at least making an effort to finally grow past that trash. True. Well, congrats on finally graduating middle school, Natsuki. We're proud of you. Shut up. Just let me do my thing. I'm just joking. You know we love you. Yeah, once this club makes you a famous writer, we'll be the first ones to buy your book. What, are you going to buy a smutty fan fiction? What the fuck is this? Obviously, I want to sign copy. That was like years ago. You don't think I've grown out of it by now? I told you I was joking. Besides, it's a good reminder of how far you've come since then. Not to mention, you couldn't have done it without us. That gives us a pass to joke about it. Yeah, sure. They grow up so fast, it brings a tear to my eye. Natsuki suddenly glances in Monica's direction, prompting Monica to quickly turn away and distance herself. The fuck? The heck? That was horrible. I should have said something to defend her. Why do I have to be so conf conflict avoidant? Not that I deserve to say anything. I'm hardly better than them after the way I treated her. Oh, I'm so awful. I'm not doing anything right. Correct. After school ends, Monica distractedly makes her way to the club room. She finds Yuri already inside, eyes on her book as usual. Monica picks her desk and slumps, in, slumps into it, something she seems to be doing rather often lately. Yuri, I don't think I can be club president. I suck at handling anything that doesn't go like exactly my way. Yuri looks up from her book. It's like the literature club is a place where you get to express yourself unless it's in a way that I don't like. I'm so mad at myself. At least she sees it now. Fucking hell. And I'm especially mad that I didn't have the self-reflection skills to realize what I was doing. So much for maturity. Sorry, I really shouldn't be cleaning out loud like this. There's just like a lot on my mind. No. I enjoy listening. Really? Mm-hmm. Why? Yuri shrugs. She makes me feel nice. Oh, well, I guess I'll just continue then. Yuri nods. Yeah. I just... Well, Natsuki has kind of a blunt attitude, you know? Made me feel like she wasn't taking the club seriously and I couldn't even figure out why she wants to join. I saw her friends talking to her in the hallway during lunch and they were just so mean to her. Telling her to grow up and stuff like that. The literature club would help her grow out of her manga. It just made me so mad. Like, just let her enjoy it if it makes her happy. Why are you trying to take that away from her? Wow. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we call character development. It seems that Monica has grown something called a fucking brain inside that hollowed out skull she had. And when I had that thought, it was when I came to the realization that I was kind of doing the same thing, just in a roundabout way. I should have made her feel good about being passionate about something, but I just dismissed it. No, I was actually trying to avoid acknowledging it at all. I even did that with you, Yuri, when you first joined the club. Y you did? Yeah, I remember. Fancy isn't really my thing, so I was kind of trying to dismiss it, but then Siori jumped in and took over the conversation. I should have reflected on that, but I didn't, because I just let Siori handle it instead. And now I'm repeating the same mistake, except I really hurt someone this time. Monica shakes her head. I'm so tired of being afraid of things I'm not comfortable with. It's so stupid. Like, can I just, I can just picture how much joy it would bring Natsuki if I let her stare at pas share a passion a little. I'm so angry that her friends were treating her like that. I'm going to get them back for it. Get them back? Yeah. I'll get them back by making sure this is the literature club that Natsuki wants, not the one that they want. Suddenly, Siri bursts through the door, making Monica and Yuri jump. With a rare stern face, she marches over to Monica's desk and sits down next to her. I'm having an intervention. I can do that because I'm vice president. Cue the How I Met Your Mother theme. 
this about Natsuki? Yes. Yeah, I know. I messed up. I'm super sorry. I was just talking to Yuri about it. Really? I was so dismissive of her passion that she felt threatened and probably just unwelcome. Literally the opposite of what the literature club is supposed to be. I really need to make it up to her. Oh. Yay, I did it. Thanks for the intervention, Sayori. I'm glad we're on the same page. Friendship wins again. So how do you want to make it up to her? I have a plan. Sayori, do you know if Natsuki is coming to the club meeting today? She's... I, I don't think she is. I see. Monica was afraid of that. Not because of her plan, but because she's facing the consequences of the damage she's inadvertently caused. Inadvertently? There was nothing fucking inadvertent about it. But the only way to do the right thing is to face it head on. It's so easy to just duck away from conflict and wait for it to blow over. But that's not enough. To truly respect someone's feelings after you've hurt them is to face them and admit your wrongdoing. Not the wrongdoing of mismanaging the club, but the wrongdoing of disrespecting Natsuki's feelings. Okay, do you think you can get her to come to the meeting tomorrow? I can do that. Okay, awesome. Yuri, you don't have to worry about anything, but thank you for being my friend. You're a good listener. Hmm. Fishing with her hair, Yuri turns away to hide a smile. Well, I guess for today, it's going to be a pretty quiet club meeting. I'm going to step out for a bit. Is that okay? 20 quid as she bumps into Natsuki. Yeah, I'm just going to read with Yuri. Hey, is this one of Natsuki's books? How come it's out here? Siri picks up a manga that was resting on an adjacent desk. Oh, that? Natsuki probably just left it out by accident. But I thought she hasn't been coming to the club. Actually, Monica's been... Okay, Yuri, I'm sure it was just someone else who was using this classroom then, okay? Oh, God. So, hang on. Was Monica actually trying to read it and she's hiding it up? Hiding it? Monica smiles at them both. Then with a the wave, she ex exits the club room. I think she was. Shit. I really shouldn't have left that out. If Siri catches on, she'll definitely tell Natsuki and that would get really awkward. She has started reading it. I wonder if there's a keyboard I could borrow from the music room. Interesting. She's going to start practicing your reality? Oh, shit. The time for the next club meeting has already arrived. Monica and Yuri are the first to arrive. I'm so worried. Do you think Sayori is going to be able to bring Natsuki? Yes. How do you know? Well, she's Sayori. Hmm. You know, you're right. Time slowly passes. Monica sits, then stands up to pace around, then sits again. Yuri's eyes don't move from her book. Then the door finally opens. Sayori marches inside. Behind her, Natsuki shovels inside, nervously looking around the room. We're here. Welcome back. Monica, the club president, stands up and greets them with a smile. Why does it specify she's the club president there? Monica, this girl you've never, definitely never met and not seen in three substories before. Siri picks a desk and takes a seat, and Natsuki sits closely next to her. Looking back and forth between the club members, Monica is struck with a nostalgic feeling. She would stand at the front of the club room just like this, struggling to picture just how, who, who may eventually be sitting before her. But imagination was never enough to predict just how unique and diverse each member would be. Each with her own struggles, her own reasons for seeking the vision that Monica had admittedly so vaguely advertised. Seeking trust, understanding, respect. Ah, the three sub-story names so far! I see what you did there, very nice. What new lessons will the future hold for the literature club? Well, I think there's about three more maybe? Realising she's getting ahead of herself, Monica takes a deep breath and returns to the present. God, my eye is itching me, bro. Okay everyone, the literature club is starting. We have an activity planned for today. Monica turns around to face the chalkboard. On it, she writes manga in big letters. Today, we're going to learn from an expert about a unique form of literature, manga. Oh, come on. Isn't this kind of forced? I know you don't actually want to do this, so just... Monica shakes her head. Natsuki, this is the hardest part. After making it this far, it'd be so easy to just smile and move on. But that's not enough. Not this time. I'm sorry. It was wrong of me not to take you seriously when you were kind enough to show interest in my club. I thought about it and I realised how biased I was against manga. It caused me to disrespect you and I'm sorry but I think you deserve to be able to share your passion with us. So can I make it up to you? Well, thanks, but I know you're only doing this because Sayori told you to. Wait, that's not true. Monica planned this all by herself. I didn't even get a chance to talk to her. I was witness to that as well. This is the Literature Club. The Literature Club is a place where everyone gets to be themselves. We all have our own interests and our own differences. It's my vision to let us freely express that. And it's my goal to respect everyone for them. So if I just want to learn about the things that make you, so I just want to learn about the things that make you happy. I think that you deserve to share that joy as much as anyone else does. Is that okay? Natsuki looks away and hesitates. But it's really dumb. The stuff I'm into. Monica smiles. She kneels in front of Natsuki's desk, looking her st straight in the eye. If you like it, then it's not dumb. Oh, except for me. Sorry, you're not dumb either. <laughs> what the heck? You guys are so weird. Fine, I'll show you some of my manga. Only because you admitted that it's literature after all. Natsuki stands up. Oh yeah, I didn't say this before, but I'm actually into writing too. I'm kind of a pro, but I didn't want you to, to like me just for that. Wow, really? I really did have you all wrong, Natsuki. Yeah, whatever. 
Today's not about that anyway, right? It's about manga. So hope you're ready. Aw, very cool. Very, very cool. A week has passed since Natsuki returned to the Literature Club. Since then, the club activities have been in full swing. Each club member has received a, had received a day in the spotlight to share all their favourite kinds of literature with each other. As another meeting draws to a close, Monica approaches Natsuki on the way out. Natsuki, are you in a hurry home or anything? Me? Not particularly. Why? It was just something that I wanted to show you if you had a few minutes. Sure, what is it? It's not in here. Can you follow me to the music room? Oh my god, is she learned like some kind of anime theme or something? The music room? Why? You'll see. You know, I was thinking back, when the club was just me and Sayori, we would talk about how we envisioned the club's turn out. The music room looks cool, holy shit. We cared a lot about it being a place where people could express themselves. And she said something strange to me. She said that I was trying to make the club that I needed myself more than anyone. But I think it wasn't until you joined that I fully understood that. Because you really taught me a lot about myself, like things I was probably always too stubborn to admit. Oh come on, you can't mean that, I didn't even do anything. I just like, brought a bunch of manga and then I got fussy when I didn't have my way. It was really stupid of me to make such a big deal out of it. No, I honestly needed it. If you didn't express that you were hurt, I would never have realised that I did something wrong. Besides, your feelings are valid. They deserve to be heard and respected. It's just really hard to feel that way sometimes. You know, like, I really shouldn't care about what the people think in the first place. But when you're just criticised by everyone around you for being a certain way, it can get really hard to just brush it off. And it makes me start to feel like I'm the problem. Like I'm not doing enough to please everyone else. Am I being too entitled if I just want people to like me without having to hide a bunch of stuff about myself? Yep. Fucking know that feel, bro. Cheers to that. Bro. I don't think I am. I just wish that sometimes people would try to appreciate me for who I actually am. As Monica listens, she recalls vividly how Natsuki's friends were treating her and how naturally they did so. How long has she been fighting against that, refusing to change for others? I could only wish I was as strong as you are, Natsuki. You're so honest with yourself. I'm like always trying to come up as perfect for other people. Anytime there's a hint of contention, I just crumble. But it's thanks to you that I really started thinking about this stuff. You really inspired me to start working on it. But I, well, like I said, I didn't even do anything. You were just being yourself. That's all you need to do. Also, there's something else. Hmm? Monica takes a breath. The thing is, I might have read a little bit of your manga. What? You, what the heck? Why didn't you tell me? I'm sorry. I think I just felt like kind of embarrassed to admit it after I gave you such a hard time about it. <laughs> I can't believe you of all people were reading manga behind my back. That's so funny. Yeah, well, I just flipped through one of them out of curiosity, but I ended up actually reading a whole bunch of it. But I mean, one of the characters in the literature club. What are the chances, right? You're reading Parfait Girls? Wow, you have good taste. Just just one volume, and I kind of just picked it out randomly. Well, you have good intuition, then. You have to tell me all your favourite parts. <laughs> well, I think it was some kind of weird fate, because the character isn't in the, just in the literature club. She also plays piano. It's just weird, because I've always wanted to learn piano. She was like the perfect person that I always wish I was if I just did what I wanted instead of always second-guessing myself. Monica walks over to the piano and sits down. Oh, now that's a fucking cute CG. Oh, I always feel like I should only share the absolute best parts of myself, the parts that will impress people or make them more like me, or like, like me more. But after you joined the club, I actually realised how self-destructive that mentality is. We share things because we want to express ourselves. Sharing experiences allows us to share emotions. And I just felt like, like I wanted to show you this, because if it wasn't for you, I never would have started playing. Hey, I think the, the credit for that one goes to Parfait Girls, not me. No. Well, maybe it's true that Parfait Girls put the thought into my head, but it was you, still you that inspired me to keep practicing every day. Every day? Because, you know, you just made me feel like if I want to do something, I should just do it. I mean, I still haven't been practicing for very long, and I'm really not good at it yet. Like, at all. But I wrote you a song... Oh my god, but I wrote a song for the club and I really worked really, really hard on it. This is the exact fucking quote that she says at the end of the main game. What the fuck? Oh my god, I love it. I love that so much. It doesn't have any words or anything, but well, yeah. Oh my god. What's going on here? It's not the end of the sub stories or something. Like, what's going on? What's going on? It's like it's the end of the sub the side stories. I'm so confused. It's really sweet though. I like the music.
was really nice. I like that a lot. Oh. Aww. Now I'm not allowed to play that. What the fuck? I want to learn that. That's all. That was so good. It was? Yeah, are you kidding? You're like already a pro. Not even close. Does the song have a name? You said it was about the club, so... Yeah, it's called My Song, Your Notes. Because everyone brings something so unique to the club. It's completely different from how I first imagined it, I think. But it was, but I was like such a selfish, selfish perfectionist. It shouldn't be about me, it should be about everyone. And it's all of you who help shape the club into what it is. I would never change that. Well, I think that's really thoughtful and kind of flattering. I kind of feel like I don't deserve this much validation. I wasn't exactly very patient either when I first joined the club. It makes me feel like I should probably apologize too. I think I was just really fed up with a lot of things. I got frustrated after not getting my way in the club. So, yeah. I really didn't mean to take it out on you. I was being really immature. If you get my stubborn butt to apologize... Oh, if you get my stubborn butt to apologize, I guess you're doing something right. It's fine. I'm past it too. I think we're already even. But it's really sweet you were thinking about it. It takes a lot of maturity to reflect on that kind of thing. Well... Well, I wonder who I got it from. Hmm? Oh, never mind. Anyway, we're, ev we're, even as long we're even as long as you let me keep my manga in the club room. You did admit that it's a form of literature. You, to you, can't, you totally can't take that back now. You got me. The closet's all yours. <laughs> I'll, tell you what I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll bring in a little something for the club tomorrow. If you, if you, I want to do something nice in return. What kind of little something? Oh, hey up. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Oh, no, she won't. The next club meeting ends up after, after being a particularly tasty one. Ah, lovely. Ah, very nice. I've got a new email in here. I honestly don't get these emails, chat. I really, really don't get these. I, I don't understand them. Like, I, I really don't know what this is about. It's like talking about, like, visual like novels and shit. I don't even fucking know. I feel like five, seven... No, I haven't got a clue. No idea. Right, pictures. So now we've got... Hey, finish the side story, respect two. Ah, oh, that's a cute one. I like that a lot. And we've got Fish Side Story Respect 2. There's Monica. Getting even more of the things done. Okay, there's the CG. Oh no, I want to just bring it up on screen. That's such a cool CG. I love that a lot. I think that's everything so far now, yeah? Cool. So, three sub-stories down. Trust, understanding, and respect. Next up, balance. Thanos would love this one. Holy shit. Let's do this. Natsuki, well, Natsuki is mess mess messing with the orientation of a manga in the closet shelves, and Sayori approaches from behind and pulls her into an embrace. What? Hi. Hi. The literature club has been in full swing since Natsuki joined. Including her, the club is now comprised of four members. Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and Monika. Each club member had received a day in the spotlight to share all her favourite kinds of literature with each other. Natsuki was first and shared her passion for manga. Then Sayori shared a love for poetry as well as how she goes about writing it herself. Monica, who has multiple history interests, decided to focus her day on short stories. And finally, Yuri managed to demonstrate her obsession with fantasy with little help and encouragement from Siori. After the week was spent on their presentations, Monica decided to give the club members this next week to freely explore each other's literary interests. Siori, having spent most of her time in the club so far with Yuri's fantasy books, is rather excited about beginning to... Uh, uh, is rather excited, fuck's sake, to begin her journey into Natsuki's manga collection. I, I want to read with you today. Tell me which one I should pick. Well, it depends on the kind of stuff you like. I mean, if there's like romance, drama, comedy, mystery. I like all those things. Suri reaches out and pulls a random book from the shelf and inspects the cover. Shouldn't this girl be wearing more clothes? Y you wouldn't like that one. In a panic, Natsuki snatches the book from Suri's hand and replaces it on the shelf in a less conspicuous location. Okay, well, if you really have no preference, then let's just start with something that's easy to get into. A lot of these don't start to get really good until a few volumes in, and I wouldn't ask someone to make I wouldn't I wouldn't ask someone to make that kind of commitment unless they're already in, in really into manga. Now Skiri Tentai could I mean I was wondering what that was, but I thought I'd better just, you know, not comment, you know what I mean? Better not saying anything. I could handle it. I did it with Yuri's book at least. Well I'm more considerate than that. Although I'm kind of impressed by her attention span if you put that much effort into her books. No, I have the attention span of a donut, but I love my friends and I can do anything if it's for them. Well, okay then. Let's pick you something that even donuts can read. I didn't say I was a donut, I just said that I had the attention span of one. Aw, oh, are you just trying to call me sweet? You're so cute. No! How did you get to that, that to that conclusion? And don't call me that. A donut? C cute. How come? 
She don't like it. I don't need a reason. Natsuki yanks a book from the shelf and closes the closet doors. If someone asks you to stop, then you just need to stop. People need to realize that. I I'm sorry. I really didn't mean to hurt you. Nah, sorry. It wasn't you. Natsuki shakes her head while pulling a second chair over to her desk. I was talking about something else. I didn't mean to get all angry all of a sudden. Natsuki averts her gaze and mumbles. You're like, well, a nice person, so I wasn't talking about you. I still learned a valuable lesson. Siri speaks softly as well, feeling shy after receiving the unexpected compliment. Well, anyway. Here's the book, you should, so you start it whenever you feel like it. What's it about? Well, it's a, like a comedy, and there's romance too, obviously. Siri looks at the title. It's called Love is Another Word for Luck. It's about a girl who keeps accidentally running into the same guys, and then you find out, like, well, you should just read it. But you have to tell me what you think. Hmm. Okay. I can already guess who you're going to ship with yourself with. It would be so funny if I'm right. Ship? I don't get it. Never mind. Let's not worry about that yet. Just make sure you tell me what you think. Oh, okay. I'll start then. Hey, maybe tomorrow we can do poetry too. Oh, um, yeah, I guess. But don't you want to finish this first? Yeah, we could do both. I mean, unless you don't like... My God. I only knocked the wire a bit. It's trying to fucking charge. Then I won't make you or anything. No, it's just... Never mind, we can worry about it tomorrow. After the club meeting ends and Natsuki and Yuri leave, Monica strikes up a conversation with Sayori. I see you got Natsuki to share some of her manga with you. I really want to become better friends with her. She's so enthusiastic and expressive. I could just listen to her talk. She's so... I'm not sure she meant I can't say that to her if I can't say it at all. Say what? Nothing. I'm a woman of respect. But Natsuki is a woman of cute. Oh, I said it. What's so bad about that? I don't know. But you know, there's one thing I'm kind of worried about. Sometimes I'm afraid that, Natsuki, afraid that Natsuki actually doesn't like me very much. Oh, that's ridiculous. How come you feel that way? Well, I mean, just little signs like how she only says hi to me after I say hi to her first. And it feels like she only gets excited to talk to me when it's about manga and other stuff she likes. She just seems dismissive a lot. She was like that when I brought up poetry. Yeah, but that doesn't mean she doesn't like you. She's probably just shy, you know? Maybe. My stupid head is really making me worry for no reason. It likes to do that. It's okay. Try not to worry so much. Everything will be great. But you can always talk to me about my concern that you have. I'm here to help. You're the best. Siri gives Monica a quick hug. Well, I'm going to keep trying because I love her and want to get close to her. You got this. Aww. No. No. After the next club meeting starts, Siri is the last one in as usual. Trotting into the room, she sees Natsuki sitting alone by the closet reading what must be manga. Without hesitation, Siri pulls up a chair and plops herself down right next to Natsuki. Hello there. General Kenobi. What you reading? Can I read it with you? Natsuki pulls the book away from Sayori. You can't just start in the middle. There are spoilers. Besides, what about the one I gave you yesterday? Sorry, I was just curious. How long has my controller been plugged in for now? I got back from the cinema at... 6, was it? No, 5. So 5 to 9. Fuck it, that's 4 hours. That'll do. Anyway, I've been waiting forever for this volume to come out, and I just came out yesterday, so... Oh, that's exciting. Well, I'll let you read it, then. Mm-hmm. Can I sit next to you, though? Uh, sure. Sari plops herself down next to Natsuki, then pulls out a blank sheet of paper. Natsuki reads in silence, save for the periods of periodic flutter of a page being released from beneath her thumb. From Sari's side, only the light tapping noise of her pen meeting the paper can be heard. Time passes. Sari's paper is filled with scribbles, and the margins are lined with stick figures. Natsuki lets out a deep sigh and closes her book. Did you finish? No, but it's a good stopping point. My head is swimming. I need a break. Natsuki stretches her arms. Aren't you bored? No, I was writing. I saw all the stick figures and thought you were just bored. I just draw those when I'm thinking or waiting for inspiration. I made friends with them all. This one is sad because she thinks the night sky is pretty, but she can't look up at the stars in public without everyone thinking she's a weirdo. And this one has problems with his back, but the doctors can't figure out what's wrong with him. What the heck? You're the weirdo. Want to read the poem I'm working on? Sure, I guess. Suri slides the paper over to Natsuki. As Natsuki reads through the poem, she furrows her eyebrows. Hmm. She slides the paper back over to Siori. Don't you ever feel weird just sharing all your thoughts and feelings like that? I mean, your poems are, like, really emotional. Is that bad? Well, no, it's just an observation. I think people can get closer to each other if they find ways of expressing their feelings. Well, Natsuki begins to protest, but she can't find a good way of putting her thoughts into words. Doesn't that depend more on the kinds of friends you have? I don't know. To each their own, but I've never met anyone I feel comfortable sharing my poems with. Not that it's you, it's just how I am, so... You write poems? You never told me that. I just thought you wrote other stuff. Yeah, that too, but you should... I mean, would you ever want to share? Like I said, I don't do that. But can we talk about something else? I'm sorry. It's not your fault. It just makes me feel uncomfortable. I can't help it. 
Still, I'm sorry. Nasty key. Why are you saying nasty key, Jeez, boss? It's fine. Let's move on to something that makes us both happy. I should continue the book you gave me since I didn't get very far yet. Sure. Okay. Over the next few days, Sari begins each club meeting by approaching Natsuki with unwavering enthusiasm. It's Natsuki! Natsuki! Oh my god. Hi, Natsuki! Jeez. At the end of one club meeting, Monica, who has become rather invested in Sari's friendship mission, starts an innocuous conversation with Natsuki while she packs up. It's cool you've been finding time to spend with Sayori. She's pretty excited for the chance to read manga with you. Yeah. I'm sure you've been enjoying the chance to share it too, right? Yeah, mostly. Hmm? Natsuki glances over her shoulder, but she doesn't reply, but doesn't reply further. What's on your mind? Nothing. I don't talk about people behind their backs. Oh. Natsuki falls down, but she just fidgets instead of getting back to what she was doing, as though she wants to say more. It's okay to share your feelings. That's different from talking about someone behind their back. I guess. I just hate when people talk about me behind my back, so I'm better than to, so I so I'm better than to do it to others. Monica shares a bright smile. You're really considerate. Um, thanks, I guess. But it doesn't feel like it. You can trust me. Natsuki stands in silence for a moment, still fidgeting. I just feel smothered sometimes. I'm not used to someone being all like all over me right after we meet. I mean, it's fun to hang out with her, but I just have no control over the pace. I just can't meet someone and instantly become best friends with them and like share everything about myself. That's not how it works. I just want to chill out sometimes. I didn't realize that was happening. It's fine. Why would you have? I know. I just feel bad about it. I know Sayori, so I should have realized. Monica navigates through a tinge of guilt, which has surfaced mainly due to her being the one who previously encouraged Sayori's behavior. Despite not knowing the situation, Monica can't help but feel a little responsible. Do you want me to talk to her about it? No, I wouldn't like that. Well, I could, I don't know, like, divert her to another club activity for you or something? No way, that would be so underhanded and mean. Sorry, I didn't think that one through. Besides, just because I complained about it doesn't mean I'm asking for someone to resolve my problems for me. True. I'm sorry. I guess I just instinctively want to try and solve problems, even if I haven't been invited to. It's fine. I would talk to Siri about it, but it would make things really weird between us. I feel like it would make her just constantly be afraid that she's bothering me. I don't know how to just keep things natural. Well, I think if you do a good job expressing all your feelings, she would totally understand. Sayori really wants to be the best she can be for other people. I think she would actually be happy that you wanted to improve your friendship with her. Maybe. I just feel so dumb talking to someone about how to be friends with them. It's just weird and not cool. Monica shrugs. It's the literature club. Then she mumbles through a stifled laugh. It's not the cool club. Oh god, Monica. Hey! Sorry, that just tickled me for some reason. Look, I know that you're kind of in a tough spot and that it's hard for you to really express yourself, but you've really demonstrated to me that you're great at self-reflection and critical thinking, even if it doesn't feel like it to you. I think that's the most important part of being able to navigate through these things. So I believe that you'll find the right thing to do. Well, Natsuki instinctively starts to reject the compliment, but she can't find any excuse to do so. Thanks. Natsuki gathers her things, then she finishes her thoughts in a mumble. And I'm still glad I joined the club, even if it's weird sometimes. Monica smiles, but Natsuki turns her back and walks away before waiting for a reply. It was an unusual way to Natsuki, for Natsuki to express her appreciation, but Monica knew what she meant. It made Monica feel like everything really was going to be okay. And that's the end of part one. Interesting. We've got more new music. Jeez. My song, Your Notes, and all that. Oh my god, there's so many. My song, Your Note, Piano. Oh wait, so like, My Song, Your Note has a non-piano version? Oh, it does. Oh, that's cute. Okay. Balance. Oh, Ding. FBI boy. Thanks so much to follow, dude. Is a machine. That goes. Now we move on Ding. to balance part two. Let's go. We're, we're making good for good time right now, chat. We're only two hours in, and we're almost finished the fourth of seven. It's lunchtime. Siri, who usually buys her lunch, is making her way to the cafeteria like any other day. The clamor and bustle of the students is drowned by Siri's impeccable skill of zoning out. However, her imagination is momentarily interrupted by the glimpse of a familiar pink-haired girl. Hey, that's Natsuki. And everyone is the other club members around the school. Natsuki! Siri stands on her tiptoes and waves. Natsuki is busy walking and chatting with her friends, doesn't notice Siri at first. Then she glances over in Siri's direction and Siri waves enthusiastically. Following her friends, Natsuki quickly ducks around the corner. Oh, shit. Hey, she definitely saw me. Oh, shit. Monica is the first to arrive at a club meeting, and then Natsuki. Suri, having glanced through the window to see Natsuki already inside, is unable to work up enough courage to enter. Natsuki's been so distant with me. I was stupid to think she ever wants to be friends. She only got excited because she got to share her manga. But aside from that, she doesn't even like me. I should just go home today. Um, Sorry, would you plan on going inside? No. Why? I'm sulking. 
Oh. Well, I'm sorry for bothering you. Excuse me. No, don't leave me. Oh, I'll stay here then. I don't want to go in. I'm afraid of bothering Natsuki. I saw her at lunch today, so I waved and called out to her, but instead of saying hi, she just ran away from me. Really? Hmm, not bad. Hey. Sorry, I'm sorry. That was a joke. Just sounded like something stupid that I would do from anxiety. From anxiety? Well, I just don't like the attention being drawn to myself. Oh. Well, that makes sense based on the person you are, but Natsuki isn't shy like that at all. I thought we were friends, but it feels like every day she's just trying to distance herself more instead of get closer. It makes me feel that she was only spending time with me during the club because I was never re I was reading manga, but she doesn't actually want to be friends with me. Um, well, I feel like I'm misleading a lot of missing a lot of context here. Was she in the middle of anything when you approached her? No, she was just walking with her friends. With her friends. Yuri pauses for a moment. How do I put this? Siri, so you're very fond of your friends, right? You always want to be spending time with them. Of course. I don't think there's anything more important to me. I mean, the best parts of my day are always with my friends. Besides that, I really hate being alone, so... You hate being alone? Siri nods. We're very different people. I cherish my time alone. I wouldn't trade it for anything. So I think... Well, if I was trying to have time alone and it was being threatened with an interruption, then it just would not make me very happy. Yeah, but it doesn't have to do with Natsuki. She was already with her friends, not trying to be alone or anything. No, I think it's similar. It's... Well, we're all friends in the club, but we have our own lives outside of the club as well. If you think about it, making new friends isn't some casual occurrence that happens on a daily basis. A friendship is an invitation to intertwine your lives together, but the capacity at which each person is ready to do that might be different. There are friends who just like to have fun together, and others who talk every day and share every detail of their lives with each other. I think when establishing friendship, it's important to consider the comfort level of the other person. I mean, we don't really know much about Natsuki's life outside of the club. It could be that she simply needs to make friends at her own pace rather than jump headfirst into a new commitment. But that means I really was bothering her. I just really wanted to be good friends with her, so I treated her like one. Was I actually hurting her? I don't know. I'm sorry. My insight was really only based on what I understand about my own needs. And Natsuki and I are completely different, so... Why was I so selfish? Even if all that's true, then it still means I hurt her. I think I messed up. Yuri, with you, I think I was really careful to understand your needs when I was becoming friends with you. But I wasn't careful at all with Natsuki, beca with Natsuki because she already seemed really social. I just took control of everything instead of looking for the right balance. Now I hurt her and she doesn't want to talk to me. How can I let myself do this? Um, Sayori, I think that... Well, I think there was one time you told me something about the way I saw things in my head being different from reality. It's easy to automatically jump to the worst case scenario, but I think it's more likely that Natsuki doesn't harbor any ill feelings towards you. So I think if you were to real realistically consider the situation, how it would cause someone to feel, um, I'm bad at this, I'm sorry. You're a lot better at me th than me at things like comforting and reassuring people. Suddenly, Siri gives Yuri a gentle hug. Um, you're the best, Yuri. I'm sorry for burdening you with this. You're trying so hard for me. You're such a good sweetheart. I just, it's not a burden. I enjoy listening to others, and my friends deserve happiness. Siri beams. I think I'm going to give Natsuki some space. She should do what she wants, and if she does still want to be friends, then I'll, 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 then I'll learn her needs and I'll match her boundaries. Yeah, I'm sure that's what's best. I wish she didn't feel so awful and guilty. It makes me feel desperate, like I nearly need to, need to make it up to her by trying to make her happy. But that's not what she needs. I just have to tell myself that. It hurts, but I guess it means I still need to grow. I really want to grow as a person. But to be best for my friends, then I want that. That's very mature of you, Sayori. <laughs> I'm mature. Siri hops up and down on her toes. So does that mean you're you you'll be going home after all? Siri shakes her head. I need to be here to show her I respect her space. I'll just spend the, cl spend the club by myself today. Yuri nods in understanding. You can go in first. Okay. You're blocking the door. Oh, for fuck's sake. By the way, yeah, before you're into the, club, into the club room, Siri interjects. You said you and Natsuki are completely different, but I don't really think that's true. I think you're actually really similar in a lot of ways. Yuri smiles and shakes her head. Siri, that's absurd. You're very silly sometimes. Yuri turns and enters the classroom. After a moment, Siri follows. It's going up near them, people. The club room is quiet. When Siri walks in, Natsuki glances in her direction. Siri smiles and gives Natsuki a quick wave before sitting down across the room. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. Siri decides it's best to continue the manga she was reading, so she pulls it out. However, it looks like Natsuki isn't reading today. She has a sheet of paper in front of her and is tapping a pen against her desk, staring at it. Ooh, what are we writing today? Monica speaks in a quiet voice, unwilling to disturb the peace of the club room. She kneels down at Natsuki's desk. Hey! Natsuki pulls a sheet close to her and covers it with her arms. Sorry, I didn't mean to peek. Whatever. She wants to see how everything was going. It's fine. Natsuki replies dismissively. 
She glances over at Sayori, who is focused on her manga. Monica follows Natsuki's gaze. I think she's mad at me. How come? I'm busy right now. Ask me later. Monica falls silent. Natsuki looks back, back down at her paper. She changes her hand away from the top marginal line Monica to see. It says, to Sayori. Understanding, Monica smiles. She places her hand on Natsuki's shoulder and whispers softly, I'm proud of you. Aww. Natsuki looks away but makes no motion to remove Monica's hand. Monica gives Natsuki's shoulder a quick squeeze before standing back up and pulling away. Oh, that's so cute. Bless her. Writing a little apology note for Sayori. Or something. I don't know. Just writing something for her. The end of the club meeting passes. Yuri has already departed, so as Monica after checking on Sayori and Natsuki to ensure they wouldn't stay too late. Sayori was determined to finish her manga volume before heading out, since, she, since, since the end was approaching. However, with Natsuki also staying late for, the, for an unknown reason, the silent tension hangs in the air. After finishing the volume, Sayori brings it, it brings it to the closet to put it away. She slides it back onto the shelf while Natsuki watches. Then Natsuki gets up and pulls it back out in order to return it to its proper location. Sorry, I didn't know where it's supposed to go. It's fine. The two fall, fail, fall silent again, avoiding eye contact. They both look like they're about to say something, but neither can break the silence. A moment passes. Well, I'll be on my way. See you tomorrow. Mm. Siri turns away to hide her pained expression, then walks away from the closet. If there was any proof Natsuki no longer wants to be friends, this was it. Defeated, Siri carries herself out of the club room. Shit. Once in the hallway, Siri takes a deep breath and hits her palms against her cheeks to clear her head a little. Um... Suddenly, Natsuki's stammering voice calls from behind. Natsuki? Startled, Sayori turns around to face Natsuki. Oh, okay. Not as sure about this, CG. I like the music, though. Natsuki fidgets and anxiously continues with a shaking voice. I have a lot of things to say. M me too. But you go first. Natsuki bites her lip and can't stay still. Well, first of all, she cuts herself short, struggling to continue. Trying to force the words out, she stamps her foot and hops up and down a little. I'm sorry for the thing I did at lunch, and I'm sorry for just being kind of mean lately. It's really hard for me to, like... I mean, I'm not good with things that make me uncomfortable. Especially when it comes to, like, feelings and stuff. So, face burning, Natsuki climbs up again. Instead of continuing, she simply holds up a sheet of paper for Siori to take. Oh, here we go. Oh, she's written a poem for her. Oh, okay, right, let's give this a good read. Let's go. Wait. I can't scroll. Why can't I scroll it? For fuck's sake. I'll pull the battery out. Maybe that'll do it. I scroll down a bit and then it won't let me scroll back up again. Great. I can't read the fucking poem. We'll have to look in the files in a minute. Unless I can't save. I can't save. For fuck's sake. Ugh. It's a poem. But I thought... Well, I sucked it up so that I could work things out with you. So just... Just be happy about it, right? We'll read it after this. Please? Siri smiles deeply from the bottom of her heart. I'm happier than I could express. I feel so awful, but I'm so happy that you would do this for me. I actually realized before the club meeting today that I made a mistake. I got so caught up in the chance to get close to you that I forgot to think about what you wanted. And that we probably have different ways we like to make friends. Um, about like the friendship stuff? I mean, it's okay. I understand. So you don't have to force yourself to talk about it. Your poem did a good job. So don't force yourself if you're not ready for it yet, okay? Natsuki nods. You don't have to feel like you did anything wrong. It was my fault and I'm sorry. I wasn't mad at you today or anything like that. I actually felt really guilty and wanted to give you space. I was thinking it's silly that I should approach you all the time and that I should just let you approach me when you want to. Just whatever makes you feel comfortable. I'll respect that from now on. Friendship should always start with those things. With the right balance. Natsuki nods again. One thing about that? Well, I don't want to have to approach you all the time either. I just want it to be balanced like you said. Siri nods. I understand. We'll make sure of that together then. Well, anyway, now the two of them have found common ground, Natsuki finds it easy to speak more freely again. I'm not going to be, like, sharing my poems all the time now or anything like that. Not just yet. But I guess it wouldn't hurt to do it once in a while. Only the best ones. So you better like them, because otherwise I might change my mind. I like anything you do, Natsuki. I was just saying. More importantly, I have to tell you about my new boyfriend. From the manga? Oh, right, shit. I need to guess who it is. You definitely won't be able to guess. Two walk down the hallway together. Oh my god, we have so much to talk about. Don, I should have told you to save the last two chapters so I could see your reaction to the big reveal. Aw, he wants to enjoy it with me. That's so cute. Oh, shush. <laughs> Bless. At the end of number four? That is indeed. Right. Let's read that one then. Oh, cool. Game art. Very nice.
And another Natsuki one. Oh, I like that Natsuki one. That's cool. That's very cool. Right, where's the poem? Here we go. The best place in the world. I have to move my camera for a minute. Uh, let's just move it to the side. Slowly. There we go. I love my bedroom. It's full of bright colours and soft things. The sunlight shines in and makes everything sparkle. Actually, I can make it full screen, couldn't I? Let's just, let's put my camera back where it was. Actually, it should be in the top corner. I don't know why it isn't in the top corner. Let's just hide it for a moment. Actually, what am I doing? I can put it in the bottom corner. I'm being a fucking moron. I'll move it back up in a minute. There we go. I love my bedroom. It's full of bright colours and soft things. The sunlight shines in and makes everything sparkle. It's the best place in the world. It has all my treasures, all my books, my collections, my memories. All my dreams are born in this room. It's the best place in the world. It has all my secrets, all my failures, my fe fears, my feelings. Sometimes it feels so fragile that the door will break at the slightest touch. But it's still the best place in the world. But when someone knocks, I get scared. I brace my arms against the loose hinges. Please don't break. Don't come in. I'm not ready. It's my best place in the world. The knocking won't stop. I block the door with furniture. An eye peeks through the keyhole and I panic. I'm trapped in the best place in the world. I'm not ready to share my favourite place. I need to clean my secret and make my bed to hide my nightmares. I need to touch them to put them away to see them again. I have so much to do and I'm scared, but I'm scared. I'm not ready. But it's still my favourite place. I still want to share it. However long it takes, if you wait patiently, I'll eventually open the door and I'll show you the best place in the world. Oh, that's fucking lovely. I really like that. That's a really nice poem. Bless. Really, really nice. Cool. Four down, two to go. Well, is it two? Another email. I still don't know what these mean. I still do not know what these mean. No idea. All right. Two more. So we got Yuri and Monica and then Natsuki and Yuri. So reflection part one. Let's go. You missed the Natsuki poem. Oh shit. Yeah, forgetting all the poems. I'll read that after this then. Remind me. Actually, no. Let's read it now. 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 Let's have a look. Pictures. Okay. There's another Natsuki poem uh, here. There we go. So this is to get all of Natsuki's poems. We get this. I named my pen the Expression Express. My feelings are bored with a ticket to you. No room for stammers. No lies. No extra stops. No compromise. Station screaming by. Attendant saying hi. One ticket to you. Please and thank you. Take a headphone and doze. No bumps in the rails. Just thumps in my heart. And loops in my letters. And clouds in the sky. And dreams in your ears. Hey, wake up. The train has arrived. Expression Express. Destination you. Choo choo. Fair enough. Seems very nat Natsuki. Not my favourite one of hers, but it's alright. Okay, let's go. Am I bothering you? Mm, no. Okay, just checking. It's hard to tell since you always look so into it when you're reading. It makes me scared to interrupt. Well, it's within my expectations to be interrupted when I read here. It's mainly when I'm, when I'm by myself that I don't like it. Mm, that makes sense. I guess if you're here in the first place and you're more ready to socialise, even if it may, takes a little bit of prodding. It's not so bad to be social if I let others do the work, so it can be healthy to put yourself in, so in a social environment every now and then. It's mostly difficult when I don't know anyone or there are too many people or everyone is being too silly for me to keep up with. Yuri glances to get across the room at Suri and Natsuki. Suri has her head cocked, cocked back and her mouth open, trying to catch pieces of a cookie that Natsuki is lobbing into the air, but the pieces keep bouncing off her face and hitting the floor. Maybe I should say something. No need, they just ran out of cookie. What a waste. They've really become good friends, haven't they? I'm happy. Suri seems particularly good at making that happen. But the two of them are both on the energetic side, so I suppose it works out well. Yeah, come to think of it, you and I haven't had many chances to talk one-on-one, -on -one, have we? So that may be partially my fault since I'm supposed to be the one engaging club members. Not at all. I probably formed a habit of drawing minimal attention to myself. The responsibility is equally on me, at least to display some openness to engage. But what about during times like lunch? Do you meet up with friends? I, I just read. Oh, but I like it that way. It feels nice to be car car carried off again after a morning of classes. Hmm, do you always read fantasy? Oh, not always. I suppose it's all I've read recently, but only because I'm in the middle of this series. There are still two more books after this one. I guess those are long books. Those long books suit you well, since you spend so much time reading. Well, fantasy may be my favourite, but after that, I'm more or less indiscriminate to genres. I'll read anything with depth and maturity. Oh, yeah? Even, like, romance? Well, there are a lot of books that have elements of romance in them. Oh, come on, Yuri. You know what I mean. Monica lowers her voice. It's a guilty pleasure of mine, so I won't tell anyone if you do, too. Maybe more when I was in middle school. I mean, I was really lonely and people were mean to me a lot. So I just it kind of felt like, please don't make me think about that pa the past. <laughs> Sorry, I just got super curious. You know, we should totally pick out a romance novel to read. That would be so much fun. Absolutely not. Really? Even if it was just between us? 
Try asking someone who has no shame like Natsuki. Bruh. Ouch. Sorry, I swear I didn't mean that. Well, I guess it was my fault for pressuring you. I'm like that for things in my past too, you know? Things I feel too embarrassed to re-experience. There's nothing wrong with growing out of things. It just, it happens to everyone. For instance, Natsuki's interest in manga reminds me quite a bit of how intense I used to be about my own interests. It makes me think that she'll eventually grow out of it. She'll likely grow out of it too. Hey, were you talking about me? Um, no, we were just... We were just talking about how our interests have changed over the years. When did you get into manga, Natsuki? Mm, like a couple of years ago, I guess. I was already sort of into it before that, but I wasn't really going hard until then. Oh yeah, what was it that inspired you to get more into it? I don't know. I guess, let me think. It was after I discovered a series that I really liked. Yeah, I was just like really fed up with a lot of things. I got super into this one series that I felt I really related to. I guess I had an edgy phase where I just hated everyone around me and wanted to be by myself. Hey, kind of like Yuri. Monica? <laughs> Sorry. That's completely wrong, so... It's still cool that you both really found your thing. They're almost like opposites, but it sounds like they helped you a lot through hard times. You know it. Wish there was a CG of Siri trying to catch cookie chunks in their mouth with Natsuki's throat. Oh my god, that would be great. Oh my god. Mmm. Wow, what the heck? Is that is that book even bigger than the last one you were reading? Uh, um... It's technically slightly longer, but not by very much. How high do you think I would go if you stacked up the whole series? Natsuki estimates by holding her hand high above her head, sizing up an imaginary stack. I should get one of those mangas that's like my 50 volumes long so I can say I've read more than you. Not that I have the money for that. Please, that would hardly count when your books only have a few words per page. Bruh, I was just joking. I could never actually read books like yours. It's too boring for me. Yuri shoots a glare at Natsuki. It's not boring. Chill, I said for me, not for you. I can have my own opinion. I just think it's too convoluted. Siri, are those from the floor? Mm. Oh my god. She's eating the crumbs off the fucking floor. Also, wash your hands before touching any of my books. But my hands aren't dirty. Just do it. The oils are there even if you can't see them. Fine. Siri trots out the door and Natsuki follows. Yuri, know, you look a little upset. What kind of nerve does she have to call my, my hobby boring? Well, she did correct herself. Hardly. She was so condescending. I don't mind if she thinks it's not for her. I already understand that it's not for everyone. But she knows well how much these mean to me. So how about just leaving me alone instead of needlessly telling me the things you hate about it? I'm sorry, Yuri. You may be right. This won't be the last time people have strong feelings about what they like and don't like. Especially in the literature club. So I should figure out how to mediate discussions to keep them positive and constructive. For the record, I've always been impressed by the level of creativity in your books. And also your ability to get through them so quickly. Thank you. Okay, well I think this is something that I'll have to think about and revisit. I'm sure I can help Natsuki find some common ground with you. Common ground isn't necessary. I just wish to be respected. That nah, then. Either way, I'll do my best. I'm skeptical when it comes to Natsuki. I trust you, Monica, but I'm skeptical. Okay. God, I'm gonna sneeze. Thank God, this will stop it. Cool. Okay, everyone, we have a special club meeting today. As you know, the Literature Club is a place where we get to share things that we're really passionate about, but that also means we shouldn't be mindful of how we respond to each other's feelings. I think we have a chance to turn our differences into positive energy for each other. Are you being a little dramatic about this? This is important to me. Well, sorry, I just feel like I'm being accused or something. No, I'm not accusing anyone of anything. I'm sorry if I came off that way. But our conversation yesterday made me reflect upon the power of language, and I thought it would be a good topic for Literature Club, don't you think? These side stories just make me like Yuri less. Bruh. And make me like Natsuki more. Cheers, bro. I'll drink to that. I'm sure we're going to have different, different opinions and lots, so I need to make sure I'm prepared to keep a positive atmosphere in the club. If you say so, sure. The cool thing about language is it gives us a lot of different ways to express the same idea or emotion. We have a lot of control over how we want the other person to feel when receiving our thoughts. This goes for poetry, na narratives, ca casual conversation, basically anything. For example, Siri, what's your favourite food? Um... I have them organized by category. Should I start by snacks or do you mean full meals? Should I include breakfast? Oh, jeez. Okay, how about your favorite fruit? That's easy. Cherries. Really? I always thought cherries tasted nasty. What? Cherries are delicious. That's a pretty strong reaction. I just don't understand how somebody could think cherries are nasty. How does it make you feel? I don't know. Sad? Defensive, maybe? Yeah, I got defensive. See? The reason you had such a strong reaction wasn't just because I don't like cherries. It's because you felt like your opinion was under attack. But that's weird, right? Something like taste is completely subjective. When I say something like that, I think cherries taste nasty. I'm using objective language. I'm challenging Siri's reality that cherries... <laughs> challenging your reality? That cherries are delicious with my own, which is that cherry... With my own, which is that cherries are nasty. Wait, hold on. How is that objective when you just said it was only your own opinion? It has to do with the way our brains interpret the words. 
You're talking about the reality of the cherries, not your feelings about them. Like Sayori, let's rewind for a second and pretend I didn't tell you that I think cherries are nasty. Good. So what if I instead said that I, I've tried cherries and they're not for me? It's not the kind of flavour I enjoy. Well, that's fine. As long as you don't call them nasty. Nasty is a nasty word. Okay, so cherries was kind of a weird example, but I think that gets the point across. This time around, instead of talking about the cherries, I talked about my feelings and Sayori didn't get defensive. So instead of clashing with each other, it's like we received an invitation to talk about our differences. Chat. Can I just point out that this is literally just like like a really long fucking social interaction course at this point? Like every single of sub story here is trying to teach you how to like behave properly in a certain way towards your friends. And I kind of love and find it funny. Instead of clashing with each other, it's like we received an invitation to talk about our differences. Yuri, you don't need to take notes. I'm not going to quiz you or something. I know that. I was just... Mm, sorry, I didn't mean to call you out. So you can do whatever you'd like. But does anyone have any thoughts so far? Yeah, I just feel like I shouldn't have pulled my language through a filter just to protect someone's feelings. Or I shouldn't have to. Well, you don't have to. The choice is yours and how you want to come across to other people. I'm only suggesting it as a, as a tool to help turn your difference into a positive experience rather than an argument. Right, Sayori? Whatever you say, cherry hater. Oh, come on. Sayori, I actually like cherries. I was just saying that to help demonstrate. What the heck? I've been duped. I'm sorry, Sayori. I'll make it up to you later. How about a cherry sundae? Ooh. You're welcome to dupe me any time, my beloved president. Buying your people's loyalty. How deplorable. I like you would turn down a free Sunday, Yuri. You were certainly a fan of those cupcakes I brought in the other week. That was, I mean... I was reading and not keeping track of them. This convo should be mandatory when you sign up to Twitter. Fucking A. Give that to most Twitter users on the internet. They fucking need it, bro. That's enough. We're, we're getting off topic. So now that we have the gist of it, how about we try it with something more relevant to the club? Like manga, right? Let's try to have a productive discussion about our differences in opinion. Yuri, do you want to start? Um, well, I'd rather not, no. How come? Well, because I don't see how anything productive can come from that. It's just going to start a fight. No, it'll be fine. That's why I'm here to moderate. Let's just have a calm and rational discussion. It gave me a little more credit. I'm not a child. You don't have to coddle my feelings. I always think it's more respectable to just speak your mind. Respectable? Yuri's expression changes at that word. As Monica recalls, being respected was the crux of, ma of the matter for Yuri. Well, the point of exercise isn't exactly like, it's fine. I have nothing against people, anyone personally. You're entitled to enjoy whatever it is you like. I just prefer more depth and nuance in my reading material. I look for stories that are imaginative and sophisticated beyond the surface level. Well, that's just a misunderstanding then. I thought you were going to say mangas for children or something, like I don't hear enough of that. But there's plenty of deep manga. I'm not clueless about manga. I've read my own fair share when I was younger. What, are you serious? How come you never told me? Because I'm past that point in my life and I really prefer not to revisit it. Damn. I prefer more mature things now. Excuse me? Okay, hold on. Can I jump in here? Let's try to keep things subjective. Because if you imply that manga is immature, then you aren't implying that someone is immature. For, aren't you implying that someone is immature for being into it? I... Yeah, there you go. See, Yuri? Now she gets it. Now she gets it. Maybe it's immature to judge people for having different tastes than you. Natsuki. Nobody's immature. I've read Natsuki's manga and Yuri's fantasy, and I love them both in their own way. Okay, okay. It's great that you like it, but I still find it boring. Boring isn't subjective. Okay, it bores me. That's subjective. But, I mean, that the thing about... This is ridiculous. Do you see why I didn't want to participate in this? I knew it was just going to make people upset. I'm not upset. Like I said, I don't care what other people think. But I always got the impression that you secretly looked down upon me, so I'm glad my suspicions were confirmed. That's not true at all. You're making assumptions. You can't blame me for getting defensive when nobody ever has the least bit of respect for the things that I'm into. The only thing I look down upon is when people make fun of me for just being myself and trying to mind my own business. Have you looked into a mirror? Tell me again about being res about respect after calling all my interests immature. You can't... Please stop. Please? You don't mean the things you're saying right now. Let's just be friends. I didn't mean for this to happen. Well, it did. So please don't invite yourself to try and solve other people's problems next time, okay? Shit, Yuri. Yuri's a fucking, like, like she cuts deep at the minute. Yuri's piercing words send the club room into a choke sound as she gathers her things. She leaves. I'm not really fucking surprised. Holy crap. Never heard her sound like that before. She must be so pissed. Well, you weren't very nice either, so I was just saying, how did this happen? It's my fault. Yuri wasn't wrong. I shouldn't have tried to moderate a conflict when I know how bad I am at dealing with conflicts. It's a really stupid thing for me to do. It's nobody's fault, and it wasn't stupid. Everybody in the club is a nice person. Nobody would have expected this. But I guess we're sensitive about the things we really love. Honestly, she kind of brought it upon herself. 
Like I said, I don't care if you're not into manga, but if you actually look down on other people for it, that's the kind of point I was trying to make in the first place. It's not about sugarcoating things, it's about recognizing and understanding our differences. Okay, but here's the thing about that. Yuri actually looks down on me. It has nothing to do with her word choice or anything like that. So I see what you were trying to do, but I really think the problem here is her and not just the way we talk to each other, right? Not really sure about that either, Natsuki. I mean, Yuri isn't like that. She's a lot sweeter than you're giving her credit for. I'm sure she'll be reflecting upon this. I actually think everyone should. It'll be fine. I'll, f I'll figure something out. Well, I'm just like saying that instinctively. I'm just setting myself up to cause more problems. This wasn't your fault, Monica. You don't have to beat yourself up over it. If you ask me, it's good that the truth finally came out. Because I can just move on now. But it's fine, I promise. Let's just get our mind off this, okay? In fact, it's a good opportunity to read some manga without having to worry about feeding Yuri's superiority complex. Don't be mean. I'll talk or read manga or whatever you want, but don't be mean to my friends, okay? Sorry. I'm just bitter. Everything will be okay. I mean, I didn't have the answers, but at least I at least know we're all good people and I don't want to hurt each other. This will be a learning experience. Monica says that, but in her easiness is given away by how much she has to force the reassuring tone in her voice. This is bound to happen eventually. Natsuki and Yuri have always engaged with each other at le the least out of anyone, and this is the reason. As Siori and Natsuki proceed to distract themselves with manga, Monica sighs to herself, unable to shake her worried thoughts. Will the club really have to just come to terms with the fact that some members will be incompatible with each other? Monica desperately doesn't want to admit that, and she knows Siri doesn't either. But for once, a solution doesn't seem to be in sight. End of part one. Yeah, I, I can see that coming a mile off. Damn. Damn, damn. More new music. Jeez, I've got a fucking playlist going here. Holy shit. Look at this. So many. Bloody hell. Alright. Reflection part two. We're chewing through these, chat. Holy shit. A new day arrives. Siri arrives at the club room earlier than usual. That is, not late. As she enters, it appears to be empty still. So she sits down at a desk and pulls out a sheet of paper printed to jot down her thoughts. Siri has made a habit out of scribbling her thoughts and feelings onto paper whenever possible as it tends to serve as her best inspiration for poetry. My heart feels vacant because a ship sailed away. Yo. <laughs> God, what is that noise? Yeah! Natsuki? Natsuki pokes her head out from behind the closet door. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. But it wouldn't have been more but it would have been a lot more awkward if I didn't say anything. I doubt you want me listening in your poetry thing. Y yeah. Thanks for realizing that. Should I let you finish that up then? Oh no, I wasn't I mean, I should do it whenever it's convenient. You're not interrupting. Where's Monica, by the way? Oh, she's out in the hallway. Huh? Why? Well, just in case she runs into Yuri. Sometimes Yuri is too nervous to go into the club room by herself, so. Oh. Uh, geez, does Yuri really let things bother her for that long? She can't control her feelings. For some people, it's really hard to cope when you get like, a bad thought in your head. Maybe you can distract yourself for a little while, but as soon as it's just you and your thoughts again, it comes back. Ugh. Hmm? I just want us to have a normal club meeting. It's a lot easier to pretend like it never happened if we all just ignore it and move on. I don't want to be bothered by this. It's so stupid. Her opinion of me doesn't matter anyway. Besides, it makes me feel really guilty, and I hate that too. It's okay to have feelings. It doesn't make you weak. Let's figure this out together. Fine. Only because you're good at this stuff. Let's try to cope with the happy scene. Maybe that will help us understand where your bad feelings are coming from. Well, I was happy the way things were before we had to have that conversation yesterday. What part of the conversation made you upset? Was it Yuri being mean about the manga? Maybe. I doubt it, though. Because my friends and other people make fun of manga all the time. I just brush it off and ignore them. But something about it really got to me this time, and I hate that I'm letting that happen. Is it because it came from Yuri? No, why would that matter? I mean, well, well, maybe. I just hate that she thinks she's so much better than me just because she likes to pretend to be all sophisticated. Yeah, that's what it is. At least other people decide that they don't like me or manga or whatever. But Yuri actually she's too good to even give it a chance. I'm sorry. Everyone deserves a chance. Yeah, exactly. Would you give Yuri's books a chance? <laughs> After this? Obviously not. What about before this? Well, I would until I got bored, which wouldn't take very long. But if you actually keep an open mind, then it's not hard to realise that a story can be deep and meaningful without needlessly complicated. I see. But you know, I like Yuri's books. Yeah, but you like manga more, right? Siri shakes her head. I like them both. I like them in different ways, but I like them both. I mean, the manga is really honest and fun and easy to just let go with. And the fantasy has a lot of inter to interpret and uncover, so it's really rewarding to have some good quiet time together with it. But the most important thing is that both of, well, both the manga and the fantasy are true to themselves. So I love them both. And I think there's room for both of them to be in the same club together. I just feel like maybe, maybe they have more in common than you would think. How do you get along with everyone so well? 
I always get into fights with people. Like, first it was with Monica, then when I was new to the club, then it was you, and now it's Yori. And I'm always like, oh, that person's being such a jerk, and if they just realized that, then we could just at least get along. The thing that's worrying me, that's making me confused here, is the next substory is Natsuki versus Yori. But this, this substory feels like it's more Natsuki and Yori than Monica and Yori. It's weird. But nobody else has this problem. I just keep running away from the, the reality that everyone is just a jerk to me because nobody likes me. And I don't know why, and I don't know what to do about it. I don't know what's wrong with me. I hate it. Natsuki... So he puts a comforting hand on Natsuki's shoulder. You're a wonderful person. You deserve to be loved as much as anyone, everyone else. Everyone has different ways they like to communicate, you know? And sometimes that makes it harder for us to understand each other. I think that sometimes... Sometimes we get lucky and we make friends who are really good at the same kinds of communication, and it feels like you magically connect with them. But other times, even if both people are really nice, it's easy for them to misunderstand each other or to get the communication wrong. It's something that Yuri struggles a lot with too. It can be really hard, and it takes a lot of, like, reflection and self-awareness. And vulnerability. I'm bad at that one. Vulnerability. I always have to be the strongest. What do you mean? Tell me about that part of you. Well, it sounds stupid, but I'm really used to people being mean to me. Like my friends, and I guess my dad, like when I don't get good grades or even stupid things, like if my room isn't clean. So what am I going to do? Cry about it? If I let myself get upset, and it's just letting them win. And I'm better than that. I'm better than all of them. So things always have to be everyone else's fault. It feels like if something else, something goes wrong and there's even a tiny bit thing, a tiny hint that it might be my fault, then I just get really angry and I find ways to blame everything else instead. Do you see yourself as better than Yori? If I said that, then I would just sound really full of myself. No. Our thoughts and our feelings are two different things. Even if we don't like our feelings, we have to understand them if we want to learn more about ourselves. That's a, past, a part of vulnerability, you know? Accepting that we have feelings that we don't like. I... I hate that. My feelings make me a bad person. Because my feelings just want me to tell me that I'm so much better than her. That she's a judgmental know-it-all who's stuck in her energy phase and that I'm just way above that garbage. But I'm terrible for feeling that way. You're not terrible. You're not your feelings. But you are not your feelings. Say that to yourself out loud. Fine. I am not my feelings. The way that I like to picture it is that those feelings are like your roommate. You live in the same house and you got to see each other every day. And even if you ignore them most of the time, you're going to run into each other every now and again. It's going to make you feel like poop. So the other option is to get to know each other. You can communicate and learn from each other and maybe even help each other out. out or help. <laughs> and maybe even help each other out for the... Why can I not read this fucking sentence? And maybe even help each other change for the better. There we go. Jeez. Fucking hell, chat. Fucking hell. Does that help you understand? How do you know so much about this stuff? I just have a roommate that can be really hard to get along with. Called depression. Oh, God. Fucking hell. Depression? But you're like the happiest person I know. I am not my feelings. Well said. I want to be a good person like you. Aw, you little sweetheart. We're all good people. You and Yuri and Monica. And I think Yuri will eventually learn that about you. Natsuki remains silent, feeling a little overwhelmed. Despite Siori's kind reassurance, a complicated mixture of pain and sadness stems, seems to fill her, as though flowing from a wound inside her. Was it a result of her vulnerability? No. It wasn't as though she was inflicted a wound after becoming vulnerable. It was as though she began to rediscover an old wound, one that cannot simply be bandaged and left alone any longer. Damn. Yuri, what are you doing all the way over here? I was looking for you. I... Please don't yell at me. Oh, I'm not going to yell at you. She wants to say that I'm sorry about what happened yesterday. It was unfair for me to put everyone on the spot like that. Next time I won't just try and jump in and solve everyone's problems. I guess it's a bad habit of mine. You're not mad at me? I thought you were the one mad at me. I was so awful yesterday. Yuri curls up recalling the details of the argument. I can't even have a normal conversation without saying something wrong and making everyone upset. Hold on, that's not what happened at all. Let's talk about this, okay? Yuri pauses for a second and then manages a nod. Monica takes a seat next to her on the staircase. I'm having a lot of negative thought patterns and I can't get away from them. What kinds of negative thought patterns? Like everyone hates me, especially Natsuki. That's terrible. I don't think Natsuki hates you. How would you know? Well, because Monica thinks back to the time that she fa herself found herself in an altercation with Natsuki. And now a display of maturity from Monica was enough for Natsuki to reevaluate her own feelings as well. I just, I think Natsuki is naturally defensive. I think she acts mean when she feels the need to protect herself. But you know, she's really not a bad person. In fact, I think she can be really thoughtful and considerate. She just, well, I guess the way it works is that she wants to receive some degree of kindness first before she feels comfortable returning it. Oh. But that means the burden is on me. And I don't know how to say things that make people like me. 
Every time I open my mouth, I just... Yuri shakes her head in herself and tugs on her hair. It's okay, Yuri. You don't need to beat yourself up. I think anyone would like you if they had the chance to get to know you. Well, unfortunately, the opposite is true. That's why I'm not talkative anymore in the first place. Because everyone used to think I was weird and talk about me behind my back. That's just what happens when I draw attention to myself. Natsuki even said she found it more respectable when people speak their mind. So I did, and then she hated me anyway. That was enough to confirm my fears. But Siri and I like you. And we've gotten to know a lot you a lot by now, right? Mmm. Yuri doesn't seem to have a response. What do you think of Natsuki? I don't think about her. That's not what I meant, really. I just... I was just wondering if you had an opinion of her. I do. What is it? Natsuki seems to bring out the worst in me. And I feel really ashamed of it. I like to think of myself as a fairly sophisticated person. So for someone to just treat me like I'm inferior despite my tastes, that's just the worst kind of insult coming from someone like her. It makes me think I'm bad, bad things about her. But everyone else seems to like her, so the only explanation is that it's me who's doing something wrong again. And my feelings about her are wrong. And I'm wrong to get upset over something so childish and inconsequential. No, Yori. Feelings are never wrong. Well, they're not right. That's the thing. Feelings are never right or wrong, you know? They're just they're just a state of being that we don't always have control over. But that doesn't mean they have to be they have to control us. I feel like that's something I learned around when I was first started the club. We can hate ourselves for feeling a certain way about things, or we can, you know, just acknowledge that they exist and try and understand them better. I can never be mad at you for just feeling a certain way. It's about how you handle them. And I think working through feelings is a great opportunity for teamwork. Yuri wears a dejected expression. You make it sound so easy. You're so mature and so good with people. I feel like such a child in comparison. Oh, Yuri, I'm far from perfect. But these are learned skills. They didn't come naturally to me either. It's really hard to, like, reflect on yourself and separate your feelings from your thoughts. I just want to be a good person. Well, I think it takes a good person to get this far. That's not good enough. I want to be able to communicate it to her. Communicate what? How I feel. How it makes me feel frustrated and upset when she's so negative and dismissive of the things that mean so much to me. And how it... How it reminds me of me. Because I know what it's like to feel misunderstood and angry at everyone. I know that telling yourself you're better than everyone else is just a defense mechanism. We're just people. We're fragile and unstable. But I'm just, I'm just tired of that getting in the way. I can't stand it when the piece is disturbed like this. Yeah, you can't focus on reading when the piece is disturbed, right? Because I... Because... The Literature Club should be happy for everyone. Monica looks at Yuri in adoration. I feel like Suri must be rubbing off on me because I really want to hug you right now. Mm. Sorry, I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. No, I mean... If you wanted to, then I wouldn't really mind, so... Monica pulls Yuri into a short embrace. You're so gentle, and I love when you communicate your feelings. I feel lucky to get to see that side of you, and I'm sure Natsuki will too. I'm going to write her a letter. Oh, a letter? What a great idea. Just because I'm not good at talking, especially under pressure. I always let my feelings get the best of me, and I forget to say all the important things, and let things say things I don't mean. Well, I think a letter would be wonderful. Such a nice way to communicate. Yuri's face hardens with determination. People don't naturally gravitate towards me like they do for you and Siori. My personality just isn't suited for that. And I wouldn't want it to be. But something I've learned is that from friendships don't always just magically appear out of thin air. For instance, I would never have seen myself making friends with someone like Sayori. We're opposite in a lot of ways. But I'm friends with her because she put so much effort into understanding me so that we can get along. And I think it was the same with you. You both gave me a lot of time and patience. And I wonder if she feels the same way. Natsuki? Yuri nods. I always thought if I wanted to make more friends, I had to be someone that I'm not. That there's one type of person or a magical formula to have that I have to follow in order to make someone like me. And that's just me, like me to think that I'm always so occupied with myself that I fail to understand other people. Uh, that's just like me to think that. Yuri shakes her head. Friendship happens when you think about the other person. When you offer time and effort to understand them and respect them and trust that, that they will also want to be a good person. That's what I learned through my observations in the literature club. Observations? Monica is caught by surprise. Yuri's always kept to herself so much that it's unusual to hear her suddenly talking about the club like this. But Yuri gently smiles to herself. You always let me listen to your thoughts about people. Suri too. It makes me happy because I learned a lot of things. That's so sweet. I had no idea it meant that much to you. Monica never thought much of it, but in the past weeks, Yuri has seemed to be especially attentive when it came to the problems and concerns of others. Always wanting to listen and learn more about her friends in the club. It's true. Suri and Monica are naturally more com comfortable with each other. And, more, and can more easily work through situations of conflict. But that doesn't make them better people. Everyone has strengths and weaknesses and the capacity to improve. And the first step towards improving oneself is reflection and self-awareness. 
something that Yuri never gave herself enough credit for, but that Monica can recognise as an incredible trait. And with that, her confidence in the club is restored. Aww. A very shy girl with long, pretty hair is wandering the bustling lunchtime hallways, her fists pressured, pressed into a collarbone. When she finds the literal president's classroom, she stands at the door, glancing all around her before peering inside. Monica is sitting and chatting with a group of unknown friends. Yeah, as expected, this was a bad idea after all. Suddenly, Monica glances towards the door, making the Oh, I just fucking skipped that very quickly. Glances towards the door, making the girl panic and duck out of sight. Before she can regain composure and decides to, for sure to leave, the classroom door gently opens. Yuri, what a surprise to see you during lunch. Yuri squeaks a response. Please help me. What, is everything okay? Yuri shakes her head. I don't know how to write letters. Oh, thank goodness, I thought here was some kind of emergency. Monica briefly glances over her shoulder at her other friends. Do you want some help? We can go find an empty classroom or something. Is that okay? I feel bad taking you away from your friends. It's totally fine, I promise. We weren't really doing anything. One sec. Monica trots back into her classroom, says something like, I gotta go to her friends, then grabs a pen off her desk before returning to Yuri. Okay, let's find somewhere quiet. Yuri nods and follows Monica as the two of them set off. How are you today? Huh? Me? Well, yes. Oh gosh, sorry, I was just caught off guard. I'm doing well today. Just tired. I never seem to get enough sleep during the week. How come? I don't know, I think I'm just easily distracted. I get really sucked into things and start neglecting the time. Me too, I do that too. <laughs> hey, this classroom is empty, let's go in here. After peering inside, Monica opens the classroom door and the two of them enter. Yuri's moment of realisation ends. She watches as Monica puts, pulls up two chairs to the same desk, then obeys as Monica beckons her to take a seat. She stares down at the empty desk. You nervous? I don't want to do this. We don't... We don't have to. We can come up with something else. Yuri shakes her head. It's my chance to do something good. I need to take initiative. Gosh, I have to be really determined. I know how hard it is to step out of your comfort zone. I'll be sure to encourage you. Yuri pushes through her anxiety and grabs a handful of lined paper from her notebook. Then she picks up her pen. Oh, now that's a cool one. I like that one a lot. Hey, you're left-handed. That's neat. Uh, yeah. Now don't have to worry about bumping your arm. Monica playfully rubs her shoulder against Yuri's. Sorry, I'm just being silly, I guess. Anyway, how about we start by listing the different things you want to say to her? Hmm. Yuri thinks. I feel embarrassed all of a sudden. Oh, it's okay. How about some of the things you said to me yesterday? But, never mind. I guess I'll try. Yuri thinks for a moment her tension... Her, uh, wait, Yuri thinks for a moment longer her tension evident. Then she writes the word, reflection. This is about my reflection on our behaviour. The key question is why we act like this towards each other, but have been able to separately be friends with Lloyd, Siri and Monica. That's me. Yes, it is. So, Yuri thinks. I've been able to befriend the two of you because you've taken the time to understand my needs and respect my interests. The same goes for Natsuki too. We start off as pretty hostile to each other because I was so worried about not getting what I wanted, but she just wants to be respected more than anything else. Once I stopped making it all about me, she was, she was able to do the same. I want to do that too. So what kind of things do you do want to do for her? I want... I want to do the same things for her that I like to receive. I like it when people respond positively to the things I talk about and not just brush me off. I like it when my feelings are taken seriously. And I like when you and Siri trust that I want to be a good person, even when I'm not doing a good job at it. Let's write those things down. Okay. Yuri writes some things down. <laughs> Great. I think the most important thing to remember here is that Natsuki is feeling vulnerable, so we should make sure that the letter puts her first. It's hard when you're feeling hurt, but it never, hurt, it never helps to just tell someone all the things that they're doing wrong. I think first you have to make sure that they know they're ready to respect them and listen to them and admit the things that you feel you could do better. Then finally, you ask what you would like to in return. How does that sound for the structure? It could be three paragraphs, one for each of those points. I like that. My thoughts were so disorganized, I had no idea how to come up with any, of this, any kind of structure. You're so amazing at these things. Oh, stop. You've done so much more than I have, you know? you spent so much time reflecting and being open-minded, and that's the hardest thing for anyone to do. All I'm doing is helping you put it in a, on a piece of paper. So I think you're really the amazing one. Hmm. Monica gives Yuri's hand a quick squeeze. But as she lets go, she's caught by surprise when Yuri curls her fingers to hook Monica's hand in place. For a while, they sit like that in silence, save for the occasional scratching of Yuri's pen against the paper. Yesterday, you told me something that I'm thinking about a lot. What was that? Think about how feelings aren't right or wrong and that they're just a state of being that we need to come to terms with. Let me think about how a person's behavior isn't always how, how they decide to be. It also made up of their past experiences and their insecurities. I think that helps me see other people as act actual people rather than as insignificant side characters who are out to get me somehow. Is that how you feel about, Nat about Natsuki? Yuri nods. 
But in reality, everyone is always trying their best and everyone wants to be happy. Monica peers over at Yuri's paper, but to her surprise, Yuri pulls it in closer, partially covering it with her arm. <laughs> I have to be able to read it to help out, you know. It's okay. My thoughts are a lot more organized now being able to talk to you about it. Now I'm actually putting it onto paper, I realize I'd actually prefer others not to read it. Yuri laughed softly to herself, a rare expression. I'm kind of glad to hear that, actually. I somehow keep finding ways to butt into this whole thing, and I've done enough damage. But it's also been so wonderful talking about this. I mean, I always thought you were really smart, but... Yuri smiles. I will always be terrible at this things, these things. People are just so incomprehensible to me. I'll never get the hang of being one. <laughs> but listening to you make, has made written with as much as really helped me make sense of some things. So just don't call it damage, please. Monica gives Yuri a gentle smile. I can't believe I came to this club looking for fantasy geeks and all I got was real friends who value me. Is that a joke? Of course it is. <laughs> I still can't tell with you. Sorry. No, I love it. Please never change. As you wish. Yuri glances at the clock. We're almost out of time. Will you be able to finish? Before the end of the day, probably. But I don't want to come to the club the same day that Natsuki reads it. I'm too shy. I can give it to her instead if you'd like. Yuri nods. As long as you promise not to read it. Of course, I promise. Thank you. Yuri exhales and the two stand up. I'll message you when it's ready. Monica nods. Good luck. I'm here if you need me. Yuri returns a nod and the two depart. Aww. Oh shit, really? Oh, so it's like the final story, like a two-parter? That makes more... like Well, technically a four-parter. That makes more sense, because I was getting the vibe that, like, that one... It did have a bit more Monica and Yuri content towards the end, but it did feel more to me like it was aimed at towards, like, a Natsuki and Yuri, like, learning thing, you know? So that doesn't surprise me at all. And we've got a new, si uh, new piece of art. Finish the side story reflection, too. Cool. So we we've now got all of the wallpapers. Very nice. We've now got all of the poems. We've got nearly all of the CGs. And the replay reflection. Now it's time for definitely the last side story, I promise. Shut up. We've got all the secrets and we've got all of the backgrounds, all of the sketches, and all but one of the promo. We're almost at 100% completion, folks. We're almost there. Time to begin the final main side story self love. It's only been one day since Yuri's letter was delivered to Natsuki with Monica's help. Because Yuri chose not to attend the club meeting that day, she and Natsuki haven't faced each other since. Although it's only lunchtime, Yuri finds herself anxiously counting the hours until she will need to face the outcome of her efforts, whether good or bad. And because the passing by of students was making her feel even more anxious, Yuri picked out the most secluded spot she could find to spend her lunch. Because this staircase is under maintenance, no student would have any reason for coming here. It's such a relaxing feeling to have a moment of solitude in the middle of a frantic school day. Oh god. What are you doing here? Um, I just... Yuri grips her book with enough force to wrinkle her pages beneath the pressure of her thumbs. But what are you doing here? I just came to get a drink from the vending machine. The other one is out of the, is out of the drink I like. Yuri notices Natsuki fidgeting with a few coins between her fingers. She nods, avoiding eye contact. Natsuki, also looking away, shuffles over to the vending machine. It's so quiet that every one of her movements seems to reverberate through the entire stairwell. After far too long, she finally receives her beverage, which she then fidgets with in place of the coins. It's some kind of iced tea. But instead of leaving right away, Natsuki just stands in place. She glances all around her. It's like way too quiet back here. It's creepy. I mean, that's not what I meant really. I mean, it's totally cool. It's your thing or whatever. Like, I can see how it suits you. Oh my god, bless you, Natsuki. Fucking adorable. Oh my god, look at her. Not because I think you're creepy or something. I didn't mean it like that either. You know, I'm just going to stop talking. That seems like a good idea. It's okay. Everything is okay. Yuri finds herself attempting some words of comfort after hearing Natsuki stammer herself into dejection. Seemingly in response, Natsuki approaches the base of the staircase and hesitantly sits herself down next near Yuri. Well, I can leave if you want. Yuri shakes her head. Natsuki twists the cap off her drink and takes a sip. Despite receiving Yuri's general permission, Natsuki doesn't say anything, any, anything more. Yuri continues to read, or at least pretends to. And the two just sit there for a long time. The tension seems to fade a little bit as time passes, but even without any words, it seems to mean at least something, though it's not clear what that might be. Lunch ends more quickly than expected. Natsuki is the first to stand up with their empty drink, drink bottle. Are you coming today? To the club. Yuri nods. I'm sorry for being so awkward. I'm really bad at talking about this stuff. I just can't for some reason. I don't know why. But I want to eventually. There's no rush. I promise. Thanks. Okay. It's the next day. Natsuki appears from around the corner and steps up to the vending machine, glancing at Yuri as she does so. 
Today she seems to be holding some kind of book as well. Oh, you're here again. Well, I just came here to read this because there aren't any people around here. Oh, I thought you didn't like how quiet it was. Well, I don't, but there's no people here. I see. Natsuki sits down. The mood feels much different today than it did yesterday. After yesterday's lunch and the club meeting that followed, Natsuki and Yuri are beginning to feel more relaxed around each other again. Good shit. Although Yuri's letter is still lingering in the back of Natsuki's mind, she continues to detour around it. But it's okay that I'm here? Yeah, I don't care. I mostly just don't feel like dealing with the crap I get from my friends about it. Especially since, like, they all just assumed I stopped reading manga after I joined the literature club. Not that I'm trying to hide it from them, exactly. But I just don't want it to come up again now after I've waited so long for this new volume to come out. Literally months at this point. You don't have other friends who are into manga? Not unless online friends count. And Siori, but that's different because she's not exactly into it. She just likes it, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Honestly, you're lucky the books you're into at least look like books, so you don't have to feel like everyone is constantly judging you by what you're reading. That would be so awful. Especially since I already hate attention so much. But it's a good thing I have thick skin, I guess. By the way, I would totally recommend finding some friends online if you haven't already. If you're like me and have no one to share your hobbies with. Oh, I have online friends. Since middle school, actually. I was especially desperate back then. It's somewhat embarrassing to reminisce about these days. Sometimes I feel like me from a few years ago would have been benefited from a good smack across the face. Bruh. Whatever, we were all just stupid kids back then anyway. Some of the fanfics, fan, the fanfics I wrote, thank god I used a pseudonym. But I used it, I like, I liked it at the time, I got a lot of fulfillment out of it. And plus, I can look back and say with confidence that I've become a better person since then. So I don't think I would change anything. I wonder if a few years from now we'll think the same thing about our current selves. <laughs> probably. That doesn't make you uncomfortable? No, of course not. I don't care what other people think of me. Especially someone who doesn't even exist yet. Hmm. Alright, here. Natsuki raises her hand to her face and forcefully slaps her own cheek. That's me for the future coming to terms with me right now. Also, ow, I don't mean to do it that hard. Idiot. Yuri doesn't seem to react. But then to Natsuki's surprise, Yuri shyly looks the other way before lifting her arm and doing the same thing to herself, loudly smacking her cheek. She turns red and stares into her lap and is unable to hide a smile as though it was a really funny joke. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. I didn't know you had it in you. I don't. I don't. I don't even know why I did that. Maybe I thought it would be funny. Sorry, I keep distracting you. You said you were looking forward to reading, but I keep going on about all this nonsense. I'll let you get to your reading. Oh, right. Yeah, I guess I'll do that then. The conversation ends quickly, and Natsuki opens her book. The two read silently for the remainder of the lunch hour, but the whole time Yuri feels distracted by a twist of regret over having so abruptly forced the end of their conversation. Yeah, I was going to say. They still made some good progress, though, and that's what's important. You know, that's what's important. You're back. Yeah, I'm here to lay low again. Another day has passed. During lunchtime, Natsuki finds herself having wandered to the stairwell once more. Hey, did you buy that? Natsuki quickly notes a bottle of iced tea on the staircase where she normally sits. Yuri nods, avoiding eye contact. What, like for me? You didn't know I was coming here today. What if I didn't show up? Well, just, I mean, I would have drank it myself, I guess. It was a stupid thing to do. No, it wasn't stupid. I just thought... Never mind. What I meant to say is thank you. And then it's a really nice gesture. It's, it's okay if you don't feel that way. No, I do. It was either things I didn't, that I didn't mean. I swear, please believe me. Hmm. Yuri pauses and then nods. Talking is hard. I get it wrong a lot too. So I believe you. Natsuki excels in relief. She then sits down next to Yuri and takes the drink. Knowing Yuri, she was probably overthinking it so much that Natsuki's tepid response filled her with self-doubt. I'll do something nice for you next time. Please, don't feel obligated. No, I want to. I want to do nice things too. Okay. Thank you. You can thank me after I figure out how to do something nice. I'll do it then too. Natsuki sighs. Hmm? Nothing. Just reminds me how I haven't been getting along with my friends lately. Is that why you've been coming here? Well, no, not exactly. I haven't been avoiding them on purpose or anything. There are just other things I'd rather be doing during lunch lately. I like being around them when they're all just having fun, but they also just can't take anything seriously. So when I'm, I don't know, feeling serious and their attitudes just really get on my nerves. It's only gotten worse ever since I joined the literature club. How come? I don't know. I feel like she used to be really good with just putting up with it because it would be so stupid to cause drama over a joke I didn't like or something. But I just have a hard time doing that lately. But it's my fault for being overly sensitive. If I have a problem, I'm not going to demand for everyone around me to change. But, yeah, I know. I'm not going to say I really don't agree with that kind of thing. Uh, David, M Midnight isn't... Uh, Midnight, David isn't being sus in the chat. He's saying that because I wrote fan fictions that I have on Wattpad under an account. He's saying that we just share it in common. He's not He's not being weird, Midnight. You can chill. It's all good. 
They're not in any position, so it's easy for them to say that you should just communicate your feelings or whatever. So, like, my friend group does that kind of thing. I should be making an embarrassment to myself. Sorry, none of this has anything to do with you. I don't know why I'm talking about it. It's okay. I like listening. What, listening to other people's problems? Yes. <laughs> that's weird. Sorry. I just like learning about people. Do you think it's weird? No, that's not weird. I probably just misunderstood, so... I don't know. Does that mean I should keep going? If you'd like. Okay. Well, I don't know what to talk about now. What are some things you like to do you tell, like about your friends? A lot of things. I mean, they're really fun to hang around with, like after school and on the weekends. And they really like my baking. And it's fun to complain about school together. They make me laugh a lot. And we have a lot of good memories and inside jokes. Oh. I'm bad at a lot of those things. So? Are those all things that are important to you? Well, kind of. But they're not things I need to get out of everybody. Everyone in the club is really different from that, but I'm still friends with them too. Well, Siri really likes your baking. Yeah, we know that. And she makes you laugh. And she complains a lot. That doesn't mean she's anything like my other friends. Well, unlike them, she's a nice person who cares about your feelings. Excuse me? How about you don't talk that way about my friends that you don't know anything about? Natsuki stands up. No, wait. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. I didn't want to say something bad. Please don't leave. Natsuki sighs and shakes her head. It's fine. As long as you understand that you can't just judge people like that. I'm sorry. Natsuki sits back down. You can't just compare friends like that and, like, measure who's better than who. Everyone's different. I'm sorry. I just... I just don't like people who want to hurt you. A moment of silence stretches between them. They don't want to hurt me. We just like to tease each other about stupid things. It's fun. I don't like that. Well, that's why I'm friends with them and you're not. You like it? Oh, I think I think I skipped something then. Oh, dots. Just don't worry so much about me. It's not worth it. I'm sorry. I wish I knew how to help with social conflicts. Like how Monica can. She's good at these things. Not really. Also, I don't always help. Sometimes it's just stuff I have to deal with myself. That's what Monica and Siri never seem to understand. Sometimes all you do is look at them wrong and they're like, Oh, what's wrong? Is everything okay? I just want to mind my own business sometimes and decide myself if I want to talk about things. The only one who understands that is you. So you really shouldn't be so hard on yourself. You're not as bad as you think. And you don't need to reassure me or anything. I mean that. Plus, it makes me sense that someone who doesn't talk a lot would make a good listener. <laughs> Thank you. You're all so nice. It's really hard for me. It doesn't come up naturally at all. It's so weird because I always thought of myself as someone who can just say whatever's on my mind. But I feel like that only works when I'm annoyed or upset or I want to say something mean. Why am I like that? You don't have to answer that. I'm just talking to myself. Yuri nods and remains silent. Natsuki notices her fidgeting with the pages of her book. How come you like reading so much? Oh, um, well, a lot of reasons. But I just get sucked into it so easily. It's so immersive, like I want to be a part of it. I think there are a lot of things that people in re about people in real life that make me feel uncomfortable and frustrated. Especially when it comes to following social conventions and group interactions. I just don't really understand it, and I have no real desire to participate. But it's different with books. You know, it feels like I always want to be around the characters. I feel such a strong emotional connection with them that I've always never felt with real people. So in that way, it can sometimes feel more real than real life. Really? It's that hard to be around people? Like, all the time? Fairly often, especially in group settings. When people are making all kinds of conversations, saying jokes and all of that, I don't know what to do and I just disengage. Oh. It doesn't get lonely? I don't think so. I can still enjoy spending time with people one-on-one, -on -one, and I have online friends too, of course. Do you ever... Do you ever wish you could be friends with the characters in your books? All the time. Sometimes so badly that it makes my heart ache. Yeah, me too. Really? Mm-hmm. A lot. Like, more than anything. After Natsuki mutters, that silence fills the stairwell once more. But it's a mutual silence. One full of understanding. Oh. Oh, shit. Well, that's self-love part one done. Now for the final part of sub-story six. Here we go. Quick drink. Hey. Oh, hello. I almost thought you weren't coming today. Yeah, well, lunch is already more than halfway over. Natsuki had typically been meeting with Yuri in the stairwell much earlier since it had been a good way of dodging her friends when she didn't feel like seeing them. Today she's holding a large plastic container in both hands. I ran into my friends, so I hung out with them for a while. Is that so? Yeah. I was in a good mood today, so I figured I should and I hadn't seen them in a while, which I had to come up with an excuse for, but I expected that. Plus, I have way more of these than I know what to do with, so I figured I would share with them too. As she sits down, Natsuki opens the lid of her container. You made cupcakes. You know it. 
It's been a while at this, at this point, so I figured it was about time again. You can take one if you want. Yuri takes a cupcake and carefully twirls it between her fingers. It's brown with dark green frosting immaculately shaped into a floral pattern and topped with some kind of glittery powder. How pretty. Shit. I just ate, so I may not be able to finish it. Are they for the club? Yeah, I guess so. I didn't really think about it. I just made them. Uh, I just thought because green is Monica's favourite colour, right? Well, yeah, but that's not really... Yuri takes a small bite. This is green tea flavoured. I love green tea. Oh, do you? It's just a random idea I want to try, so... <laughs> Don't laugh at me. I'm not. I just felt happy. Oh, sorry. Usually when... Never mind. What I mean is that I'm glad. Sorry for saying dumb things again. I just wanted to do something nice. And this is something I happen to be good at. And I do know that we, you like them from past experience. Mmm. Yuri turns red, recalling the time she treated herself rather generously to Natsuki's cupcakes. Ironically, her mouth is too full of cupcake for her to stammer an excuse, so she just settles for a disapproving look. How did you get into baking? Oh, well, I don't know. It just kind of always appealed to me. Well, a few years ago, I read this one manga with a lot of baking, so I got like, super into it for a while. It's probably making stuff almost every day. But it's something that I always knew I liked anyway. It's like, baking is like art. But when you get good at it, it gets more delicious too. I'm struggling to imagine myself putting my heart into something so artistic, knowing it would just be eaten afterwards. Yeah, maybe you're too practical for that. I think I prefer to be on the receiving end. That's my other favourite part about it. It's something I can do that makes a lot of people happy. Like, unconditionally. Everyone is always so thankful, and that moment you get to be like the bringer of joy. I don't know, which makes me feel... valued? Yeah, I guess that. So you're able to make up with your friends today? Hmm? There wasn't really anything to make up with them about. We weren't fighting or anything. You weren't? Maybe I misunderstood. Then he turns into a fight if I lose my cool, and that's just unnecessary drama. Then he makes things worse. So they're not going to stop? I mean, it only happens sometimes anyway. It's just the way they are. I'm the only one who ever has a problem with it. It's not worth it. Especially since I have somewhere to go now when I don't feel like hanging out with them. Oh, I see. Cupcake's empty floor wrapper audibly crinkles as Yuri clenches a fist. I'm glad the situation is resolved, and that you don't have to avoid them anymore. Yeah, me too. And I don't have to bother you during your alone time anymore. I'm sure you have a lot of reading to catch up on. Oh no, this is nice. Don't ruin that. Yeah. I know that the cupcakes are basically nothing compared to all the stuff you've done for me, but it's the best I can do, so you can have the rest of them. Natsuki grabs the box and slides it over to Yuri's feet. Yuri stares at the box, then she shakes her head and slides them back. You should save them for your other friends, but I made them for you. Natsuki's voice whines as she protests. I know. And I liked them very much, exactly as you thought. You succeeded. But I know you care about making your other friends happy too. And if this is the way you know how to make them ha that happen, then I'm not going to take it from you. No, they were for making you happy. You made me happy. You're worth more than cupcakes to some people. That's why they want to spend time with you and be your friend. Without warning, tears pour from Natsuki's eyes. She pulls her knees to her chest and starts sobbing into her arms. Natsuki? I'm such a bad person. Um... Yuri stammers, feeling panicked. I didn't mean to say something bad. Natsuki shakes her head and wipes her eyes. You didn't. I just... Natsuki tries to choke back her sobs but struggles to speak through them. I just really hate myself sometimes. And it feels so wrong when you, when you say nice things to me. Like I don't deserve it. I'm sorry. No, I am. I'm so difficult. And I can't think of even a single thing about myself that somebody would like. And I hated myself for bothering you during lunch. I just thought it was my chance to be a good person, like to be nice and do the things you wrote about in the letter. I knew if I tried in the club, Siri and Monica would be super annoying and make a huge deal out of it. You know, I think a lot about those negative things too about myself. I never felt like a good person. I always scrutinize everything I say, and later I feel like I said all the wrong things. I just spend so much time thinking about myself, hating myself, and feeling like everyone else must hate me too. So I understand some of the, that through my own experience. And that's why I wanted to write the letter and express my feelings. It pained me to see those things in someone else that I saw in myself. Natsuki sniffles. Yuri rustles through her bag and pulls out some tissues, then hands them to Natsuki. Monica told me that it takes a good person to reflect on these things. The desire to improve yourself, that makes you a good person. So don't worry so much. Also, there are things about you that people would like, so... Like what? Like, like how you're fun for people to be around. And you're not shy, and you know how to make people laugh. And you're very passionate about things, and you know how to take the lead, and you care a lot about other people, and just a lot of things. Oh. Well, now you're making me feel really embarrassed. Well, you're the one who asked. And don't you think I feel embarrassed? This is so fucking cute. Holy shit. Natsuki tries to hide a smile, then she sighs as it fades again. 
Every time I come here, I always think it's the last time, and then I keep coming back for some reason. Is that bad? It's really confusing. And my friends and I go way back, so ditching them more time feels like... I don't know. Feels like what? Natsuki's voice gets quiet. Maybe I'm scared they'll get mad at me. Hmm. I really don't know what to do. She pauses. Yuri stares into the distance, tracing her eyes around the patterns of the floor tiles while she thinks to herself. What would you do hypothetically if your friends were happy for you instead of mad at you? Happy for what? Happy that your new club is making you happy? Well, that's just not a fair hypothetical. Natsuki says that with little confidence in her voice. I always told myself that I don't rely on the approval of others to be happy. And I still feel that way, but... I'm spending time with people who put me down whenever I don't have their approval. It's probably what's making me feel so confused. Because I'm threatened out of the things that should make me happy. So no matter what, it's like I have to be unhappy to be happy. It's making my head hurt. That must make it really difficult to feel comfortable with yourself. Being made to feel like you're wrong for being the person that you are. It really goes against everything I believe in, doesn't it? It goes against the kind of person I want to be. I'm fed up with it. I'm fed up with a lot of things. Natsuki presses her palms into her forehead and shakes her head. I know what's best for me, but I keep convincing myself out of it. It's so much easier to be comfortably unhappy than it is to do something so scary. To do what? You know, to end it. With them? Natsuki nods. Didn't think you were actually considering that as an option. I wasn't until recently. It's one of the thing those things where, like, it's been a certain way for so long that you just get used to it. Like, so much of you has gotten gone to it, into it, that so much that it feels like it's just how your life is. And throwing it away is like throwing it away is such a big part of your life. It makes you feel sick to think about. Natsuki sighs. It's just really scary. It's terrifying. What are you scared of? I don't know, a lot of things. Like being alone, not having anyone to talk to or hang out with, or being able to replace what I have with them. And I don't want them to hate me, and I'm scared they'll hurt me for going against them. Physically? Not physically, but... Yuri clenches her fists. Natsuki, what? If anyone even thinks to cause you harm... I will unleash hell upon them. Oh my goodness. Natsuki snorts in laughter. Don't laugh at me. <laughs> Sorry, I was just... I like that. That's all. Oh. Well, I meant it. I know you did. Natsuki gives Yuri an endearing look. I needed it. Hmm. As the conversation lapses, Natsuki again slides her box of cupcakes over to Yuri. Just take them, okay? I don't... I don't want other people to have them anymore. Are you sure? Natsuki nods. I'm sure. Then I will. I'll enjoy them. Aww. Natsuki looks away, but a feeling of warmth spreads through her. She holds on to that feeling. No, will give her courage. Oh, it's fucking lovely, man. That was a really nice scene. And yes, I, I agree with the sentiment. If your friends are being toxic and making you feel like you can't be yourself, fucking get rid, people. Too many people in the world like that. Not worth having them as friends. Not even friends, really, at that point. Ah, you're here first today. Mm-hmm. And you brought reading material. Mm-hmm. Natsuki is sitting in a usual spot, this time holding a volume of manga while her lunch sits beside her. Yuri sits down as well and opens her own book. It sucks when a good series has come to an end. Like it's such a big part of your life and then one day there's just nothing left. I see what you're doing there, Dan. I see what you're doing. It makes you feel so empty. Unfortunately, I'm about to experience that myself. I'm on the last book of this series. That sucks. There's also something satisfying about letting a story conclude. I don't know if I'd want to go on it to go on forever. Maybe. But there are some things that I wish could. On the other hand, have you ever read something that overstayed its welcome? Yeah, definitely. I think of at least one thing I've read that got pretty unbearable like halfway through and the ending really sucked. So it sucks when something goes has to end, but it also sucks when they just keep inventing more plot until you don't like it anymore. I guess it sucks either way. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the nature of all things. They come to an end. The two fall silent. They slowly eat while making their way through the respective reading material. You know, I feel Dan is trying to convey a message through this dialogue. I think so too. And I see you there, Saltaholic, trying to say to Midnight, if you see on the game, this is not the main game. This, these are the side stories. It's a whole different thing. I already streamed the base game. You should know that, but you clearly don't. Disgusting behavior. Gah! No. So Natsuki doesn't seem to be touching her food at all. You don't, going out, you don't go out during the weekends, right? Excuse me? Like with friends at the mall or downtown or whatever. I'm not a total shut-in, you know. Am well, I bad for making assumptions? Well, I'm sure I go out less often than other people. Like you and the others in the club. You haven't, you haven't seen it at midnight? You should watch the Doki stream. The main game. Actually, yeah, maybe not. Maybe not watch through the stream. I don't know. I don't really meet with friends and arbitrarily spend time, arbitrarily spend time like that. I'm usually meeting with my board game group. Board game group? 
It doesn't matter. It's just more nerdy stuff. Why do you ask anyway? I was just curious. I just realized that I couldn't picture it, so I was just curious. Yuri looks at Natsuki and realizes that she's shaking. Don't look at me like that. Sorry. Natsuki pulls her knees into her chest and puts her head down. I can't take this. Did I do something? Yuri gets flustered, her mind racing over what she may have said or done. I did. I ended it. I texted them earlier, telling them. And I just blocked them because I'm so afraid of their responses. And now it feels like I'm dying inside. Oh, shit. That's... I'm sorry. Totally unsure of what to do, Yuri can barely find, any, barely find any words of support to offer. Meanwhile, the sound of Natsuki's unusually hard breathing fills the air. Then she speaks again, barely above a whisper. Help me. I feel sick and I want to hit my head against things. Please help, I can't take this. You may be having a panic attack. With the realisation, Yuri's demeanour suddenly changes. I have experience with this, so I'll help you through it, okay? Natsuki meekly nods through her rapid breath, head still buried in her knees. Yuri slides herself over to Natsuki and sits on the step behind her. Then she puts her hands on Natsuki's shoulders. Can you feel my hands? Natsuki nods. Her shaking becomes much more apparent through Yuri's sense of touch. Yuri keeps her voice low and gentle. You're safe right now. You're in a good and safe place where nothing can hurt you. Natsuki nods once more. Although Yuri's only touching Natsuki's shoulders, she can practically feel her racing pulse through the base of her neck. We'll do a little breathing exercise together. All you have to do is listen to my breaths and breathe along with me. Let's breathe in now. Yuri takes a deep, slow breath. Beneath her hand, she feels Natsuki's shoulders rise as Natsuki takes a breath of her own, trying to mimic Yuri. They exhale together, although Natsuki's breath shakes on the way out. That's good. Let's keep going. Yuri breathes in once more and Natsuki joins her. They continue like that for a few more cycles while Yuri closely monitors. Eventually, Yuri feels Natsuki rest more of her weight into Yuri's palms. Let's focus on the physical world. All you have to do is focus on the feeling of your breaths going in and out. And the weight of my hands on your shoulders. You're in a safe and comfortable physical space. I thought there'd be a CG there, to be honest. I'm surprised. Minutes pass in silence. By now, the worst fit has passed, but Yuri is determined not to move away until Natsuki prompts her to. Meanwhile, Natsuki has lifted her head off her knees and her breathing is mostly steadied. Then she takes a final deep breath and slowly pulls herself to her feet, causing Yuri to let go. She stretches her arms. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to freak out. I don't know what my deal is. You don't have to apologize. Life, this, this must be pretty stressful for you. Is that going to keep happening? It, it may or it may not. We can take measures to help prevent it in the future, but I think it will naturally get better over time. Natsuki motions to sit back down again, so Yuri moves over. Yuri turns away to pick up her open book from the dusty floor, which she had hastily set down earlier. She brushes the dust off the cover. I don't think I could have gotten through that alone. You're not alone. Feeling shy again, Yuri speaks into her own lap. This is lovely, man. I mean, dark subject material, but they're handling it very well. From now on, you don't have to do anything alone. As she says that, Yuri tenses up. It's rare for her to so openly share her thoughts, but something about Natsuki of all people makes it feel so much more natural to do so. Perhaps because like Yuri, Natsuki is so timid and uncertain of herself. Natsuki does such a good job at hiding it that it's taken a good, t a long time for Yuri to finally realise it. But because of that, Yuri is able to deliver the reassurance that she herself would have wanted. Demonstrating that you do deserve the love of others. If you can accept the love of that for the first time, then perhaps you can begin the, tu the, uh, 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 the tumultuous journey of learning to love yourself. Oh. oh, I love this music. Do you really mean that? You're probably going to regret saying that if you do. How so? Because I'm probably going to have a lot of free time during the weekends from now on. So you give me permission to be as annoying as I want and drag you around to a lot of places. I see. But you already said it, so you can't take it back now. Ah, uh, well, I suppose I have no choice but to accept the responsibility then. Mm hmm This is lovely. I just audibly awed. Oh, bless. I know a good ice cream place. Oh? That means you'll finally figure out my favorite ice cream flavor. Huh? What are you talking about? Oh, you don't remember? I do remember that. The first day you came to the club, you guessed everyone's favorite ice cream flavor, but for me, you said you had no idea. Seriously? I don't remember that at all. Oh, but yes, I do. I said it was probably green tea. Yuri shakes her head. It's a good guess, my favourite is usually to get chocolate and raspberry together. Chocolate and raspberry? How fancy. How is that fancy? Oh, I don't know. I thought I should have guessed something like that. Well, maybe next time I'll try chocolate and strawberry. Hey, strawberry's my favourite. Hmm, what a coincidence. 
Oh, this shit is beautiful. I think it helps to have something to look forward to. I still have the sick feeling in my stomach, but it's easier now to convince myself that I did the right thing. Is there anything better I could be doing? Not that I know of. There's nothing that will make this easy for me. And you already did more than I thought anyone could. Come to think of it, we never talked about the lesser you wrote, but I feel like we're way past that at this point. I don't even know what to talk about, except that I think it helped me understand my needs a little bit better. The way I like to be treated. And the kind of friends that I want to have. That's why I want to start coming here in the first place, even though I was so scared of causing more problems. I thought that it was a coincidence that you ran into me here initially. No, uh, well, not exactly. What do you mean? Nothing. Oh, bless. I may have tracked you down first, with the help of Sayori. That's... But you said... I was shy, okay? I wasn't ready to, like... Whatever, you know what I'm saying. Well, I guess I'm glad that you worked up the courage, even if it was in your own way. I can tell that you've been making out, making a lot of different difficult decisions. It's brave, and it'll make things better in the long run. I think, any, I think anyone would be proud of you for it. Anyone? You mean like you? Yes. Like me. You know, I could get used to this. As long as, as, long as you don't tease me too much. Fine. Just a little, then. That's fine. I know how uncertain everything feels to you right now, but I really do think the good things are in store. Those are my honest feelings. Thanks. Feels nice to be reassured. The two girls continue their conversation through the remainder of lunch, but a new feeling hangs in the air, a feeling of greater certainty in their path forward. In just a few hours, there'll be another literature club meeting where the four club members will happily spend time together. Each of them, all with their own special qualities or something unique that they can deliver to one another. Through friendship and literature, the club members will continue to grow and find new happiness together. The end of each chapter is the start of the next. Yuri thinks to herself, since she's about to finish her long running series, it'd be best to have a new book lined up. Perhaps this weekend would be a good time to visit the bookstore. Together. That was fucking beautiful, man. Holy shit, I love that. I fucking love that so much. That was amazing. And there's our CG of them. Aww. I love it. I love it. I really do. Okay. Uh, and then we still got some promo. So, uh, do we go into side stories? Oh, wow, chat. What is this? Another side story? What? I had no idea there was another one. What? This is so shocking to me. I definitely didn't have this spoil for me at some point on YouTube. Don't worry, I haven't seen the side storage. I just knew there were seven. I knew there was a secret one. No, what? I didn't know that. No idea. Hang on. What? What? Extra side story. Whoa, let's go. Okay, like, enough, enough fucking around. Let's just play it. Let's go, people. So now the final sub story equals. Okay, everyone. We're going to be taking a break from the usual activities today. I was thinking since people are starting to, to talk about the festival, it's a good... Oh, my God. Is this going to end with the MC showing up or something? I'm worried now. I'm fucking worried. I, I hope the MC doesn't show up. It's been much better without him. I fully believe that. I'm firm in it. I think someone said that in the chat a minute ago. I was thinking since people have started to talk about the festival, it's a good time for us to go over the general direction of the club and that. I think it'll help us figure out what to do with the festival, you know? Oh, Siri and I already came up with a really good plan. Really? For the festival? Yes, yeah, so the plan is this, okay? You and Yuri collect information ahead of time and watch clubs and classes are doing food booths. Then we make a map and plan the most efficient route so we can get to most of them before the lines get too long. Okay, that's nothing to do with the club. You have to let me finish. Alright, fine. Go ahead. Right, so basically we get all the food we can. <laughs> right, so basically I'm monkey. Then we come back here and we all eat together. That's all. Well, I got tricked twice by the same joke. Boo, don't be a hater. It's not like you can come up with anything better. Look, even Yuri was thinking about it. No, I wasn't. I would really prefer to do something literature related. We can eat together any time. The festival is a unique opportunity. Besides, it's been quite a while since we've seen a new interest in the club. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. We really get a shot at showing people what the literature club is all about. I'll tell you what, we can do both, right? We'll make time for your food mission and still put together a public event. Oh my gosh, yes. I was just joking, but that's a really good idea. Well, I'm glad that's settled. I think the question is how to come up with an event that demonstrates everything you can get out of the literature club. Well, that's kind of tough because everyone gets something different out of the club. Okay, how about this? Let's go around and have each of us talk about what we've gotten out of the club so far. That could really help us figure out what kind of reputation we want to build. Yeah, that's too embarrassing. Oh, but you have so much to talk about. 
that's exactly why. I'm sure Natsuki feels the same way. Well, maybe, but I didn't plan on arguing against it or anything. I mean, it's a literature club. We talk about stuff together, right? And the only way to get more comfortable with it is to suck it up and do it. You're not wrong. I'm sorry for being resistant. It's not good to say suck it up because it sounds like their feelings don't matter. Right, my bad. Just a habit I need to break. Anyway, who's going to start? I'll start. I was the first to join, after all. <laughs> Wouldn't that be me? No, I want to go first. Fine, fine. You can start. I don't mind. Yay. So, gosh, it feels like so long ago. I think I joined because I wanted to have fun sharing poems with people. It seemed like it would be a safe way to express myself. You know, like it was just a poem. And I could share it without feeling like I'm burning everyone with my problems. And I thought it would be a really good way to get to know other people, too. So, yeah. I was really surprised when I walked in and it was just Monica. Let's just read that again, chat. I was really surprised when I walked in and it was just Monica. Just Monica. All I'm saying. And she was sleeping. Don't remind me of that. Oh, gosh. Yeah, but it seemed like so much fun to help start a new club. Especially since writing helped me so much. I wanted to see if it helped other people too. But it ended up being me who was inspired. Because I remember feeling like Monica was just so sweet and mature and that I could trust her with anything. Made me feel a lot less alone having someone who even knew the bad things about me. And at that point, I knew the literature club was going to be a special for a lot of people. Oh, there's little, little dots and notes in the background. Cool. Yeah, I felt the same way. It really helped give the club a more cohesive vision. Yeah, and then Yuri joined, but she was so different from us. And Natsuki, too. I think for Yuri, it really helped me to take the lead before she was able to open up a little. But Natsuki was kind of the opposite, where she wasn't re ready to get really close to someone really quickly. I never really thought about that sort of thing. I, I really feel like I've gotten better at understanding people's different needs. And that makes me really happy, because my friends are just the most important thing to me. And whatever new members we get, I want to help them in those ways, too. I don't know if I would continue coming to the club if it weren't for you. Really? Mm-hmm. I know it wasn't too long ago, but it hurts to think about my behavior back then. I was really short-sighted. The only reason I came was to find others who were into fantasy, and I suppose that was my idea of making friends with people. And I remember feeling uncomfortable because you and I have such different energy. I had such a specific idea for the kind of person I could be friends with, so when Sari tried so hard to get to know me, I felt like I was just wasting her time. I think I was naive to assume that similar interests were the key components of friendship. Sari and I were able to be friends because she always thinks about the needs of other people, and that's something I never knew how to do, or even thought to do. But I stayed in the club thanks to that, and I started trying as hard as I could to understand people better. You really went above and beyond when it came to that. I was just super impressed. Well, I always hated that I didn't know where to, how to behave like a person who was easily liked by others, like the two of you can. Because of that, I spent so much time thinking about my own behaviour and all the wrong things I said. But the whole time, I should have been thinking about other people instead, not myself. Once I started doing that, I was able to make friends with everyone else. Also, I discovered that sometimes I'm a better communicator when I take the time to write rather than speak. It's so strange the way things turned out. It's so far from far different from anything I ever would have expected. But I'm happy. I suppose we don't always know what we really need. Oh my gosh. It's so cute that I'm going to throw up. And Saltholic, I already said this to you in the chat, dude, when you made this comment last time. It's the side stories. It's not the main game. It's a different thing. Please don't do that, Sayori. Besides, I'm not cute. Hey, isn't that my line? No. Oh. Well, for me, it's actually true, so... What are you saying? Nothing. I finish my part, so somebody else take their turn. My heart. Sayori, take some deep breaths. Okay, fine, I'll go. Yuri, I can't believe you're complaining about doing this and you still went before me. What a show-off. I was just following up with Sayori. It was the easiest way to get it over with. Besides, you left this as the most important thing that you got out of this club. I did? Yeah, a regular supply of your favourite cupcakes. Oh, no, I forgot that too. I'm a trace to the cupcake queen. Neither of you are forgiven. Looks like only Monica will be getting cupcakes next time. No! I can't eat that many cupcakes. Yeah, true. Only Yuri can. Hey! Well, anyway, I'm just putting off talking. I'm gonna have a drink. And no worries, dude. It's kind of hard to talk about this stuff. But I guess what it comes down to is that I'm in a much better place mentally than I was when I first joined. And that's because everyone helped me realize that I had some really toxic friendships going on outside the club. It was honestly a really painful thing to go through, having to cut them out. It still hurts to think about. I'm sorry, Natsuki. It's fine. I knew it was for the best, and I was right. I guess for me, it's all about feelings. I was only ever ridiculed for having feelings, so I thought the right thing to do was just to ignore them. And it took me a really long time to realize that it's not really how things are supposed to work. And I guess that's thanks to everyone who took the time to respect my feelings, even when I was being like the biggest jerk. I really am sorry for being such a jerk to everyone. I really was the worst. Natsuki's voice chokes a little. We love you, Natsuki. I just hate that I was like that. Everyone did so much for me, I could never do anything in return. That's not true. Natsuki, you've done a lot more than you think. 
This club really wouldn't have been the same without you, and I mean that. Remember how judgmental I was when you first showed up? It's like I couldn't accept anything other than my own idea of what literature club was supposed to be. Apparently that was more important to me than the opportunity to bring some happiness. You really told me that anything that makes someone happy is worthy of respect. You even inspired me to start playing piano. That's something that means a whole lot to me. So there's no need to put yourself down. Okay. Natsuki wipes her eyes. You helped me a lot too. It's so much fun to have you around. And you helped me because you've become a better person. Having a problem doesn't make you needy or inconvenient. It means there's something that needs to be better for you and you always deserve that. I agree. Seeing as I have some of the same struggles maybe a better person as well. I wouldn't want to change anything about our time here. I don't think any of us would. I'm sorry I got all dramatic again. It's all I wanted to say, so Monica can go now. There's no need to apologise. It was something I wanted to talk about anyway, because it made a big difference for me. I was always such a strict perfectionist who never took enough time to believe in the best of other people. But everyone kept proving me wrong, and I made the mistake multiple times of thinking that my way was the best for everyone. Or thinking that I, was ne I needed to solve other people's problems. But I think being a leader means you have to acknowledge that you're not perfect, and that the best thing you can do is to help guide people rather than to do everything for them. We're all good people. We're all equals. And that's the most important thing I've gotten out of the club, realising what that really means. Siri, what are you doing? I just thought I should be writing some of these things down. Things about the club that are valuable to us. With a piece of chalk in her hand, Siri writes the word trust on the chalkboard. Oh, all well, the words. It's because you showed me that I could trust you with everything about me, not just my good side. Suddenly, Yuri takes a piece of chalk as well. She writes understanding. I owe a lot of gratitude to everyone who took the time to understand me, even though it was so difficult for me to express myself. In that case... Monica takes a piece of chalk up as well and writes the word respect. I always thought I was a respectful person, but it took the club for me to realise that there was more to it than thought, and I'm a better person because of it. I have another one. Siori writes balance. Sometimes people want different things out of a friendship, or they need time before they realize they're ready to become close. So it's important to keep things balanced between you and the other person. And that reminds me, Yuri writes reflection. I've always been a reflective person, but most of it has been nothing more than hating myself for all the things I thought I did wrong. Once I started reflecting on the people and not just myself, a lot of things changed for me. So I think that's the most important one for me. That's great. We have a whole list of things now. Suddenly everyone turns to look at Natsuki. Well, everyone took all the chalk. Don't make me look like don't, don't look at me like that, jeez. You could have just asked. Monica hands her piece of chalk to Natsuki. Then Natsuki sighs, sighs and writes self-love. I don't know how far I've gotten with it yet, but it feels like things are at least on the right track. So there, that's my contribution. Together, everyone stares at the words on the board. Wasn't this club supposed to be about literature? It is. We still do a lot of literature. Friendship and literature. Aw, yeah, you're right. Friendship and literature. Natsuki and Yuri gently nod as well. Hey, let's all take a picture together. Oh, I know where this is going. We don't have one yet, right? Hey, you're right. Make sure you send it to me after. Wait, can I brush my hair first or something? Oh, you're fine. You already have the best hair out of all of us. <laughs> everyone get together. I can't fit you all in. Okay. Okay, everyone ready? And click. Oh, show me it. Come on. I'm really glad we talked about this stuff. It's easy to forget how far we've come with only four members. Yeah. I have so many happy thoughts right now. Happy thoughts. We're getting some really good inspiration for a poem. Oh, my God. I feel the same way. I kind of want to get some writing done. Me too. I think I would like that as well. Everyone's looking at me again. I'll do it too, but I might not feel like sharing it. That's okay. The four members of the literature club disperse and return to their desks, each equipping themselves with a pen. Natsuki and Yuri give each other a quick glance, then start writing immediately. So Yuri stretches and then does the same. But Monica is left tapping her pen against the paper, unsure of where to start. Just move your hand. Ah, write the way into his heart. Right the way into your heart. Her mind full of thoughts, memories, inspiration, Monica navigates past her mental barriers and begins to write. It doesn't matter what, just that it's something new. Is that the end? Aww. Aww, that shit was cool, man. I really like that. The, the only main observ observation I have to make that's not even really a criticism, it's just an observation, purely is that 
There are several things that happened in those side stories that are plot holes or create issues in the main game. Like, they weren't all writing poems at the start of, of the main game. Uh, Monica had only just learned piano whilst they were going through the, the, the main game's progression. Um, the manga's literature argument hadn't already happened. Yuri and Natsuki were not friends, not properly. A lot of things in here suggest to me personally that this is like almost a separate a universe. Like some stuff happened in the main game, but the, like, it feels like this is kind of like a world where the MC doesn't show up. Or if the MC does show up, it's a much better scenario. Monica isn't sentient, you know what I mean? Kind of gives me Blue Skies vibes, to be honest. And I really like it. So like me, me saying that, you know, it, it kind of creates plot holes or whatever, that's not even a criticism. It's just an observation. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing that they've created any kind of plot holes there, you know what I mean? I think it, it, at the end of the day, what matters is that it was done really well. And I really like it, you know? Like, it's a game that that now is four years old, nearly. And, you know, the, to add DLC to a game like Doki Doki Literature Club, it's not a simple thing to do, you know? It really isn't. It, it just isn't. But they've added something here that was quite nice. It was fun to play through, get a bit more background to the characters. And I had fun. I really enjoyed going through them all. I really, really did. It was good stuff. The non-sentient Monica Saga DDLC Plus, bro. Yeah. I mean, that's basically Doki Doki Blue Skies, though, isn't it? You know, when Mon Monica isn't sentient. And that's not official content, but it might as well be, you know, the best example. But I really liked this. I think it was really, really, really well done. Thank you, dear player, for enjoying our story of friendship and literature. Aww. It was an absolute blast. I stand by it. Made with love by Team Salvato. Always good shit to see. I love seeing that. Good stuff. Show us the picture. Yep, there we go. Oh, I love it. That's such a cool picture. Oh, I love it. Brilliant. I'm actually glad this ended up being so wholesome. Yeah, me too. Oh! Friendship and literature. Finish all of the side stories. Brilliant. Very good shit. And... I think emails count towards this shit, chat. I think emails count towards this shit. Because I've got all of the information now, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yep, there we go. Got the normal take. Oh my god, a normal one. I'm making a funny face. <laughs> oh, look at them go. <laughs> you also have to unlock another song. Is that the missing thing? Do you know how I do that? Finish all the side stories. Beautiful. Oh, that's so cool. So how do I unlock the other song? Do you know, Elian? Because if I can unlock it right now, that would that would get me the... All I say is candy hearts. But this one? What's the deal? I have that right here. Elian, do you want to explain what you're saying there, bro? Basically, listen to it on repeat and eventually a new variation should unlock. And is that what, how you get the final com completion? Okay. Well, in that case, we'll just leave that on then. Cool. Well, there you go. So that is uh, all the side stories. Well, well basically, I've got 100% completion. Once this song unlocks, it'll, you know, do it. I don't know how long I have to wait, though. I'm presuming that's what, Eli what Elian's trying to tell me about getting the, the data completion, right? Presumably. So the emails don't count then? And they don't make any fucking sense anyway. Check the settings and you should be at like 98% data collection. Oh, right. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah. I can see. Hang on. 98%. Yeah. So if I, if I play this song a few times over it, what? Gives me the last song and that's 100%? You unlock one more email too. Okay. How do I do that? How long do I have to wait? Because if I can get 100% on stream now, I'll do it. But I don't know. I love how Elian's just basically being my guide right now for all this stuff. The guide I used said loop it for 10 minutes. Ah, okay. Alright. Well, I mean... Eh, we probably don't need to wait for 10 minutes, do we? Let's play it through about three, four times. 10 minutes of chatting. We could do, to be fair. Um, I'll tell you what then. I'll use this opportunity to go very quickly for a toilet break. And then we'll, uh... 
Oh, my BR why is the BRB not showing? There we go. Um, and I will just uh, come back in one moment and we'll, we'll continue. Okay? Okay. Boom. Just a moment then. Hello, people. We go. I don't know why I turn the camera on and my mic back before I sit down. That doesn't make any sense. I might as well just sit down first, but whatever. Right, uh, so this is looped, what? Is this the second time it's playing now? So that's, we're about five minutes in. Okay, so five minutes of talking. Damn. God, I've got to be entertained for five minutes. Shit. Um, uh, uh, what do I do? What are jokes? What, what do I have to do? I don't know. Um, but yeah, so uh, that was that was really good. I really, really enjoyed that, you know? Oh, Why are people popping up in the Discord? Bro, we still live. The fuck you doing chatting in here? <laughs> Should have put eyes in there. <laughs> Bro. There we go. You actually got to be entertained for five minutes. I know. My God. Me being entertaining? That doesn't seem physically possible, does it? I quite like this music, though, so I don't mind it too much, you know? I don't mind it. Eventually, if you keep closing and opening music, you'll know it's unlocked when the song becomes 1 minute 07 long. Wait, what? Really? Oh, shit, there. Hang on. So, where's, so what's happening now? What the fuck? I don't like that. Uh, what the fuck is this? 
God, I'm about to see fucking Sayori again or something. I don't want to see any bad shit. Come on. Don't ruin the high note now. Don't ruin the high note. I don't like this. So it should become its own song after you play it the whole way through, okay? Has it become its own song? Oh yeah, shit. Okay, so what now? 100%. And I haven't got the achievement. Bruh. It's bugged on Xbox as well. It's fucking bu- Oh my god. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Well, you know what, chat? We hit 100%. And for the record... There should be one more email if you open and close DDLC2. Oh, right. Okay. Well, let's do that then. Maybe that'll do it. So open and close DDLC2. Let's do that. Do, 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 do. Right. Oh, shit. Yeah. Mail. Wait, what? What is this? Do I need to read this? Or... I don't know. We need to have a meeting about shifting our focus a little bit. We've reset VM1 how many times now? For real, we've definitely collected as much data as we can from it at this point. We need to work with what we have and try to increase the stability of our connection to VM2. We've obviously gotten spoiled by the ease of access that VM1 offers us, but it's just unrealistic for someone in real life to have granted a level of elevation close to monitor kernel. What the fuck? If we can't establish a stable connection to VM2, I wouldn't expect to get anywhere with the same scenario never to be because... I don't know what... Do I need to know this? Like, none of this shit makes any sense to me. I'll be real with you. I will be real with you. I don't understand any of the emails, really. Like, none of them. I like that that one's called, uh, have a nice weekend, though. That's, uh, you know. Um, I guess that's it. I got a hundred, I got a hundred percent in the game. We've totally beaten it. And that's it. Do, 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 do. The name project, the name dropped Project Lib Libertina at the end, if anyone remembers that. I don't remember that. What is that? I have no idea. Oh, I don't like that there's no Sayori there for the end of this. Hang on, I'm gonna just go in and hit the reset file real quick. I'm just going in and hit the reset file. I was, you know, in Act 2 doing the whole spam to get the black and white loading screen thing. A new project. Oh, is it like the next game from Team Salvato or something? They work on something new? I mean, they kind of need to, you know. They, they want to see what else they can do beyond uh, Doki Doki now. Oh, Eng oh, yeah, England won the match. Shit, GG's. Very nice. DDLC++. I mean, what else could they add now, though, Rose? Let's be fair. I don't really see what else they could add, you know? Not really sure. Alright. And... Oh, yeah, I've got to do the the warning. Okay. Also, fun fact, I don't know whether anyone has noticed this or not, but one warning of Monica being a, a, a sentient character, or like being the, you know, the, the, the overarching person. Look at all of the girls. They're all wearing white socks, apart from Monica, who's wearing black. Just, you know, just thought I'd point that out in case anyone didn't notice it, you know? In case you didn't notice it. Fun fact. Cool. See, look. Higher black socks as opposed to shorter white ones. Just thought I'd point that out in case anyone hadn't noticed it. Which you might not have done. Doki, doki, doo, 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 doo. And there we go. So there we go. That's, that's Doki Doki Digital Plus. We've played through all the side stories. We've played the main game. And we've got 100% data completion so thank you all very much for watching i really do appreciate it it's been a really good time um and that's about it and i know that as soon as i switch over now we're gonna lose the music yeah like i i fucking i should have seen that coming can i get the doki doki soundtrack up on here on spotify that would just save the problem oh here we go boom 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 boom, boom. uh let's turn it down a bit though Put this song on again for the end and just show on Snip that we're listening to it. Boom. Is my song your note on Spotify yet? I don't know. Uh, doesn't seem like it, no. My song your note. Let me see. Oh, wait, no. It is. Yep, Literal Plus soundtrack is on Spotify now under the name of Nikki Kylar. 
me share it in the chat. Boom. There you go. So there we go. I will see you all tomorrow at 7 p.m. UK time for Payday 2, if it fucking functions, which at this point is anyone's guess. Uh, but thank you all for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. It's been a good time. Glad to have gone through the side stories. And I'm glad we did it all in one stream and quite quickly. I mean, jeez. I thought it was taking about five hours. We did it in three and a half. Good shit. Good shit. So, with that in mind, thank you all for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. And before we go, is there someone we can raid? Um, I'd raid Casey, but she's streaming League of Legends. It's not really my thing. I know a lot of people in our community take the piss out of it, so it may be an idea not to raid this time. But she's the only one I know that's streaming, so we could just raid her anyway and send viewers over there if anyone is interested in raid, you know? Like, like it said in Doki Doki, you know? Not judging everyone for what they like and what they enjoy, you know? You know? What have we learned, chat? What have we learned? <laughs> So we'll, we'll raid Katie. We'll raid Katie. So, thank you all very much for watching. I do greatly appreciate it. It's been a good time. Like I said, I will see you on Thursday for Payday 2. It will be a good time. It'll be a good time. And if it, if it breaks, we'll do a just chatting stream or something. I don't know. At this point, I, I literally go into a Payday 2 stream not knowing whether it's going to work or not. What I might do is just uninstall the game and remove all my mods and reinstall it. And just play it as a, as a vanilla game for a bit. Just so it runs a bit better. And then just reinstall my mods at a later date. I, I might well just do that. I haven't decided yet. No idea. How you doing? I'm doing good, thanks. I do. I could just start a stream and you could raid me, bruh. I mean, do you stream, Rose? Like, what's going on? What do you mean? What do you mean? Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. Really appreciate it. I will see you all tomorrow for Payday Two. And I like that. Basically, just stuck to the end of the song now. We'll hit, end of the song. We'll hit the raid button, okay? At the end. Let's turn it up a little bit. So thank you all for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you all tomorrow. Pay day two. Until then, thank you all for watching. I'll see you all soon. I'll leave you be.